Hello everyone, I have decided to make a compilation video of the current episodes in the On Drop Rate series split to roughly two six hour videos. The main difference between the regular playlist is that the giveaway segments, main intros, outros and sponsored segments are all removed to keep it as action filled as possible. With the goal of making this the most optimal way to rewatch the series or watch it for the first time. And with that out of the way, I hope you all enjoy the series. On Drop Rate is a series where I can only receive an item within its wiki stated rate, but with a twist. If I receive the item before or on its rate, I get to keep everything earned during the episode, including the desired item. However, if I do not end up getting it, I have to forfeit all the loot earned to you guys, the viewers. Let's introduce today's challenge. Hey what is up guys, welcome to the first episode of the On Drop Rate series, I am really hyped to get this going and I actually want to make the first episode slightly less ambitious than the future ones I have in plan, just to get a pilot out there and get your guys' feedback on what you think of this series. So the first boss I'm going to be tackling in this series is the Calphite Queen. And the item I'm going to be hunting for is the Dragon Chain Body, which has a 1 in 128 drop rate, and that is exactly how many kills I am going to do in this video. Despite the boss being released in 2004, it is a very hard hitting boss, and I am going to be hybriding this boss, so in the first phase I'm going to be using melee, in the second one I'm going to be using ranged, and in the ranged phase you are going to be taking some damage, and that is just unavoidable if you're using the strategy I am going to go with, so let's get into gearing. But here it is, this is the setup, I'm going to be using a crush weapon, the abyssal bludgeon, and all of this is just within my price range, I am not a very rich player, but hopefully with this series, if I get lucky, I will make some profits. I have the dragon warhammer, avernic defender for the special attack, armadillo with blowpipe for the second phase of the calphite queen, I am also bringing a rune pouch with vengeance, it is very good as I said in the last phase, where you're going to take some hits, which can go up very high in damage. So let's get going. I'm also starting with 10 kill counts, so when I'm at 138 I am done. I am of course not counting in the 10 kill count in this video challenge, that would be kind of unfair. So at 138 I am done, and we will see if I have the dragon chain body before that or not. I did forget restores in the last clip, but I have them now, so all good. But there is no one in this world, it has been a while since I did this last time, and I don't have a bunch of kills overall. So let's see how this goes, I do know how to do it though, so hopefully it's going to be good. I have done a couple of kills with this setup and I am just flinching the melee version. I am equipping my ranged gear. As you can see right here, I am then going to Vengeance, tank some hits from the final phase of the boss, which can hit very hard. But at this point, I pretty much don't flinch it at all. I just stand here and DPS as much as possible. And after this, sometimes I have enough food to do another kill. Sometimes I do not. I teleport to Ferox Enclave and just come back here again. Yeah, there it is, the first troll drop red dehyde body. The lookalike of a dragon chain body, but not worth quite as much. The first milestone kill count after this, and I have no food left, so hopefully it doesn't actually kill me here. But this is kill count number 10. Everything is going good so far, but it is very painfully slow. I do not have the best gear, as I said, if I had really insane gear I could go with Inquisitor, which is of course very expensive, as basically every KQ hit ignores defense, so having low defense gear doesn't really matter. But that is now 20 kill count, which means I have done 10 kills in this video. Ooh, very nice, <laughs> rune chain body, it is uh, a chain body drop, but it's the wrong color one. Oh my god, I actually thought <laughs> I thought I got the pet or something because I got the pop-up. That is such a troll. Now it's kind of funny, basically running to the boss and banking is more time than actually killing the boss itself, it feels like. I don't have the Desert Diary, which actually allows you to have the permanent ropes and be able to use the shortcuts. And I don't have the agility level either. Oh man, <laughs> I wonder how many of these I'm actually going to get. I was actually looking at some Calphite Queen videos to see how many kills an hour people with max gear is getting, and this is like Scythe, Full Inquisitor, insane gear, right? Worth billions. And they were getting like 25 to 30 kills an hour, and this is also with Thralls. 
So it is going to be very slow with this gear right here and I do actually want to make a one hour trial and see how many kills I can get with my setup in one hour. So after this kill which is actually kill number 30 I am going to do a one hour trial and see how many kills we can get. So after this kill right here on 41 we're going to start the timer let's see what we get for kill number 31 some dark crabs and money so let's now go to the bank start the timer and see how many kills we get. What is that? KQ head that is the same drop rate as the dragon chain body. 1 in 128. That was a missed roll on kill number 40 but uh, hey it's a unique regardless nice for the collection log. Alright, so it has been roughly an hour, look at that, 58 minutes and 35 seconds, and I don't really have any food left, so I am expecting to have to flinch this a bit with a melee, so it's probably going to take another minute to kill it. So I have done now 15 kills in one hour, which is honestly without scythe and full inquisitor and the shortcut, the diary, everything... Not that bad. I'm pretty happy with that. That means the overall grind is going to be around 9 hours, which is uh, all good by me. No way. Oh my god, look at it. Oh, that looks so good on the ground. That is on cases 68, so pretty much exactly halfway to the drop rates. We did it, boys. Look at that. We actually got it. That means I won the challenge and the rest of the kills and the loot is going to be a winning stretch. Let's see if we can manage to get two of them. That is so awesome to see. Bro, there's no... <laughs> Are you kidding me? Another KQ head on 78 kill count. Could have been three D chains. No second D chain yet, but I have done 100 kills after this one. And of course, I would remind you guys, I started with 10 KC. So that's why it says 110 in the chat and we're ending on a 138. But uh, yeah, very happy so far with everything. The kills are going smoothly. And of course, we got the D chain. Oh my god, a second chain body. All of you guys who tabbed in to look at that, you all have to subscribe now. But here we go, this is the last KQ kill for the entire grind. What is the last loot going to be? Battle staves and prayer potions and 138kc overall. Let's go and have a look at the overall loot. Before we get into the loot, I want to have a look at the collection log, which was very barren before we did this grind with only 10 kill counts. And we now have unlocked two more slots, the Dragon Chain Body and two Calphite Queen Heads. And we have a 138 kill count. Now, in my inventory, I could not fit all the loot, but uh, the more valuable stuff are worth 6.7 million. And overall, all the loot that I got is going to be on the screen right now on the Rune Light pop-up. I just copied that and yeah, 7.1 million loot. Definitely not great. Welcome to episode number two of Undrop Rate. In the last one, we did Calphite Queen in hopes of getting the Dragon Chain Body. And this one, we're also going to be chasing a Dragon item. We're going to be chasing the Dragon Warhammer, which means we're going to be killing 5,000 Listenman Shamans. And that is going to be a massive grind, which means I'm going to invest in the best possible setup for the job. So let's get into gearing. I'm going to be killing all of them in the Lizardman Canyon, which means I can use a cannon and I'm most likely going to be buying a lot more cannonballs than this. But to save even more prayer points, I have actually decided to buy a Ring of the Gods and then imbue it. I already have the points here. Let's go to upgrade and you have to have a holy wrench in your bag to be able to do this. And there it is. It is now imbued, which gives 8 plus prayer bonus. Hopefully going to save me a good amount of prayer potions during this grind. And the gear I'm going to be using is the full Shazian armor with a blowpipe that has amethyst darts in it. Other than that, just as good items as I possibly can for each slot. The Avas Assembler, Anguish, Ring of the Gods of course. And I don't have the Rada's Blessing, but uh, Ancient Blessing is good enough. For the entire grind, I'm going to be using the Rune Light Tracker, which obviously shows how much money all the loot you got was worth. So if I do not manage to get the Dragon Warhammer in these 5,000 kills, I know how much money I have to give away. But uh, just for security, double checking basically, I've killed 639 Lizardmen Shamans, so that should end at 5,639. Because I have to use the full Shazian armor to kill them, this is why I wanted the Ring of the Gods, because look at my prayer bonus, it's 11, which is actually really bad. 
it's pretty much only this ring, the blessing, and I think maybe the necklace that gives any prayer bonus at all. So without this, it is going to drain my prayer like crazy. So hopefully this is going to help quite a bit. I wonder how many rune warhammers we're going to see in 5,000 kill counts. Probably quite a lot. Hopefully one of them is going to be red as well. Ah uh, yes, the rune spear, the 1 in 3378 drop. Not quite as rare as the uh, dragon warhammer, but it stings. Double rune warhammer back to back, imagine if that was the red ones. That would be 100 million right there, but uh, unfortunately it's 50k. Over the course of this video, I am going to be getting a bunch of alkable items like the mystic staves, the rune items and all that good stuff. And I am going to be keeping the cash tag of every single alk value item in my bag. I'm currently up to 1.1 million almost. And I'm expecting that to go to crazy amounts, over even 20 million. Oh my god, I recently changed my loot beams to be the bigger ones for pretty much all rare loot and I got so baited. I just saw this beam and I actually had the biggest heart attack ever and it's just a Xerix Talisman. And actually it's only the first one, probably going to get a bunch of these. I've now been here one hour, I started the stopwatch the second I put down my cannon and I have currently... 183 kills you can see that right there and that means the overall grind for 5000 kills is going to take me if i play super efficient all the time with 183 kills an hour around 27 hours so realistically it's probably going to be more like 30 hours or more than that okay i am so happy that i checked my kill count on the soldiers down there in the beginning because my rune light has bugged out completely i'm not sure why this is and it's kind of unfortunate but this is not how many kills i've done i've done 408 kills at this point and at some point this randomly just doubled i'm not sure why that was but everything that I got here basically just got doubled for no reason. So what I'm going to do for calculating all the money that I made, if I have to give it away, is that I'm just going to take 5,000 kills and then times that by the average amount of money the uh, Lizardmen Shamans are worth because it is very consistent. As long as you don't get uh, the Dragon Warhammer, the money is going to be pretty much consistent all the time. And uh, that amount of money is 33.8 million worth of cash. So that is how much money I am going to give away if I do not get the Dragon Warhammer within 5,000 kills. Oh my god. Ah, I knew this was going to happen. Curved Bone. That is the first Curved Bone, of course, of the grind. And that is actually more rare than a Dragon Warhammer, but it's very close. It's like 1 in 5012 or something like that, and the Warhammer is 1 in 5k. Runelight Loot Tracker actually doubled my loot when I logged my group Iron Man, which actually solved the issue, so I'm just not going to do that. But I'm nearly at 1000 kill count now, I started at 639, and the Loot Tracker from now on is going to be accurate. So I'm going to be ending at roughly like 4550, something like that, on the Loot Tracker. No, that is 1 in 6.7k, that's more rare than the Dragon Warhammer. What? What? Oh my god, I, I've i never been that comboed in RuneScape before, Jesus Christ, that's first death. Ran out of Solra scales, so I have to buy 10,000 more for 1.7 million. Actually not that expensive to keep this up, the scales are pretty cheap. And 10,000 lasts a very long time, and I'm at 1,800 kill count roughly right now. Oh my god, I've completely forgot you could even get long bones. They're only 1 in 400. How have I not got any of those before? I'm at like 1,900 KC or something. No drop here or anything, but look at the XP counter we are going to be hitting, I think, on this one. Okay, not exactly on this one, but very soon after, 1 million ranged experience, there we go, 1 million and 1 experience in ranged from killing only Lizardmen Shamans, which is very cool, and I think, honestly, we're going to end over 2 million. Yo, Dragon Medhelm, uh, oh, well, that's rare, that's 1 in 3.2k without Ring of Wealth, and of course, I'm using the Ring of the Gods. So, uh, well, we're getting a lot of dragon items at least. Good sign, maybe. 
We are now at 2,900 kills roughly and this is when I reach 10 million cash from just alking all the items that dropped. So it's not looking like I'm going to reach 20 million cash pile, but uh, if I'm lucky with drops, it could be possible. Now if you are enjoying watching me kill these lizardmen shamans with two weapons used hundreds of years ago in the tribal ages and the pirates using cannons, you know, on their ships, and uh, tribesmen using blowpipes to shoot down things from trees, which of course we all use in this medieval game. And remember to subscribe. Thank you. Out of the 27 hours I said this grind would take me roughly, I am now 20 hours exactly in, and I have 3,652 kill counts, so it is looking like it's going to be pretty accurate on the mark of 27 hours. And no Dragon Warhammer yet, unfortunately. But we still have some decent amount of kills to do, so it could still happen. <gasps> no way! Oh my god, look at that! Oh my god, I have never got this item in my whole life. Oh my god, I just had a heart attack. That is so insane, I actually got the Dragon Warhammer. I'm on 3812 KC. Man, that feels good. Look at this Dragon Warhammer. It is currently worth 42.5 million. Oh my god. That is some profit I just made. And overall, my loot is right now on the tracker, including the 400 kills that I've done before the tracker. I'm at 67 million. So that is pure cash I get to keep, which is really nice because I already spent probably like 25 million in just supplies doing this grind so far. But I'm going to finish off the kills. Imagine if I get another Dragon Warhammer in the last thousand plus kills here. Wow, that is such a good feeling. I cannot believe that happened. Man, it feels so unreal that it actually happened. Like, it's one of those rare items that is so rare that you just never expect to see it. Like, even though you technically know that in 5,000 kills you should get one, like, when you actually see it on the ground, it's like, wow, that actually happened. But uh, just a reminder that this video is going to be, like, the first one where I'm going to complete all the 5,000 kills, even now that I got the Dragon Warhammer. But in the future ones, I'm going to go by the other rules I stated earlier. What? What? What is that? There's no way. What? That can't happen. I've done 40 kills since I got my last Dragon War- That- I, I'm so- I have no idea what to say. How did I just get two Dragon Warhammers in 40 kills? I just- I guess we're making money, boys. What the hell? So we are getting really close to the end here. I have only 400 kills left to do and I'm actually keeping track of the kills not on the Rune Light plugin because it can be very inconsistent. Sometimes you kill two of the Listed Men Shamans in the same tick and it only counts as one. Fortunately that doesn't happen very often so it's going to be pretty accurate. And of course I'm also losing the 413 kills or something like that that I lost in the beginning of the video when I had to reset the counter because it bugged out as well. Overall, it is pretty inconsistent, so I'm actually keeping track of the kills exactly on the NPCs at the start of the canyon. But in the end, I will be able to show you guys the loot tracker for roughly 4,500 of the kills, and that should be accurate loot. And then just basically add 500 kills of the same type of loot to that. And uh, the Dragon Warhammers are of course counted. It's finally happening, this is the last kill for 5,000 kill counts on Lizardman Shamans. I have a bit of a morning voice right now. Uh, waking up finishing this grind feels really nice. 5.7k cash for the last kill. Let's go to the soldiers and have a look. I should be at 5,639 kills. And I have 2.5 million ranged experience as well. But let's have a look. 5,639. I guess I'm getting attacked a lot right now. So it's going to interrupt me all the time. Let's see if I can get a search in or not. I guess I'm just going to go away and uh, reset them. Alright, the reset, let's have a look, talk to the soldier, and that is 5,639 shamans, which is exactly 5,000 shamans in this video. Let's go and have a look at the loot. So on the screen right now you can see all the loot from 4,582 kills, the kills I got tracked that was not removed in the beginning of the video unfortunately, but just add a couple of percentages to this because it's only like 400 and what is that, 18 kills that is not tracked, and the GP average for me was 25,000 
average. Which is 6k average if you do not get the Dragon Warhammer. So pretty much all the money, or if you're going to be making money here, it has to be from Dragon Warhammers. Because in the supplies, I pretty much used as much as I got probably, except the Dragon Warhammers. In Cannonballs, Solar Scales, Amethyst Darts, Prey Potions, Anglerfish, all of these things, I probably used around 20 million and just in Alex, which is, I guess, most of the money that you're getting here, consistent money, you can see all the top items are Alkeballs and just pure cash. I got 18 million. And the Dragon Warhammers are currently worth 42.3 million. And I got two of them, so 84.6 million, which is ridiculously good in 5,000 kills. And as I said, this grind overall with banking and everything took me roughly 30 hours to do. So I would say pretty good money making in this video but definitely a very long grind to do and very monotonous as well it, it was not very enjoyable of a grind but uh, it is now done at least and also of course we have the two dragon warhammers in the collection log so that is a very nice slot to have done of course there's a lot of very difficult items to get here so it's not like the hardest thing is completed but it is a very hard thing to complete for the miscellaneous tab so nice to have that for the future Welcome to episode number 3 of the On Drop Rate series and in this one we're going to dial it back a bit from the last episode when we actually hunted the Dragon Warhammer from Lizardmen Shamans. In this one we're actually going to do a grind with a drop rate of an item 1 in 1000 which is the Undead Druids, that is why I'm in Seiya as well and we're going to be hunting for the Mask of Ranul. The Mask of Renewal is on the collection log for the miscellaneous tab, just like the Dragon Warhammer, and the drop table for the Undead Druids is very, very big. Most of it is seeds, herbs, and some herb lore supplies in general. Pretty good for Iron Man. But there's also, of course, the rare drop table with the rune spear, shield left half, dragon spear. But those are all one in like half a million to achieve, so I'm not expecting to get any of those. Also, you can get grubby keys, one in 75. Which is not that rare, so I'm expecting to get around 13, 14 out of those. And also, you never know, I might get lucky and get the 1 in 5000 zombie champions gold drop, which would be really cool. Uh, but yeah, can't expect any of that. Now, as I did say in the intro, I did change the roots up for the series, which is going to mean I'm going to give away half of the loot that I get from these undead druids if I do not manage to get the Mask of Renewal in 1000 kills. I'm just going to take half of the money worth of the loot and give it away. And if I do get the Mask of Renewal before 1000 kills, kills i am going to go on to another activity and do two in this video when it comes to gearing this is my setup i'm going to be using full crystal with the salve amulet because it works towards undead monsters with the blowpipe and ring of the gods i could be using you know full damage and just stand at the altar that is right there at the undead druids but i just kind of want to afk more and having more prayer bonus is pretty nice so i'm going to be using this setup instead now before we get into actually killing them, I want to say one last thing. These can drop hard clue scrolls 1 in 100, so if I do not get the Mask of Renault, I will do roughly 10 hard clue scrolls during this video, and I'm going to be counting in that as loot from the monsters. So if I do not get the Mask, I'm going to take all the loot that I got from the hard clue scrolls as well, take half of that and give that away as well. So imagine if I get like a third age, that could be millions I have to give away. Now because I'm not using the altar, another benefit to actually not doing that is you can use this mini room right here, which they are a bit more cramped up in, and I will get more kills an hour, which is pretty nice and very AFK as you can see. Unfortunately, I do not have a herb sack, so I will actually have to leave some of the herbs on the ground, but as always, I do have the rune light tracker, which is not going to bug out like the lesser man shamans this time, so I should have very accurate sums of money anyways. Another thing worth mentioning is that you actually get these pages from killing them and they can be stacked up. You can get these from all of the monsters inside of this dungeon. And there is a quest I actually have not done. It's a mini quest in search of knowledge. If you get four of the pages, I think there's three pages, you actually complete that quest and you get a 10,000 experience lamp. So I might as well do that meanwhile I'm here anyways. Honestly, it's kind of funny. This is probably one of the most valuable drops I can get from the Undead Druids. Yeah, they're not the best money in the game, but uh, some videos is going to be like this. I just want to go through a bunch of the uniques, you know, in the game. And some of the videos will be more money making, some will be a bit less. Actually, very early in, only 38 kills in, I guess 39 with that one. And we get the first hard clue scrolls, so let's go and do it. I'm going to be opening them right away. Let's see what we get. 
All right, let's see what we get for the first hard clue scroll of this video. Remember, all of this is going to be included in the actual value of the Undead Druid grind. So let's see what is the first clue scroll of the grind going to be. And it is worth 75k. Yeah, pretty mediocre hard clue scroll, at least a collection log item. And there we go, that's the first grubby key. They're actually worth 45k, just on the normal GE price. But I will be opening them for all the loot at the end of this grind and see what we get from that. But uh, for now, they're going to be just stacking up. Two beams at the same time, and I'm at 98 kills only. So very lucky to have two hard clue scrolls so far. I'm not going to be showing any of the future drops of the hard clue scrolls. I'm just going to be showing you guys when I open the caskets. Second hard clue scroll, let's see what we get. And we get some alkibbles again. Is it better than the last one though? No, it's not. I'm still being very lucky with hard clue scrolls. I'm at 203 kills and I got a third one. Let's see what we get from this one. And we get some more alkibbles, a page and some teleports. How much is this worth? 69k, so nothing too great. Just have a look at this. 231 kills and I've got four hard clue scrolls and seven grubby keys. I feel like I'm getting very lucky here, but no Mask of Renewal yet, but let's see what the fourth clue scroll is going to give us. Some pretty uh, normal alkyballs, 88k. So we are now almost 500 kills in, I will put the loot on the screen right now, and we have another hard clue, and this one is... Like the other ones, but actually the worst one, I think, 33k. Yo, Mask of Renewal, there it is! Man, I can't stop winning, man! I've won every single challenge in this series so far, whoops, uh, there we go, 537 kills for the Mask of Renewal, and uh, it was only worth 2 million, all the loot, but let's pick that up, and that means we're going to do another challenge in this video, which is very exciting, but uh, let's have a look at how this actually looks on me, man, that is so cool, uh, always nice to get collection log items, but look at that, Okay, that's a bit creepy. Uh, probably not going to use that for much, but uh, yeah, very nice for the collection log. And we did win the challenge, I get to keep all the 2 million. Now, as I said, if I do manage to get the item I am hunting before I get it, and it is a fairly short grind, I am going to do another activity as well. And you might already know by looking at my gear and inventory what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing Dagonoth Kings, and the specific item I'm going to be hunting for is the Berserker Ring. I'm going to be killing all of the three different Dagonoth Kings, and if I get any other ring, it does not count, but it is going to count towards the money I would give away if I do not manage to get the Berserker Ring. So we're going to be killing 128 of each of the Kings. So there's going to be overall roughly around 380 kills. So there should be some chances of getting some nice money here. The Berserker Ring drop is from the Dagonoth Rex, so let's see what the first one is. I have to really turn off the beams, I guess, for the Dagonoth Bones. Let's do that real quick. But uh, yeah, first kill is going to start on 430 kill counts. And of course, I will have Rune Light Trackers for everything. Oh yeah. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Warrior ring. You always have to get one of them before you get any good ones. That is the first ring drop. 61k. Not too great. <laughs> okay, so the first trip now is done and it was kind of messy. I didn't bring enough restores, I think. But uh, I haven't done this in a while, so of course I will have to adjust a couple of things. But uh, I did 12 kills on each Dagonoth King this trip. I guess this is going to be number 13 on Rex, which is not that bad. But I think I can do up to 20 kills in the future if I optimize my inventory a bit more. Seer Call, 27k. I think that's as rare as a ring. I could be wrong on that, but I do know it's pretty rare. But yeah, I guess pretty cool, 27k. <laughs> I am actually going to be spending some of the money from the double dragon warhammers that I got in my last video. If you did not see it, it was a really nice video of 5,000 Listenmen Shamans. But I'm going to be buying the imbued heart and bring that for a magic boost. And I'm also going to change some of the items I'm going to be bringing as well. To be able to bring as many of the restores as possible, I'm going to be bringing uh, the crystal armor for melee and also blood fury to get some healings. I don't really need any food. And I think this is going to be a pretty decent setup. Oh, look at that! 4.14 million archers ring. That of course does not count for winning the challenge, so I need the Berserker ring, but that is 4 million. Oh, another unique, Mud Battlestaff, 26k. 
Yo, another archer's ring. Four million more to either give away or keep. That is really nice. But uh, I'm more than halfway done, so I'm getting a bit scared. So after this Rex, I've killed 76 of all the kings. And I have, of course, not got the Berserker ring, as you guys have seen. But we have got two archer's rings, which is really ridiculously good. And uh, I think this gear setup that I'm using right now is really working well. It's very few switches and I can kill all the kings in time with my stats. So there is no problem there. So overall, I think this is going to be the setup I'm going to be using for all the 50 remaining kills. You always need a dragon axe on the trips, of course. Back in the days, this was uh, worth quite a lot. But now it's worth only 50k, so times have changed. Oh my god, all the rings except the Berserker ring. That is unfortunate. Seer's ring, 327k. We have the Warrior's ring very early and two Archer's rings. Not very far to go, probably like 15 kills left to go. Oh, another Dragon Axe. That is the second one for the video. I feel like I've got a decent amount of drops in general in this video, just no Berserker ring. After this Supreme, I have only three more rounds of kills to go, so it is not looking great for getting the Berserker Ring, but uh, you never know, there is still a small chance. After this Rex, only two more to go, Rex is the one dropping the Berserker Ring, Fremenic Helmet, uh, only two more chances to go. One more after this one, it is going to be very lucky if I get it here, but uh, it is not looking like it's going to happen, which means I am most likely going to give away some money in this video. And here we go, this is the last Dagonoth Rex, you can see all of the ones is currently at 127kc, so after this kill, if I do not get the Berserker Ring, or regardless of what happens, I'm going to kill the other ones one more time, but unless I get something very interesting, I'm not going to show anything of it. But that is the last one, and that is a Mithril Warhammer. So I did lose this challenge, and we're going to have a look at, in a bit, how much money I'm going to be giving to you guys. During this grind, I also got four hard clue scrolls that I all completed, and I'm going to give away half the loot that I got from the Dagonoth Kings, as I said earlier in the video. But from the hard clue scrolls, it's not going to be a lot, so I'm just going to add all of the money that I get from these hard clue scrolls to you guys as well. So hopefully it's going to be good rewards. So I added all the loot together from the Dagonoth Kings in a calculator and divided it by two, and the amount of money I'm going to be giving away is 7.1 million. And of course, on top of that, we're doing these hard clue scrolls, so 7.1 million plus whatever I get from these hard clue scrolls is how much I'm going to be giving away. And I will explain in a bit how you can join in on this giveaway. But first, let's open these hard clue scrolls. So the first one is going to be a master clue scroll, 119k. Second one is 95k. Third one, 166k and unique as well and 82k for the last one. I'm going to try to do the master clue scroll actually, but if I too cannot complete it, it is what it is. But if I can complete it, I can add that to the loot as well, I don't mind. Well, that did not take long. I do not have a fighter torso, and I am not feeling like paying millions for the BA services to do that or do it myself. So, unfortunately, that is going to the ground. Welcome to episode number four of On Drop Rate. In this one, I want to get into the video really quick because everything is now explained for the series, the changes to the rules and everything, and what we're going to do in the beginning of this video. Why I'm saying beginning is I'm expecting this to be a pretty fast grind. And it is King Black Dragon. The item we're going to go for is the KBD Heads. I was initially contemplating maybe going for the pets or the Dragon Visage. But that would take probably weeks. So I'm just going to do the KBD Head as this one activity. And this is thanks to one of you guys leaving a comment on my last video giving me the idea to do this. And let's see if we can get lucky and get the head. Getting the Visage or the pet will not count towards winning this challenge. So only the KBD heads matter, but if I do get the Visage and I do not get the heads, I have quite a hefty amount to give away. Now when it comes to gearing, I'm going to be going with a melee method, and therefore we're going to be buying the Dragon Hunter Lance, which I think is not super expensive right now, 77 million, it says 76 million here. It is not that bad, and I can just sell it back afterwards anyways. It should not have dropped that much in price, might even go up, you never know. And this is going to make a big difference in the grind. And I basically just copied the setup they recommend on Rune Wiki, 
or the old school runescape wiki in general because I don't really know KBD strategies that well, so I think this is going to be fine. But we are just about to get into the kills, but I have currently 22 kill counts and that means with 128 kills, which is the drop rate of the KBD heads, we're going to end at exactly 150 kill count in this video, which is a pretty nice mark to end at, but uh, yeah, let's see if we can get the heads. Oh my god, look at all these medium combat tasks, that is the first kill for the grind and I really am kind of curious how many kills we're going to be getting per trip, just keep getting these pop-ups, but... Uh, yeah, it seems like I'm doing really good damage with this weapon. I'm not really taking that much damage. But uh, I'll get back to you guys when I know how many kills I got in this trip. Hopefully I don't die here. I have no food left. And this is kill number 12, which is actually not bad at all. I think 12 kills every trip is pretty good. But I think I can push that a bit further. I'm going to try to swap out my torture for a blood amulet of fury. Fury is, of course, a bit more tanky. As well as me getting a good amount of heals probably from the big hits I'm getting with the Dragon Hunter Lance could make a big difference. So let's see if we can beat 12 on the next trip when I bring a Blood Amulet of Fury. Alright, so this is now the second trip. I have my Blood Amulet of Fury on and this KBD kill right here is actually kill number 13 for the trips I already beat the previous one. But... I did actually get a shark drop of four sharks, which obviously is going to skew it a bit. And I have only four manta rays left, so it is kind of looking like it's pretty equal. And I think the kills are a bit slower, of course, because I have a fury instead of a torture. So I will probably try another trip with the blood amulet of fury, but uh, the torture might actually be better. This right here is going to be the exact halfway point of this grind, the kill number 64 for some iron arrows. And yeah, it is not a very eventful grind. I'm going to be putting the loot for 64 kills on the screen right now. So you can see overall, without getting any more rares or anything like that, I am going to be getting like 2.6 million from this, roughly. But uh, hopefully we can get something very interesting soon. Well, 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 would you look at that? Dragonstone. That is not on the normal drop table. That's one in 1,000. Oh, and here I am thinking we were not going to be getting it. I'm actually pretty far in. I'm 110 kills in. We got it on 110. 132 on the counter right there. We started with 22. Nice, we actually won this challenge, so let's get on to something else. The loot from this was not great anyways, but from this next one, it potentially could be. But before we get into the next thing, let's have a look at the log, of course. There it is, the KBD heads. We only need the pet and the visage, I say only. But that is a quite a thing to grind. I might go for it in the future, who knows. But for now, that's where we're going to end the log on that boss. But I'm now geared up for the next activity we're going to do, and if you've done this before, you might know what this is going to be. This is going to be the Virewatch Sentinels. They have a 1 in 1,500 drop rate of the Blood Shard, which is actually going up a lot in price right now, and they drop a decent amount of clues, 1 in 100, so we're going to do a bunch of those as well. I'm going to start off this grind by actually trying to not use any prey potions. I'm going to be staying here by the altar. It actually just drains some HP, 3 HP every time you use it. And you can just stay here forever, no need to use prey potions. But the downside, of course, is that it is a bit less AFK because sometimes you actually have to move out and tag them because they don't always run into this room. So it's a bit inconvenient. So I might actually later down the road because it is going to be a lot of kills go outside with just normal prayer pots. Usually when I have bigger grinds, I do one hour of testing just to see how many kills an hour I'm getting and just to see how long basically the grind is going to take. And I've done a one hour now, the loot is on the screen and that is 118 an hour, which means if I go all the way to 1500, this is roughly a 13 hour grind. Would you look at that? A clue scroll hard. Yes, they are 1 in 100, so I'm actually a bit unlucky on that, but we're going to do all of them. Thought this might be actually kind of cool to show. I'm getting 98 defense here. One more hit, there we go. 98 defense. And on this character, I'm actually, or this account you could say, I'm actually really close to maxing out all the combat stats. I have basically only defense left, and then after that, prayer. 
My prayer is around 81 or 82, I think. But all of that is just money. Like, if you have a bunch of money, you can just buy a bunch of bones and basically just slam it out in, like, 10 hours or something, I'm pretty sure. Maybe, probably less than that, honestly. So, that's also a 99 I could get, just as long as I have the money for it. I want to direct your attention to this guy right here, Samurai PR. He actually has over 40 accounts that he only farms blood shards on, as far as I know. He's in my Discord and he's linked pictures of completing, for example, this on the screen right now. Like, a bunch of waterfall quests at the same time. That's some insane multitasking. So far, I've actually been really lucky with hard clue scrolls. By the way, as the last video, the last time I did clue scrolls, all the loot will be included as monster drops at the end of the video. But we have now arrived at the halfway point, 750 kills, and the defense experience is coming in great, actually going to probably get fairly close to halfway to 99 during this grind, which is not bad at all. We have actually, if you look at the loot as well, look at the bottom, I've got 8 clue scrolls so far from 750 kills, which is almost exactly on drop rate, so that is very nice to see. Slightly lucky actually, to be honest, but uh, there's going to be a good amount of clue scrolls to open at the end of this. This wire watch right here is very special, it is wire watch number 1000 of the grind. And now we are slightly unlucky with clue scrolls actually, we have only got 9 so far, so nothing too great since 750. But still a decent amount of clue scrolls, but uh, after this we have 500 more to go. But we are two thirds of the drop rate and we have not got it yet, so it is not looking that good right now. I actually have to do a quest for this clue scroll. That was a long time ago on my main account since I actually had to do that. But uh, I need to finish Fairy Tale 2 to be able to talk to the Fairy Queen because right now she is sleeping or maybe uh, she's hurt right here. But it is a pretty quick quest so that should not be that big of a deal. And uh, yeah, I do want to do all the clue scrolls that I can. Alright, make sure I don't drink it, use it on the queen, and after I suppose some dialogue, that should be the end of the- Well, okay, I, I can just do the clue scroll now. Interesting, but of course we're going to complete the quest as well. Even got the casket on that one, so very nice. That is a casket and the completion of Fairy Tales Part 2, which is nice to have. I don't think I have that many quests left overall on this account, 243 quest points. And some nice XP, I guess. Can you use this on anything? So use it on agility. 2.5k. Yeah, it's something at least. So I had never got this clue step before. It says I have to go anywhere in Ubiscus. And I just had no idea what that was. So I googled it. And it's actually in the new quest that was kind of recent release. The Land of the Goblins. And that is a pretty lengthy quest, if I remember correctly. I think this one. And I don't have this requirement either, so I'm just going to skip this one, unfortunately, which means we're going to have one less clue scroll than what the end uh, loot is going to be. But I don't feel like doing like a one hour detour just to do that one clue scroll. Well, guys, I have to say it is not looking good. <laughs> Let me show you the tracker on Rune Light. 1,499 kills. And no blood shard from this grind so far. This is my last chance right here. Let's see if we're going to win or lose this challenge. That is the last one. And coins is the last one. Very unfortunate we did lose this. Meaning I will have to give away half of the money from the loot that I got from these. Which is roughly 2.2 million. But also I am going to open all of the 14 clue scrolls we actually got. Because I could not do one. And all the money from the clue scrolls, I will add to that. I will always do that from now on. All the rewards from the clue scrolls are going to go straight to the giveaway if I do lose. So 2.2 million plus the 14 hard clue scroll caskets we're going to open right now. And here we are. This is all the 14 hard clue scrolls we're going to open from this grind. And as I said, we're going to give it all away to you guys. So let's start off by opening the first one. First one is 123k. Of course, I'm tracking everything on Rune Light. Rune Defender Ornament Kit. Pretty interesting. 300k. 143k. 300k again. I'm going to do this Master Clue Scroll after. And if I can complete it, I will include that as well in the giveaway. 49k. That's a bad one. 29k. 89k. 71k. And that is a unique. Interesting. Of course, I'm going to be keeping these items. I'm just going to give away pure cash. 
But uh, Gothic Sky Shield, another unique last four ones. Pretty mediocre, 62, 16k, probably the worst hard clue I've seen in a long time. Oh my god, no way, Robin Hood hat? That's, that's rare, and that's a lot of money, 1.2 million. 1.2 million, okay, last one, that's a really cool one. And that's really cool on the ground as well, I gotta pick everything up, but uh, wow. That has to be quite a good amount of money now that we got the Robin Hood hat, that's crazy. Good for the collection log as well. Now, from Hard Clue Scrolls, how it works with the drop rates is that every single rare that you can get, so anything on the collection log really, is 1 in 1625. But because there are so many of them, the chances of getting a unique is pretty common. But the most expensive rare on the entire Hard Clue Scroll table, except the Third Age and the Gilded, which is in the Mega Rare table, is the Robin Hood hat. Which is the 1.2 million one. So I was super lucky there. And of course, I did not get the blood shard, so that's going to be given away. But let's do the master clue scroll now and see if we can complete it. Otherwise, let's see how much I have to give away. Actually, getting pretty close to done with the master clue scroll. Hopefully, I can complete it. This is step number six, so it could be the casket. And very poetic that I actually have to use a blister with flail on Fallow right now because I've been equipped with this most of the video, killing the vampire sentinels. So let's do that and see. No, it is not the end. And we have to do the Joral thing. That's usually fine. And there it is. That's the Master Clue Scroll completed. I've only completed, I think, seven of these overall. Yes, yeah, seven. I had a look at this earlier. And the only uniques I have is the bowl wig and the samurai shirt. So uh, let's see what we can get. I do have many mimics turned on, so we might get that as well. Let's see what we get. And that is... Ooh, that seems like a lot of value, actually. How much is that? 473k. Welcome to another episode of the On Drop Rate series. We are going to be doing the Corrupted Gauntlet in this video. Yes, this is a big money maker, so there is a big chance to make money or have to give away a lot of money to you guys. And what item we're going to be going for is the Crystal Armor Seed. This is a 1 in 50 drop rate and it's currently worth around 7 million. But there is another item on the drop table of the Corrupted Gauntlet, which is 1 in 400, which is worth a 150 million, which is the Enhanced Weapon Seed. If I get this and I do not get the Armor Seed, I have to give away 75 million, so the stakes are very big. Now, of course, I'm going to be doing the Corrupted Gauntlet, is I'm going to be getting the Tier 1 armor, I think it's good enough because I'm nearly maxed combat, and then get the Tier 3 weapons. But if I do manage to fail and I get the really bad loot, because if you do succeed, you get the good loot. If you fail and die on the last boss, you get really, really bad loot, for example, like 10 trout or something like that. That is not going to be counted towards the 50 attempts I'm going to do, because that is not a chance at getting the Crystal Armor Seed, so it would not really make sense. I have not done this in a while, but that was a pretty clean run, honestly. Pretty decent time on that for not having done it in a long time. And I did not die, that's the most important thing. And I probably got a lot of these achievements. Yes, they did change them recently, so it makes sense. First one is worth like 150-200k maybe, but uh, we're going to be ending at 103 overall KC. I think this was actually a perfect run, so I think, yes, there's the achievement. Perfect Corrupted Hunlef, very nice, already uh, this early into the grind. And we get a Crystal Weapon Seed, are you kidding me? That's the same drop rate as the Armor Seed, but considerably cheaper, 332k. Still a good amount of money, but uh, missed on the drop table. We are now 5 kills in, and I have not died yet, and honestly, I don't think I'm going to die that much, because last time I did the Corrupted Gauntlet, I did it with way worse stats, no rigor, no augury, so I had to always get the tier 2 armor, which actually made it kind of hard on time, sometimes I didn't get enough food to do it, but now I just do it in tier 1 armor every time, tier 3 weapons, as I said, and it's really reliable, so I should not really be dying much unless I really screw up, so let's see what chest number 5 is going to be, let's open it, and we get some mediocre stuff. Oh, look at that! The first uh, Dragon Halberd of the grind. I'm probably going to get a few of these. They are the best Alkeballs you can get here, which is 150k. 
So we are now at chest number 10 and I want to make a quick mention about the crystal shards. I am actually going to count each of these as 12,000 GP because you can actually crush them and make super combat potions. I don't have the level for it but you technically can do that and every single one of them is worth 12,000 according to the wiki if you do that. So that's going to be quite a lot of money from these but uh, let's see what chest number 10 is going to be. It is going to be some alkyballs again. It's not crazy good or anything, but I think this is the fastest prep so far. Two minutes left, so let's see if we can get a personal best. Yeah, that's not happening. That was a mega, mega slow hunt left. 422, and my personal best is overall 850, and that was a 944. And another Dragon Halberd, not bad loot, but uh, yeah, I definitely had a very bad hunt left. If I get equally fast prep next time and a faster hunt left, I can do it. Actually, back-to-back -back runs here, and I have 241, 240, 239, okay, is where I'm entering. Yeah, this is, could definitely be a personal best. I do have a feeling this was slightly faster, not massively, but maybe under the 4-minute mark. Let's see if we get the kill here, and let's have a look at the time. It is 350, and yes, personal best by 10 seconds, very nice. And let's see what the loot is going to be. It is going to be... Elite Clue Scroll, right, that is a 1 in 20, and I will of course do all of them. Quite interestingly, the uh, Elite Loot table was buffed very recently, so it's going to be interesting to see what we get. So all the changes to Elite Clue Scrolls that they recently made will be on the screen right now. You can read all of them if you're interested, but let's see what the first Elite Clue Scroll is going to be for this video. And it is, oh my god, that's a lot of uniques. Yuri's Hat, how much is this worth? 88k. Uh, but it is two uniques, very nice. I think uniques from Elite Clue Scrolls is kind of hard to get, so that is very nice. How does it look? Nice. Oh, another Elite Clue Scroll, very nice. Always fun to do this. I've been pretty lucky with these so far, which is nice to see. Always fun to open them. We could indeed complete it, and here we go. This is the casket, let's see what we get. And we get a Master Clue Scroll, very nice. And a Black Dehyde Body G, which is a unique for the collection log, and 188k worth. Very unfortunate, I have to make a blood rune and I only have 61 rune crafting and I am actually on step number 7 of this master, so unfortunately I will have to drop that for this time. No way, are you kidding me? Oh my god, I got an enhanced crystal weapon seed. I'm on KC number 24, 152 million. Oh my god, dude, if I do not get an armor seed now, I am so screwed. That is insane, though. I did not expect to see that, even though I mentioned it in the intro, that is just nuts. Man, I still can't believe that actually happened. We're on 30kc now, no armor seed yet, so I have not won the challenge yet. Chest number 30, and we get some standard stuff, nothing too great. 20 more to go, man, if I do not get this armor seed, it is going to be a big giveaway, I can say that. Oh, crystal weapon C number two. That is unfortunate. It is, of course, one in 50, same as the armor seed, and that was KC 36. So only 14 more to go. We are getting very close to done with this grind. That is KC number 40, so 10 more to go after this one. And uh, let's see what chest number 40 has for us. Hopefully, something very juicy. Oh, Elite Clue Scroll, that is pretty juicy. Hopefully we can complete it. By the way, I did have to bank everything the last Clue Scroll I did. That's why the inventory is a bit uh, more scarce, but I have everything tracked, of course. Third Elite Casket for the video. What are we going to get from this one? Maybe a Mimic? Let's have a look at it. Open and... Oh, that's quite a lot of money. 354k, that's really good for an Elite Clue Scroll. Without a doubt, this is the fastest run I've done. Let's see, 746. That was insanely fast. 449 prep and 256 hunt left, and we get nothing too great. But wow, that is a really, really fast one. I was kind of curious after that to see what the actual combat achievement times are for this, and the master one is 730. So I was only 16 seconds off that. Uh, but the Grandmaster one is 6 minutes and 30 seconds, so that is quite a bit off, but uh, in the future I will probably try to go for that. So we are getting really close to the end, we only have 3 more chests to open, and I'm going to put all the loot that we currently have on the screen right now. Let's open chest number 48 and see what happens. Are we going to get the armor seed in this one? We are not. Only 2 more chances to go. 
All right, 102 KC now, and only two more chests to go until we are done with this grind. Let's see what we get for the second to last. No armor seed yet. Only one more chance to go. Otherwise, bye-bye 80 million. No, that was the first death. I was so... Oh my god, are you kidding me? Ah, oh, damn it. I actually thought I was going to go deathless the entire time, but then I end up dying. That is so unfortunate. But uh, what is the loser chest going to be? Adamant plate legs. Let's all talk about it. This time we did not screw up. Here we go. One more hit. Yeah, I think that's the last one. All right. Oh, man. This chest, chest number 50, is going to be a 80 million chest worth. If I get the armor seed, I get 80 million. If I do not, well... I have to give away 80 million plus to you guys. So let's just go ahead and do it. Let's rip off the band-aid. Chest number 50 is going to be no armor seed. It is decided. I lost the challenge. And it is time to check out how much I'm going to be giving away to you guys. This is ridiculous. What is going on guys and welcome to another episode of the on drop rate series in this one we are actually going to be doing Solra this has been recommended quite a bit and it's been on my radar for a while But this one is going to be slightly different in terms of what item we're going for than the other ones Every unique on the drop table is one in 512 But that is a lot of Solra kills over the time of me playing runescape in general I have like a thousand kills a bit more than that if you include my group iron man but I don't want to basically do 50% of that for one video. That would take super long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take any fang as a win. The magic fang or the tanzanite fang. But that means the pet, the mutagens, the onyx and the serpentine visage does not count. And the amount of kills I'm going to be doing is 256, which is the drop rate of getting any of the fangs. Over the course of this video, I would not be surprised if I did change up my setup a bit, because this is a lot of switches, an 8-way switch with the anti-venom, so I can actually use an ancestral hat for some more damage. But um, I'm going to start off with this, see how it goes, if I feel comfortable with this. Over all the 256 kills, I might stay with this. Otherwise, I might go for like a pure range setup, sell some stuff, buy a bow for Adenan, and just camp that and be more relaxed. I guess we'll see over time. And when it comes to my collection log, I have 1001 kill count on this boss. The only items I'm missing is the mutagens and the pets, so getting any of those would be really nice. But of course, they do not count towards winning the challenge. Only the magic fang or the tanzanite fang would. But that means we're going to be ending at 1257 kill count if I do not win the challenge. I mean, it is a lot of switches. It's kind of annoying and tedious to do, but the first kill, let's see what it is. Nothing too great. And the kill time is 2 minutes. Kind of interesting because on my group Iron Man with the bow for Adinan, when I only camped that, of course I was using Thralls as well, so that might have skewed it a bit. But those kills were around two minutes as well, and I'm really like tryharding now. So I'm going to do a couple of more kills with this setup, and then I might consider buying a bow for Adinan. Okay, this is going to be a big difference though. This was really good. That was a 120. Okay, that's the potential of using this gear. That's why I wanted to try it, even though it might not be the thing I go for the entire time. But that is an elite combat task as well. Soul Rust Speed Trialist. Really nice. Maybe I was just rusty. 1 minute and 12 seconds. The speed is picking up now. So I think the gear is working fine for now. Man, what? I got hit like a 30 into a 40. That was ridiculous. I didn't- I only died one time in my last video on 50 Corrupted Gauntlet and I already died on kill count number 10 here. Oh, did I get it? Oh, Snake Rebound. I was actually trying to get that for a bit. Uh, it's killing the boss with Vengeance, so the last hit has to be the uh, rebound from the Vengeance. Pretty cool. Oh, this was so fast. This is interesting to see the speed. One minute and six seconds. That's even a new personal best. And consider that's over 1,020 kills. Uh, I think the setup is good. I want to get a sub one minute in this video. Are you... What? Are you kidding me? I've done 35 kills. And I get the Tanzanite Fang. Oh, I guess it's as easy as that. That is the grind done already. I was always like putting this off because I thought it would take so long, but uh, I guess not. 35 kills is all it takes. That is ridiculous. Well, we won the challenge, I suppose, but uh, yeah, that, that was fast. Now, of course, because I was so extremely lucky with that, we have to do another activity, and I have the perfect one. 
I am going to do some God Wars for the first time in the series, and the boss we're going to be taking on is Krill Tutsaroth, or however you pronounce that, honestly I have no idea. It's the Samurai boss of the God Wars dungeon, and uh, there are two items that are both 1 in 127 drop rate, and that is the Steam Battle Staff and the Samurai and Spear. The Samurai and Spear being worth quite a lot more than the Steam Battle Staff, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to be hunting the Steam Battle Staff. Why I think that's more interesting is because if I do get a Samurai and Spear, that is a lot of money I could potentially have to give away, but if I was going for the Samurai and Spear, there would never really be any loss for me, because if I got the Spear, I get to keep everything. If I do not get it, I would have to give away like 500k. So I'm going to be going for the Steam Battle Staff, doing 127 kills in total. The way I used to do Krill back in the days was by using melee and doing like 3-4 kills every single trip, but there is another method that is a lot harder to do where you have to mark a bunch of tiles and you run around with the bow of Faradina and then hit the boss now and then and you basically take 0 hits. So I'm going to actually spend 148 million maybe, let's see what it goes for. 146 million on a bow of Faradina and I'm not going to make it infinite charge because I do want to sell it back later. But at least I have some crystal shards from the Corrupted Gauntlet grind right here. So this should last me quite some time. Let's do 200. And now it is charged with how many charges? 20,000. That should definitely be enough. And there he is. He is actually very intimidating because I have never done this method before. I watched a guide and I just marked all the tiles. This is going to be a learning process for sure. But it is, as I said, something I want to learn. And uh, I have currently... 101 kill count on this boss, everything done with melee. I've been very lucky as you can see on this boss so far, but no steam battle staff. And the end KC, if we do not get the steam battle staff, is going to be 228. Overall, this is my gear setup, but let's have a go at this and enter the room. Okay, there it is. That's the first kill. I have to say it was very bad. Uh, I could have done a lot of things better, but uh, I need to also turn on right click so I don't accidentally click on the minions all the time. I guess uh, this is the one. That's going to make it a bit easier, but uh, yeah, first kill down at least and I did not die. Also, after you complete the kill, you can actually blood barrage off these minions. They stack up real nice and you can actually get full HP between every single kill. You can see I'm at 86 and I started at like 30 HP. And I do take a bit of damage when doing this, and I do screw up sometimes, so it is very nice to do this. Even though I basically screwed everything up and that was my first time ever doing it, I still managed to get 7 kills in that trip, and I know I can get a lot more than that if I do it correctly. I should basically be able to stay there as long as I have prey potions, I'm pretty sure. But uh, I have to get better at it, and I mean, with melee, it was like 4 kills a trip, so already better even though I'm terrible. Want to make a quick mention about the minions in this room. Uh, sometimes even if I do not get hit by the boss at all, the minions can just absolutely destroy me. I did bring actually the Justiciar helmet to get some more ranged defense because I'm praying magic. I don't really need magic defense. And the crystal helmet is good for damage, but compared to all the other pieces, it doesn't give that much more accuracy and uh, damage increase for the bow for Adinan. So always, when I do God Wars and stuff like that, I bring the Justiciar Helmet to get some more ranged and melee defense from the minions. But uh, even though I have that, sometimes these minions just absolutely shred me. As you can see, it is quite a lot of damage you can take sometimes if you're unlucky. Man, man, man. The day has been very interesting. Uh, I lost my cannon base because I teleported out without picking it up. And then I went in using an ecumenical key, went all the way back, and I tried to place another one, and it said, no, you can't do that, you have to reclaim your lost cannons. I went back to Falador, and I picked up a new one, and I came back, and I realized I forgot anti-poisons. So this is now the third time I am back here, and I think I have everything now. When I watch people's guides, they say that you basically don't lose any food here. They just say, oh, you always profit food, you just uh, pretty much kill the boss and then you heal off the minions and you're fine and you get some food drops from the minions. But uh, since I started, I've done 23 kills and I've got two food drops from the minions overall. So that is pretty unfortunate, maybe I'm just unlucky, but also I do actually get hit by the boss now and then, so I am kind of struggling doing this. But it's all a learning process, I'm probably running the wrong way sometimes and screwing up things. 
But uh, over time, hopefully, over these 127 kills, I will learn quite a bit. I don't know if I actually showed an entire kill, but uh, you can see the markers on the ground, they have different numbers. And I start on number 1, do one attack, run to number 2. And then now I click on my cannon base, which is a red click, meaning the boss just can't hit me for some reason. I don't know, Pepega boss. Run to 4, 5... And every single time I go to a marker, I hit the boss once. Sometimes here on 7 and 8, I do actually just skip 8 because I'm scared of the boss. I'm inexperienced and I just go to 1 again. But uh, yeah, I just repeat this over and over until the boss is dead. After that, I just range the uh, uh, black ad. I don't know what it's actually called, but the major. And then I mage the two minions at the end, stacking them together so I can barrage them. What? My, wait, my cannon base... Oh my god, are you kidding me? Ah, oh, this is proof I've never done this before, man. Ah, uh, I didn't know that the cannon base despawns after the timer. I guess I have to pick it up randomly, like, after a couple of kills and then replace it. Ah, oh, okay, well, I guess I have to reclaim it again. But that is kind of awkward. I guess the trip is ending now. Nice, would you look at that, Godsword Shard 2, the first unique of the grind, and it is like 150k of course, but not a collection log pop-up because I've already got that before, but nonetheless it's always nice to see uniques on the ground. Not quite the halfway mark, but a milestone I would say, that is kill count number 50 of the grind, and I have only died one time so far, which is actually the trip before this, that's why you can see the uh, things I have on the ground right here. And I did actually get hit like a 45 or something from the boss because I was a bit slow. But uh, one death in 50 kill counts when I've never done this strategy before is uh, pretty good to me. Yo, Steam Battlestaff, there it is. <laughs> the only unique that I get is the one I am hunting. Steam Battlestaff worth 36,000. That's a win again. W after W in this video. I mean, last one I really took a loss of uh, the enhanced weapon seed, but uh, this one we're doing good. That is 55 kill count for winning this challenge. Very nice. Welcome to another episode of the On Drop Rate series. In the last one, we did some Krill, we did some Solra, and we got pretty lucky actually. We did only like 55 Krill and 35 Solra before we actually finished both of those grinds and got to the items we were looking for. In this one, we have a pretty ambitious goal. We're going to be fighting Vorkath. I've seen a lot of people recommend this, and the item we're going to be hunting for is the Dragon Bone Necklace, which has a 1 in 1000 drop rate. So we might be doing 1,000 Vorkath kills if I get unlucky. I have now transformed into the gear I am going to be using for this boss. I did sell my Imbued Heart and my Dragon Warhammer because I wanted enough money to actually buy the Dragon Hunter crossbow. I've only really ever ranged Vorkath, so I'm going to be doing it with the ranged method instead of the melee one. And if we go all the way down to Vorkath, I currently have 300 KC, and I do actually have a Dragon Bow Necklace drop, but of course... This is irrelevant, we're going to go for 1300 KC or the Dragon Bow Necklace. Man, I have to say that was a pretty rusty kill, the first one of course in a long time, 320. I think I can do 2 minute kills on average if I get a bit more into it. Both a combination of better hits and some better gameplay, 149 on the second one, that's what we wanna see. Oh, already? What? 16 kills in, Vorkath head number one. Well, a pretty fast kill as well. I don't think I really have any use for this because I already have the Avas that uses the head. But um, yeah, it's a pretty cool drop, I guess. Oh yes, there we go. That first elite clue scroll of the grind. Uh, that was very short after the head. Actually, only two more kills. I need to mark those so it's not a white item. But uh, they are one in 65, so we're going to do quite a bit of these. Man, back in the days, these dragon plate legs were pretty rare and valuable. Now you just get them all the time from Vorkath. We're going to get a lot of them in these 1000 kills. Or less than that if we get the necklace. What is this? Dragon Bolts unfinished. 276,000 and an elite clue scroll, which I now marked. You can see that. It's that big beam, very nice. Second elite clue scroll. And we're going to open all of these at the end, by the way. Oh my god, a javelins. <laughs> They're always rare, man. Let me see, I have the loot table right here. It's uh, almost 1 in 1,000. It's 2 drops in 1,920. So yeah, almost 1 in 1k. 
So it has been about four hours roughly of killing Vorkath and this is now kill count number 100. You can see in the chat there 400 kill count done of course starting at 300 and that means that I'm getting 25 kills an hour meaning the entire grind if I do not get the necklace is around 40 hours. Oh, that's a double. Oh, that is a double. Look at that. Dragon Bolt's unfinished. Like, the best drop you can get. That's almost 500k in one drop. So, meanwhile, I've been running to Vorkath. This guy has been here, like, the entire time just thieving these stalls. And he has an alt account that got all the market guards stuck. I was really curious what this was. If it was, was for experience or anything else. I asked Max Nick in my group Iron Man team. And he said it was the best chance of getting the pet. So, that's quite an interesting tactic. Oh, that is why we do PVMing. The dopamine from that. Two purple colors and Elise Cruzgold and Vorkath had in the same kill. Always nice to see. Actually, did kind of miss it. You can see in the chat 600kc, which means 300 for this video. And you can see the counter on the top right. I'm almost at 1 million ranged experience from just doing Vorkath. The experience you get is pretty good because you hit so high on the boss all the time. And from this entire grind, I'm going to be getting more ranged experience than I got from Listed Men Shamans. And that is around 2 million I got from that, I think. I think this is going to be more like 3 million, which is very nice. I was actually streaming some Vorkath killing and I was told by my chat, I can't remember exactly who said it, but that you can use a Slayer staff and just have Crumble on Dead as autocast. Let's see if this is going to be a bit more convenient. Alright, here we go. Finally got the attack to happen and let's equip the staff. Alright, yeah, that is quite a lot more smoother. It's I don't have to go to the spellbook and sometimes you misclick on it and then you just have to tank the 50, but with the staff that never really happens. Not quite the halfway point yet, but we have made a good dent in the amount of kills. We have to do 400 kills and nothing yet. No unique, nothing really too interesting to show. Of course, the Vorkath heads and the Elite Clue Scrolls, but that's about it. I have to say, this has taken quite some time, but we are now on the halfway point after this one. In the chat, you will see 800 KC, which means 500 kills done for this video. We're on the halfway point, and unfortunately, the rune light loot tracker is actually missing like two kills, I think. I will put the loot on the screen right now. We have not actually got any uniques at all, which is kind of unfortunate. I hope I get at least one of them in the last 500. If not the necklace, then at least like a visage or the skeletal visage, the jar or the pet. Just anything interesting would be nice. Because it's kind of hard to keep up the motivation. I've been doing this for like 22 hours now. And I still have 22 hours roughly left to do, so quite a bit. But we also have the elite clue scrolls to do in the end, which is going to be quite a lot of them. I have to say what's really good about the series and what actually keeps my motivation up a lot is that when I'm on these really big grinds, I never know when it could be done. This kill right here could be it. It is not, but it could be the final kill. That's the thing. Like, I never know if this is going to be my last kill that I do every single kill or if I have to spend 40-50 hours here just grinding out Vorkath. Oh! <laughs> No way! Jar of Decay. That is a 1 in 3000 drop rates and uh, yeah, that's not a good look. It is not looking great for getting the dragon bone and necklace if we're getting 1 in 3k's but not 1 in 1k. It's worth 20k so not that much money but uh, it's always nice to see uniques at least. Let's have a look at my collection log now for Vorkath, how it looks. 14 heads, the Dragon Bone necklace from before, the actual video, and the Jar of Decay. Of course, I miss the really rare items, but uh, yeah, we're getting somewhere at least. We're about to hit a pretty big milestone, 700 kills for this grind, and overall on the account, have a look at the chat, 1000 KC on a 2 minute kill, pretty slow one, or average I would say, but yeah, 1000 KC, that is a lot of Warcraft kills, but as I've said earlier, we're going to end at 1300, so we still have 300 more to go. We are now on the last day of the grind, this is kill number 950, and we have no dragon bone necklace. Let's go actually to the collection log real quick, all the way to Vorkath. We have 15 Vorkath heads, one jar of decay, which you saw before, but no dragon bone necklace. Or we do have one, but not during this grind. And no visage, no pets, and no skeletal visage either, which uh, I guess is expected. But uh, yeah, no dragon bone necklace, only 50 more kills to go. 
Uh, I'm... It is getting tense. Man, I have to say, it is not looking good. 990 kills done for the video. Only 10 more to go. And we still have not won the challenge. And after these kills, I have some elite clue scrolls to open. Not quite sure how many it is. I had to drop two of them as well, I believe. So we will have to see at the end of this. But uh, probably a good amount at least. Kill number 998 is going to be... Nothing. 999 kills, only one more after this one, and we get nothing. It is down to the last kill. Are we going to win or lose this challenge? It all comes down to this last kill. This has all in all with the elite clue scrolls and everything I've done. Banking, buying new supplies has taken me 52 hours. I've timed everything and this is the last kill. And I get no Dragon Bow Necklace. 1,300 Ks in the chat. And I will put the loot on the screen for all the 1,000 kills right now. It is 998. For some reason, it did not track two of the kills. But that is not going to make much of a difference. And you can see in the chat, 1,300. We start on 300. And we get no Dragon Bow Necklace. I think it's time to open some Elite Clue Scrolls and give away a lot of money. Now, even though I got 17 clues, I had to drop two of them, so we only got 15, but that is a good amount of elite clue scrolls. And as in every single video, I do a giveaway. I give away half the loot that I got from the boss, as well as everything that I get from the clue scrolls. So let's go ahead and see how much I'm going to be giving away from just the clue scrolls. First one is 156k. 213k. I would love to see some collection log items because of course that I get to keep a master clue scroll. I'm not going to try to do all of them right now, but I will try to do it after this. A unique? I already have that. Okay, blacksmith helmet. That's 144k though. And that is another unique royal gown top. 138k is so not worth that much. Let's just keep opening. Oh, you oh I got a mimic. Interesting. Wait, where is the mimic even? You cannot open the casket at the moment if it turned out to be... Oh, I see. Okay, I have to bank. All right, let's continue. Open the last eight ones for ranger gloves. That has to be rare. How expensive is that? 584k. That's pretty good, I would say. They're probably kind of rare, but let's continue. 300k. I'm not sure what actually uh, makes it that expensive. 75k. 262k. We're getting some good amounts of money, at least, from these Elite Cruise Girls. 250k. And, oh my god, Light Infinity Color Kit? Oh, it's not worth much, though. I thought these would be worth a lot. But uh, the last one, can we open it? Yes, we can. All right, 84k. Let's have a look at the overall loot from these. And I will try to do the Master as well. All right, we could actually complete the Master Clue Scroll. Let's see what the casket is going to give us. Hopefully something good. And after that, we can have a look at how much I'm going to be giving away. Of course, I'm going to give away everything from this Master Clue as well. You can get some really high-valued item from this, so let's go ahead and open it. Oh, we got a Mimic. Very interesting. Let's go and do it. And there it is. That's the Mimic killed. Gotta pick up the Mahogany Plank, of course, for luck. And that is my third Mimic ever killed. Let's leave this place and let's see what we get from the Master Clue Scroll. That included a Mimic. We get... A very average master clue, but it's 448,000. And now let's see how much money I owe you finally. Welcome to another episode of the on drop rate series. In the last one, we did some Vorkath for 1000 KC. And I think it's about time that we actually do some skilling bosses because I have not done anything except for combat so far. And that is why we're going to be going for the Abyssal Needle from the Guardians of the Rift in this video. The Abyssal Needle is 1 in 300 drop rates, so we're going to be doing a maximum of 300 permits with increments of 100 at a time. And this is the gear I'm going to be using, I have it in my inventory. It is basically just full graceful with Varrock Armor 1. It's the highest one I have, sadly. It's not very good, but it works, it does its job. And then we have bought the Dragon Pickaxe Upgrade Kit, so we're going to be doing that for some Fashion Scape. Let's equip that Dragon Pickaxe. Looks... Uh, a bit over the top maybe. Now before we get into the grind I have 61 rune crafting and I have actually not done the quest to even access the mini game so that's something we have to do first. I actually think this is like the fifth time just this week I've helped people talking Spanish and I've just helped them with quests or I've helped them at like Puro Puro or stuff like that uh, and uh, I'm just using Google Translate it's always fun to do. And here we go, this is the end of the quest, 5,000 runecrafting experience, and the Temple of the Eye. 
as well as the Spanish guy I'm trying to help. I'm going to be using the mass wards for this and how I'm going to be tracking the loot by the way which is going to be how many runes I get from this grind is by doing this. I just sold every single rune that I have except for the ones I have in my rune pouch which is all I need for NPC contact and I'm going to be using this to repair my pouches through the dark mage because running all the way there is not the most convenient thing so I'm just using this basically and all the other runes I can just track by seeing how many I have in my bank so that should be an easy thing to do. This minigame really revolutionized runecrafting and uh, we're going to feel the benefits of that. The first benefits of that rather, right now for the first runecrafting level of this grind. I really hope to get a decent amount of levels because 61 runecrafting is not the best. But there we go, 62 runecrafting. We don't have many points right now, only 10 elemental and 6 catalytic. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, all I needed to get to get one level. So this is really fast. We do have a pretty big level coming in here. Oh, we got Nature Altar as well. That's perfect. Let's go in and we should be getting the level here. 223 experience left. Let's go ahead and it's going to be 65 rune crafting. And that is big because that is death runes. Let's get that 65 and death runes. So now I will get some more money from doing this because obviously death runes is uh, probably one of the most valuable runes you can get at the current level I am. Alright, so it has been some time now and we are going to be getting 100 points after this game, I'm pretty sure. It says 100% there, but I think you have some uh, grace period to get some extra points. But uh, in a second here, when the game ends, we're going to be getting, hopefully exactly on the dot, yes, there we go. 101 elemental and 100 catalytic points, which means we have 100 loots to go for. So let's see what the first loot is going to be like. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and click on the reward guardian and anytime I get a collection log item, I'll show it to you guys. And there we go, that's the first one already, Abyssal Pearls. We're going to get a bunch of that, so kind of expect that. Oh, that is a collection log item as well, Intricate Pouch. Pretty much, probably not much more rare than the Pearls, but pretty much on the same level. Oh, no way! Abyssal Lantern! I think that's 1 in 700. That is so nice! That's so good because you can actually use logs on that and you get more points when you do the minigame. So that's actually going to speed this grind up a bit. Man, that is so nice. And two intricate pouches right after that as well. I did not expect to get that. I had to bank everything and we have like 15 more permits to go, so not that many. I might as well do them all on video. Of course, all of the runes that I get from this as well is mainly going to be in the loot overall. I've tracked every rune that I've crafted as well as all of the ones I get here. And on the side on rune light where it tracks all the loot and everything, everything that I get from this rift specifically will be included. So all of the loot in general, if I do not get the Abyssal Needle, is going to be very easy to track. So that's a good thing, but yeah, 100 need, uh, 100 loots, but no needle, and there you can see all the loot for 100 rifts. It's 600k, so not a lot of money, but we still have to open the intricate pouches at the end. There's a couple of different logs I was actually thinking about using for the lantern, but I think I decided on U logs because it gives a 10% chance to double the points that I get, which is not at the end, but when you put the actual like contribution points into the guardian, you get usually like 80 points, but now you have a chance of getting 160. This is the first game after using the lantern, and I decided to put everything into catalytic to see how much I could get. I'm at 701 points, and I think actually in that I got at least one time double points, but I think actually even twice. That is 8 overall points. The highest I've ever got before the lantern was 6 points in one game. So that is going to be so nice to use for the rest of the grind. I haven't really shown many of the levels I've been getting, but uh, I started at 61 and now I'm going to be getting 70 rune crafting. Not really a big level or anything, it doesn't really unlock anything, like uh, blood runes is at 77, which would be the next big step. And the next uh, pouch that you can use is at 75, so yeah, nothing too big here, but still a nice milestone to get. Alright, so we have another 100 points coming in here after the game, 100 catalytic energy and 102 elemental actually, it's a bit much on that, but uh, that means 100 more loots to go, 200 overall, let's get the needle. What? No! I was like, I got the needle but no pop-up for the collection log and I get baited by a normal needle. Wow, that is not as rare as the needle, so it's not as bad, it's 1 in 120 I believe and the needle is 1 in 300 of course, but... Uh, Oh, that is such a bait. Dude, the- 
Abyssal Blue Dye. Really? All right. That is one in 1,200. There's three different colors you can get, and they're all one in 1,200. So technically getting a dye is one in 400, but that is still more rare than getting the needle. So it's not looking good. No needle this time either, we have 5 more to go, so it's not looking good this time, but we do have 100 more after this as well. But, uh, do we have one more? Let's see, yep, that is all of them, let's do a check. So we've done 200 now, so let's get the last 100 points, and hopefully we get a needle that time. But we can also look at the uh, bank here, I have quite a lot of intricate pouches, I have 13, and we have the talismans and everything, so I will have everything up in the end, regardless if I win or lose. So we are not done yet, but I thought this was kind of cool, and I, I don't know, if you're a very avid uh, Guardians of the Rift player, you might understand. I've been doing this pretty AFK and not the most efficient way. That is 100 runs for soon, I mean, kind of done. 300 points, but um, yeah, you can definitely do it faster than that. I've just been kind of slacking AFKing, and it's been kind of fun. After the last clip I went to bed and uh, today we now woke up and finished the grind and this is the last 100 points for the Guardian of the Rift for the accumulation of 300 total points, 117 overall rifts completed. So let's go ahead and see if we can get to the Abyssal Needle or if we're going to be losing this challenge. Alright, so let's go ahead and check the reward guardian. 200 times looted and 100 loots ready to go. So let's go ahead and search the guardian. Oh man, Abyss already die. Not the item we want, but uh, two different dies. That's pretty cool. I think you can actually trade them in for different colors. So I have two blue dies or two red dies now technically. Oh, second normal needle coming in, the one in 120, so not as rare as the Abyssal Needle, but it's always a bait. I thought I actually had it there. It is not looking good to win this challenge. Only 10 more to go, soon it's going to be only 5 more to go, there we go, 5 more to go. Yeah, it's not looking like we're going to win this, let's see the last ones, maybe 2 or 3 more, let's see. And that is the last one, so we did lose this challenge, but in terms of actually getting unique items, we were kind of lucky, we just got unlucky on the Abyssal Needle. That actually seems to be like a theme in this series, I keep getting rarer items than I actually want, but uh, end up losing the challenge in the end. It is now time to open all the 15 intricate pouches I have, and these can actually give hard clue scrolls, so if I do get one, I'm going to stop and do that as well, and include it in the giveaway loot. So let's have a look at if I can get one of those. Only experience lamps, some runes, and oh, there we go, okay, so let's complete that. Alright, completed it, and we're back with the last 6 intricate pouches, and oh, we got them, I think this is the most rare item, it's fashionscape, it's so good looking. I don't know if it has any effect, let's inspect it. There's a note inside, you can read it. Oh, some lore, I guess, but, um, wow, that is really cool. Dragon Med Helm, and an XP Lamp, and some runes. But, wow, that is so cool. The Lost Bag is actually kind of rare. It's on, the, the drop rate is on the screen, but, uh, yeah, it looks really good as well. And it's not tradable, so this is the only way of getting it. Of course, we got one hard clue from that as well, so let's go ahead and open that. A very mediocre one, but a lot of purple sweets, so still 124, almost 125k worth. Now, before we actually end the video, there is only one thing left to do, and that is spend the Abyssal Pearls. And also, I did mention you can actually change the color on these, so I'm going to be changing the blue one to a red one. So you talk to this one, and... I will do that, and then after a bit you get to change it. I would like to swap it to a red die. And then now we have two red dies, and we're going to be trading them again, and we're going to be buying the top and the bottom of the items, the robe of the eye and the robe bottoms of the eye. We still have 195, but I don't think we can buy anything more with that. So that is two items, we're now going to die red. Let's do that, yes. And the other one as well, and let's equip both of them, and that is now how we look after doing 300 reward permits in the Guardians of the Rift minigame. What is going on guys, and welcome to another episode of the On Drop Rate series. In the last one we went for the Guardians of the Rift to get the Abyssal Needle, which we did not end up getting unfortunately. But in this one, maybe we will get luckier and get the item we're hunting for. We are going to go for the Bryophyta Essence from Bryophyta. Which means we are doing 118 kills, and to actually be able to do Bryophyta, you need a mossy key, and you get that from the moss giants. You can kill them in various different places in the world, 
So let's get into that. So let's briefly talk about how I'm going to be getting the mossy keys. I'm going to be killing them in the wilderness right here at this location. And the drop rate of the keys, if you're on a slayer task, which I'm not going to be, but that is 1 in 50. And if you're not on a slayer task, it's 1 in 60. But there are other locations in the game where they are 1 in 150 of slayer task. And I, I would assume 1 in 50 if you're on a slayer task. But there is also the Iowerth dungeon in the Priftinus area, which is 1 in 120 or one in 40 on a slayer task so there's a variety of different ones but for no slayer task this is the most consistently best one so i'll just go for 100 keys use them all see how many i get from the boss and if i'm still missing a couple for the 118 i'll just come back and get those as well it has now roughly been one and a half to two days almost of AFKing Moss Giants and I do not have all the keys yet but I have a good amount, I have 81 keys so we're still going to get 19 more but I did want to talk about two things. I'm getting a lot of long bones from this, I don't think I've got 32, I think I've got maybe like 20 which is still a very good amount, that is a good amount of construction experience, I don't remember exactly how much but it's pretty nice but the big thing is Look at these, 51 Raynar seeds, I'm going to price check it, they are ridiculously expensive right now, 62,000 per one, that's because probably raids uh, 3 is coming out and a lot of people want the prey potions, just from the moss giants I've gained 3.2 million almost, and of course... I'm going to include this in the giveaway if I do not get the Bryophyta Essence. So it's going to be something that is going to have quite a bit to bump up the price of the overall price check at the end. And that is the last one for 100 Mossy Keys. And I was actually kind of lucky. I got it before 6,000 kills, which would be on drop rate. All the loot is on the screen right now. Also, it says 85 keys, but some of them just didn't get tracked for some reason. So let's go ahead and put it into the bank to see the nice 100 stack of mossy keys. As I said, I probably will have to go back. I just wanted to make sure I don't get really lucky with the key drops and I have to like go over 118. But I'm going to start with 20 keys at a time. And let's actually gear up and see what I'm going to be using for this boss. So this is the gear I've decided to pick and I am going to go with a full range setup with the blowpipe. The boss has pretty low HP and it also spawns minions that has like 5 HP. So I think a blowpipe is very good to get it down very fast, the minions and the boss itself. And I'm going to be bringing a dragon axe as well of course for the minions. It doesn't really matter if it's a dragon, if it's bronze, that is irrelevant. But one small trick I want to show you guys is that if you have menu entry swapper, you can actually configure your left click and I'm going to do that for use. And then I guess save left click. So now my left click is use. So when the minions spawn, I can just click on this and click on the minions. I don't have to use it like that. So that's very convenient. And I'm bringing 20 keys, as I said before. And I think I might have to adjust that. I don't know how much inventory space I'll have. So let's have a look at the actual boss itself. It is a very, very easy boss. It's a free-to-play boss even. It's like the end game boss for free-to-play, I guess. And as you can see, my weapon is just destroying the boss. And it's looking like I'm not even going to get the minions this time. But uh, sometimes I will, and the blowpipe is really good for those. But uh, let's see what the first loot is going to be. That was like a... 10 second kill or something nature runes and a combat achievement as well by the way this boss drops beginner clues every single time but i am actually this time not going to do them because if i would do all 118 and i would not get the abraya fight essence the entire chunk of all the beginner clues on average would be worth like uh, 500k and it would be like two hours added onto the grind just running back and probably more than that just doing the beginner clues Oh, this time we actually got the minions, so let's have a look at this. I just attack them once every single time, and then I use the axe on them one by one, and uh, I misclick, and there we go. Very, very smooth and easy. Would you look at that? I got nothing, I think, for this drop. It dropped a Marantil seed, but it didn't say anything in the chat. It's 5 GP for that kill. What a beautiful drop. You might have noticed that my kill count is actually at 10 now, even though I've only done 3 kills. I did actually have 7 already when I started this grind, meaning that the end kill count, if I do not get the Bryophyta Essence, is going to be 125 for 118 kills in this video. There it is, the first mossy key drop of the grind, the 1 in 16 chance, as I said, I will hopefully get quite a bit of these, so I don't have to go back for too long to the moss giant in the future. But yeah, very nice to see one early in the grind. Very shortly after that, the first milestone kill count, 10 kill count after this one. And the loot is of course not incredible, 
but uh, at least it is something. I'm definitely going to be making more money off of the actual moss giants than Bryophyta herself, but uh, of course that can change if I do get the Bryophyta essence. But I have to say, I will definitely have to change my inventory. Look at the food, I'm not even using any of the food at all. So I think I'm just going to bring like two anglers or something like that, maybe even zero food. I will have to try out some different things, but I think the blowpipe healing and just praying magic sitting on ranged means I'm going to be taking zero damage during this entire grind. So I think that's what I'm going to be doing. Here it is, the evolved inventory, two ranged pots or divine ranging potions, some prayer potions and two anglers just in case. And this time I'm bringing 30 keys. I did not forget anti-poisons, I am not poisoned at all, that is not true. Your eyes are deceiving you. Nature runes, nice drop. I will not have to go back to the bank. No. What? G <laughs> Grimy Guam Leaf. What an absolute Chad drop right there. That is some giga Chad loot. And on that kill, number 66 overall for the account, but on 59 for this video, we have reached the halfway point to the 118 kills for the drop rate of the Bryophyta Essence. We do not have it yet, but uh, the halfway point is the halfway point. We still have a decent chance of getting it. I want you guys to look at this clip. The minions spawn and when they do, the boss becomes immune. So you have to kill the minions. And I have no idea if this is complete RNG when they spawn or not. I attack the boss like one time, they spawn again. And sometimes I can kill the boss without them even spawning. And I could spend like a long time killing it. None of them spawn. And now I killed all of them with the axe. Attack the boss and one more time three times in a row. How is this a thing? <laughs> like what? It feels like it's just RNG They just randomly spawn on attacks and there's a percentage chance and that time I was just really unlucky or something But if you do know how it works, please let me know in the comments. Oh There it is triple adamant kai shield drop that is one in 118 drop rate the exact drop rate of the bryophyta essence so that could have been the item but you can always say that i mean you can always say it could have been that it could have been this but it wasn't the bryophyta essence this time all right we're down to the last key i have this is including the 100 plus the seven i got from the boss itself which is actually almost exactly okay Never mind, we're not ready just yet, and now I'm lucky, I was about to say I was exactly on drop rate almost for the keys, but now I am slightly above it, so we are going to end at 108, unless of course I get another one on this one, that means I have to go and get 10 more keys after this one. And look at that, that is the last mossy key we need, we have all the 118 overall now we need for the last kills, let's go ahead and finish the grind up. Alright, we have 3 keys left to go. This is the third to last kill, and we get rune swords. Oh man, it is looking like I'm going to be losing the third challenge in a row. My last videos have not been great, but uh, two more keys, we still have a chance. One last key after this one left. Can we get the essence now on the second to last kill? Rune longsword? <laughs> not quite, not quite. It all comes down to this, the last key of the entire grind is going to give us two runite bars. So yet again, we lose the challenge. And overall, KC is 125. And I actually really wanted to get this item because if you go to the collection log, you would just straight up complete the entire log for Bryophyta if you got this essence. It's the only rare drop it has. So it's kind of a bummer that I did not get it on drop rate. Welcome to episode number 10 of the on drop rate series and this is a special one. In the last one we took on Bryophyta and we did lose the challenge of getting the Bryophyta essence. But I have decided that every 10th episode we are going for a pet. And the one I'm going for in this video is going to be assisted by Max Nick right here on his account Berserkers. He is going to be lending me... A very kind gift of a twisted bow and of course I'm not keeping this or anything this is just to speed up the process I'm going to be killing 3,000 giant moles for the pet and uh, I already have 1,000 KC on this boss so we're going to be ending at possibly 4,000 KC or that I get the pet and uh, I'm very excited to actually try out the twisted bow for the first time ever in old school runescape 
just have a look at that beautiful twisted bow and of course the only reason I'm doing this and taking this loan is because I want to be able to post consistent content for you guys to enjoy just having to spend like a, an extra four days doing it with a worse setup is not that great for posting videos so that is really the only reason why it's not because I couldn't grind this out myself if I had infinite time but that is not the case so hope you guys are fine with it one of many giant molds about to be killed in this video and I already had 1004 apparently so we're going to be ending at 4004 kill count and uh, that was a very fast kill with a twisted bow. Now let's talk about the money of this boss. The consistency is crazy. Basically every single kill will be guaranteed 25,000 GP because of the mole skins and the mole class that it drops and they have a pretty good value. So from 3,000 kills, if you would go for this pet, the average amount of money that you get is 75 million. That's a lot of money for killing the giant mole I have to say. On an even kill count right now and I'm actually going to do the one hour test when I do these longer grinds. I want to see how many kills I can get in one hour and I have to bank now anyways. And overall this was uh, 46 kills and let's see how much value that was actually at. And after that we will do the one hour test. The claws and the skins itself are over 1 million already. And that did not take that long. I would say probably 40 minutes. So I'm going to assume the kills per hour is going to lay around 60. But let's actually do a one hour test and see what it's actually at. Well, I have to say I am pleasantly surprised. Of course, this was an hour with a very high focus. So this is the absolute maximum amount of kills I can get in one hour, which is not going to be consistent throughout the whole grind. But I did get 80 kills this hour. That is incredibly good, meaning the entire 3000 kill grind could take only 37 and a half hours but of course that is very unrealistic to keep the focus up for that long so I'm going to say the grind in its entirety is probably going to be 45 hours around that time I would say <gasps> no way no way we actually got it the baby mole 1495 overall KC for the account and 488 I think no that can't be right it has to be 490 something because I started on 1004 wow I will put all the loot on the screen right now that we got from this grind it says 488 but I guess it uh, didn't calculate everything but uh, wow I did not expect that honestly I thought I would not get a pet on the entire grind my collection log should be actually completed now on the giant mole, so another green one, let's have a look at that, yes it's green. Of course the claws and the skins are capped at 250, but it is now time to ensure the baby mole. I would never want to lose this, 500,000 coins is nothing, definitely worth it, let's drop it on the ground and let's talk to it. Oh, it gets stuck, alright. Let's talk to the baby mole. Hey mold, how's life on the underground? Well, the last time I was above ground, I was, uh, well, okay. A bunch of chat, I can't read it when uh, I'm recording, it just is uh, something I can't do for some reason. But yeah, I love this pet so much. There's actually a skin to this as well, I think, where you can make it into the, uh, the pink version of it. I honestly have no idea how to get that though, but uh, yeah, I like the normal one more anyways. Might as well actually show it off, it's really easy, you just use a mole claw on the baby mole, and there you go. It is now the pink version of it, the baby, babier version, I guess. The baby mole rat, and if you use a skin on it, it goes back to its normal form. But it's time to give back the Twisted Bow Max Nick let me borrow an amazing weapon, and I can't wait to actually borrow this, maybe in the future as well. For maybe doing some God Wars dungeon, that would be incredible. But uh, the link to his channel will be at the top of the description. He's actually the person I played Group Iron Man with, so we trust each other, it's all good. And uh, thank you again for letting me borrow the Twisted Bow. So what are we going to do now? I've completed the grind already and it was supposed to be a full video length grind, but we already got it before 500kc and you can see all my pets at the top there by the way. But judging by the gear I am equipped with right now, you might know what I'm going to be doing. I completed one log with a giant mole and I b bought the Crafts Bow and I thought to myself, can complete another log maybe. Chaos Fanatic. Uh, I do have three Odiums in 200kc. But I have no malediction, so I might as well go for that, and that means 1 in 256 kill counts is the drop rate of the malediction shard, and that's how many kills I'm going to do, or get the malediction shard and be done with the collection log right away. 
Now, if you did not know, I have a very interesting story with the Chaos Fanatic. Kind of recently, I did a Odium Shard grind on my group Iron Man, and I was telling myself, I'm just going to do it until I get the Odium Shard, because that will complete an Odium Ward for my team, which is a very good range shield. I ended up doing 1,400 kills on an item that has a drop rate 1 in 256 before I got the first Odium Shard, and I will actually put the entire collection log I have on my group Iron Man on the screen right now, and this is after I actually got all the three Odium Shards, so I did 1400 for the first one, and then like 400 more for the second two, but uh, Jesus, that was a big grind, and hopefully I will get lucky this time on the Malediction Shard, because I got a lot of Malediction Shards at least from that grind. Ooh, Ancient Staff, that is the first rare item. It's 1 in 128, so basically the same drop rates as getting any of the shards, but not as rare as a specific one. I actually completely forgot about this, and I do want to do some clue scrolls if I can on this grind. I'm buying the Ring of Wealth scroll for only 58k, adding it to the ring and imbuing it. Now, all my chances of getting clue scrolls in the wilderness is doubled. You can see on the screen right now, normally, the Chaos Fanatic has a 1 in 128 chance of dropping a hard clue, but now, after this, a 1 in 64, so we should see some of them. And we get those. <laughs> right after almost I come back... She left half. Now, with the Ring of Wealth, that's not absurdly rare. It's rare, it's one in like 800 or something, but uh, not as bad as if I didn't have the Ring of Wealth, which of course I now have equipped. We have our first peak here, look at that. Uh, 68 kills in, that's not that bad. If I get one peak here every 68 kills, that's fine with me. Just going to TP, he didn't even join me. I'll actually TP back again maybe, and I might get to the right area, and then I'll just log out, because he didn't follow me anyways. All right, let's see. And look out the right area as well. Oh my god, wait. He TP'd at the same time as well? That could have been bad. We could have landed at the same area. Nice, I logged out. Ancient staff number two. Oh, PK number two. Let's run. He already has a key as well. Can we get whole world hop? Yes, we did. Okay, so we're good, I think. Not died yet. We have not died yet. Let's just jump to another world as well, just in case. Oh, nice! Hard clue scroll number one on 95 kill counts. I was actually kind of lucky here because I did not have the Ring of Wealth imbued before, but I guess half of the time I was. It's kind of on drop rate between that 128 and 64. I think I'm just going to go ahead and open them right away this time. I will add everything up in the end anyways, so let's see what the first hard clue is going to give us. It is uh, the mediocre clue scroll, I guess. 78, 78, 2. Interesting numbers down there. 217 overall hard clues as well, so we're getting to uh, decent numbers. Are you kidding me, man? Look at the chat. I thought I was recording everything, but I was not. I recorded like a whole 30 second clip getting this item, and I wasn't recording. Thank you so much, game. I love to see it. But now I can actually say 301 KC. We completed it. I'm so disappointed I did not actually get that on video, but uh, it looks great on the ground, I can show it. Imagine that it's uh, right here, dropped by the boss. It looks like that, beautiful, worth 1 million GP. Wait, why does it say 400k here and 1 million when it's on the ground? Is it actually like that inaccurate? I guess it is. Let's uh, go and sell it, I guess, and see how it actually is worth. And also we have the collection log, we completed it. Look at that, another green one. We greened two collection log in just one video. Oh my god, that's very interesting. 1.1 million actively traded price. Let's see if it actually sells for that. I'm gonna do like this. And let's see if it actually sells for this. And it does. It insta sold. So I am going to assume the reason why is because Raids 3 is coming out pretty soon and they say are going to be releasing a magic weapon, a staff I think, that has like insane power. On the same level as like a twisted bow or something, but for magic. And I'm assuming that people are buying the Malediction Ward now to get it before it goes up in price too much. But what can I say? A very successful video. I'm surprised I got this lucky on both the pet and the malediction shard. Let's have a look at the collection log quickly again. Pet, three odium shards and the malediction shard in 301 KC. is ridiculously lucky and also we ended on 1495 KC for the mole. And here is the pet of course. Looking cute as ever. 
But yeah, we bo won both the challenges in this video. What is going on guys and welcome to another on drop rate episode. In the last one we went for the giant mole pets and we did get it on only 500 kills roughly in. And after that we went for the chaos fanatic to get the malediction shard which we also got below the drop rate in 101 kills. This one we're going for a crazy rare item. The Goblin Champion Scroll. That's why I'm right here. It's 1 in 5,000. But it's going to be a fairly short grind. I'm going to be using Cannon and a full Armadil setup. Which is of course extremely overkill. But it's going to be very interesting. We're going to be doing a lot of Clue Scrolls, Beginners, Easy. And maybe we can get something valuable from that. Now I have to admit, I am not the most experienced Goblin Killer in Old School RuneScape. But I think putting my Cannon here is going to be fine. How did that not get one shot? How tanky are these goblins? Anyways, let's see the first loot. Hammer, bronze bolts. My goodness, this is going to make me so much money. Okay, I have to mark these. I just got a beginner clue and I'm going to be marking them like this. This is where most of my money... Oh my god, I got two on the same one. I wasted one. Maybe I can complete it before it even despawns. But uh, regardless, this beginner's... And uh, the easy clue scrolls that I'm going to be getting from this is going to be the majority of the loot. Okay, I'm definitely not making it back to that other beginner clue, so we're going to be losing some of them. This one is a three-step beginner clue, and I had to buy some items, a chef's hat and a red cape to complete it, as well as I have to buy a damn trout that I have to cook. Beginner clues, man, they can be difficult sometimes, and all I'm going to get is like a steel longsword or something. I felt a bit wild, I went ahead and bought 100 raw trouts, I mean it's 10,000 GP so it's quite a lot, but I feel like it's going to be worth it for this video. Guaranteed casket, and I'm not going to be opening these right now, I want to put all of them in the bank and we're going to be opening them at the end. This includes the easy clues as well, so I will have a big stack of probably both of them at the end. Alright, so that was 10 cannonballs and I already have an easy clue scroll, so we're going to of course do that as well. And I mark them now so I can see them very easily, but no duplicates this time, so not wasting anything. I do have to say, I do feel it's important to actually show you guys I have not killed the Goblin Champion yet. The only one I've killed is the Hill Giant one, or the Giant one, which means I can get the scrolls still, so it's not like I've done this and I just don't know it. I didn't make sure I checked it, and it is all good. You can see in the chat we got an easy and a beginner in the same tick, but another thing I want to talk about is we just hit almost 1000 kills on that, 994, and the average kill is 143 GP per average. But I'm also building all the stash units for the easy and the beginner clues meanwhile I'm doing them. You can see I got 18 beginners and 11 easy clue scrolls, so I'm expecting to do probably all the stash units during this grind, maybe missing a few of them. Because I get these tips kind of frequently where I actually need gear. So building them all is going to be a nice convenience. Oh my god, even killing goblins have all these loot beams that give me so much dopamine. I mean, it's going to be very fun to open all of the clue scrolls at the end of this. And I think I have at this point probably built most of the stash units. I actually just ran around. I bought like every item for every clue step. I will try to juggle these, I think. But uh, yeah, very nice to have all the stash units done. Realized I did not need the ranged bonus from the armadil gear and running around with armadil gear doing all the clue scrolls is not the most efficient. We also just hit 2000 goblin kills and it's not looking good so far. No champion scroll and uh, we're not even at the halfway point though so we should be fine. I still have a decent chance of getting the champion scroll. It's not really much to show, I know that, but uh, another milestone, 3000 kills in just a second here, and still no champion scroll. I mean, the longest time I've ever been here without going away and doing a clue scroll was like 3 minutes. So really for me, everything is just putting up the cannon, do clue scrolls, repeat. Like, it's actually ridiculous, I think the average time for me getting any clue scroll drop at all, beginner or easy, was like 35 seconds. And we're now 4000 kills in, and I've decided to just get both an easy and a beginner before I actually go and do them, because it was getting kind of ridiculous. I literally got like 20 kills in a few seconds as I said, got a clue scroll, had to repack everything, come back, and uh, put up my cannon for 20 more seconds, and then I had to run again. 
I have done so many clue scrolls in this video and I'm now at 4998 kills. Let's get the counter to 5000. One more goblin after this one. Probably not going to get another clue scroll. And we've got 65 beginners and 41 easy clue scrolls on this grind. 5,000 goblins killed and it's worth less than 700k but uh, pretty much all of the money is going to come from these clue scrolls. But let's see how many we actually have in the bank because I did get some that I could not pick up and I lost them. Now the tracker actually showed the 65 beginners and 41 easy clue scrolls but I ended up getting 67 beginners and 40 easy ones in my bank. I think it did not track some of the beginner ones and I did miss one easy clue scroll so we actually got more beginners than it showed but one less easy but I'm completely fine with that. But first, let's actually have a look at the collection log. This is my beginner one. I only have the black pickaxe and the bare feet. And I've opened 15 ones overall. So hopefully we will get a lot of these collection logs unlocked. And on the easy one, I've actually opened 166 of them. So quite a lot more. But we've got really none of the really rare items. Maybe the wooden shield G is a bit more rare. I don't think it actually is that rare. So that is not really going to count in. We have got the ham joint and some other interesting stuff. You can see everything right here. But let's get on with opening all of the clue scrolls. I'm going to be giving away everything from these clue scrolls and the majority of the money is of course here. The 700k that I got from the goblins is not really too much to talk about. But I'm going to begin with the beginners. It's very fitting for the name. And let's go ahead and open these kind of fast. So the first one, leather chaps. Yeah, everything is uh, kind of bad from these. But as soon as I see that pop-up of the collection log it's going to be nice to see anything so far it's not looking good whatsoever give me one sec i'm actually going to enable so i track all of these on rune light because i had them turned off for beginners i'm just going to go through them like all the way until the end i am not going to bank in between because all i really care about is those collection log items there we go the monk robes tea I'm going to be dropping just some random stuff to keep that in my inventory and I'll keep going. Cabbages, nothing too interesting. I mean, beginners truly are terrible. And there is another item. Rune Scimitar Ornament Kit, Sarah Domin. Let's pick that up as well from the ground. Beautiful. Let's keep going. And two collection log items unlocked so far. Not that bad. But uh, completing the beginner collection log is probably kind of easy, actually. Because they're so easy to get. Another one, Amulet of Defense T. Let's pick that up as well. None of them are really that valuable. I know that there is one item or two items that is kind of valuable. That is the mole feet or mole slippers maybe they're called. And the um, parrot that you can have. The shoulder parrot is pretty valuable. Both of them around at least 500k to 1 million I think. If I get any of them I can show you guys. But uh, it is not looking good so far. It's just a bunch of random stuff. Sandwich lady hat. Nice. Another unique. 3.4k. Yeah. These are not valued at the... It's not even worth anything. So I, can, I can't pick it up. It's not at the top of the thing. Unfortunately. I guess I have to bank. Give me one sec. Everything's cleaned up. Let's go ahead and open the last 14 beginners. Can we get the shoulder parrot or the mole slippers, the more valuable items? So far, I can see on the tracker, by the way, everything so far is worth 166k. So, uh, yes, beginners are terrible, but the last one is nothing as well. Just look in the chat. 155 coins, 1k, 1k, 1k. Yeah, uh, not too interesting. Let's just go to the more interesting part of the easy clue scrolls. But of course we did unlock some unique, so we have 6 out of 16 in 82 beginners. That is pretty decent I would say, but let's go ahead and open the easy caskets. These ones have actually some really high ticket items worth millions of GP. So let's see if we can get lucky or not. First one is not that good. These are not... I mean purple sweets are good. They are always decent value. You can see 30k for just 4 of them. So that is very nice. A unique black plate legs. T, not too valuable, I think. 34,000 GP. And a lot of black items. Okay, Samurai page 1. That used to be worth a lot of money back in the days. But now it is not a very good item. When people have optimized the game quite a bit. And uh, it is not good so far. 3.7k for a Bandos page, I think that was. Oh, Master Clue Scroll. I'm actually going to do this, but uh, the chance of getting... 
Master Cruise comes from this is very small, so I'm just going to keep going all the time. So in page four, that's a nice pop-up because that's a shared one. It's uh, between all of the different cruise scrolls, so getting the unique pages is always very nice. 292k for a black plate body G. I guess that's free-to-play fashion. A lot of people might like that. And ooh, look at that. It's even a big beam. I guess I'm going to bank. Oh, I accidentally opened a few without recording, but uh, there you go. Sarah Domin, Robe Legs, and an Amulet of Magic T. I already have the Amulet of Magic, but not the Robe Legs. But let's keep going. 12 more to go. 100k, mostly probably in the Purple Suites. Two pages in one of them. Alright, the last 10. I really want a Team Cape. That would be really nice. They are worth a lot of money. Of course, I will give away everything from these cruise scrolls, and it would be fun to give away something a bit more valuable. Black kite shield tea. All these items, the black shields and stuff like that, seem to be worth a lot. Maybe it's actually the lumberyard teleports this time, though, so not really. 25k for black skirt G. 1k. 2.4k. It's not looking good for the last ones here. 365 GP. Oh, there we go. Cape of... Oh, I think that's the most valuable one. Almost 10 million. We love to see it. Oh my god, and almost the last one. Can we get a back-to-back -back team cape? Come on, please let me. Please. No, we do not. Oh my god, look at that. That is beautiful. Do I even have space to put everything in? I do not, but... Uh, Wow, Cape of Skulls. I think that has... To, I'm going to put the drop rates of all the team capes on the screen right now. I haven't checked myself yet, but you can see the drop rates. This is rare, man. This is really rare. It gives a skull when you equip it as well. Let's do that. Wow, that, that was all worth it. Everything was worth it. Very nice. We could complete the Master Clue Scroll here at Follow the Bard. So let's go ahead and open it and see how much money we're going to add to the end giveaway. All of it is, of course, going right to it, so let's open it, and we get how much? 577k, that is not bad, actually. Welcome to another on drop rate episode. A couple of videos ago, we took on the free-to-play boss Bryophyta, or however you pronounce that. I've heard so many different pronunciations, but Bryophyta is the way I'm going to say it. But this time, we're actually going to take on the second free-to-play boss, which is called Obor, the Hilla Giant boss, and the item we're going to go for is the Hilla Giant Club, which is the same drop rate as the Bryophyte Essence, one in 118. So let's get into the video. This spot right here is where I'm going to be killing all of the Hill Giants, and you might actually see that I have already 47 keys. I actually did this meanwhile on vacation, I just casually grinded some of these. And by the way, on the map right here, this is where the location is, so if you're interested in doing this yourself, I would say this is the best spot of killing them. And by the way, the keys, as I said, the loot from all of those is on the screen right now. I did actually screen cap it before leaving the place I was at vacation, so all the loot is going to be included for everything, there is nothing lost here, but uh, we're starting on the 47 keys for this video. Very nice, the first curved bone of the grind, it's 1 in 5000 drop rate, and I also have a bunch of long bones, which of course is a lot more common, 1 in 400, but every curved bone is 6.7k construction, and the long bones 4000. I am keeping track of how many cannonballs I'm using by the way, but I bought a bunch of them. I know that I'm going to be not using all of these on the grind, but I need them anyways for future videos, so it's all good to buy as many as I possibly can. No way. Rune Spear. Look on the screen right now, that's how rare it is. One in over 80,000 drop rates. I do not have the Ring of Wealth, so that is ridiculously rare. I definitely do not say no to that. A second curved bone, making so many construction gains. I can't wait to hand all of this in in the future. Oh, I have never seen this before. You have a funny feeling that you would have received a champion scroll. White says that is because this is like the only champion scroll I have ever done on this account, so I already had it. But we're like... 7,500, 8,000 kills in, so actually a bit above the drop rate there on that one. We are getting really close to done with this, giant key number 100, so only 18 more to go. It's a very relaxing grind, mostly just AFK it with cannon doing other things, so it's nice. Oh my god, a second champion scroll, I mean technically that's kind of on drop rate, because we're at 10,000 roughly kills now and it's 1 in 5k. 11,762 hill giants later. We got the last key, and if you're wondering how many cannonballs I actually used for this grind, it was 29,405, 
which is worth 5.5 million, so we're probably not going to make a lot of money this video. This right here is some nostalgia. I'm going to be picking up the brass key. It's been many years since I had this on my account. The reason why is because I'm going to be doing the beginner clues from this boss. I did not do that on Bryo Fighter, but I do feel like I want to get some collection logs in from the beginner clues. So we're going to do it this time. And we can actually use this shortcut now, so it's going to be a bit faster to run to the boss between every single clue. So if you were not as geared as I am, you would usually actually mage this and you would root it and you would run away prey ranged and basically take no damage. But I can just pray melee, stand in its face and I... <laughs> there you go. That's how easy I can kill it. So the kills are going to be very easy. We got two medium combat tasks for that and I have to... Uh make it possible for me to see these items but uh, yeah beginner clue all the time from this boss and we're going to be doing all of them so we're going to open 118 caskets at the end if i do not get the hill giant club well compared to doing bryo fighter and just doing all the keys without doing any of the beginner clues this is quite a lot slower but it's going to be very fun to actually check at the end of this my collection log i might as well show it now because i have so few beginner items unlocked i've done 82 of them and i have 6 out of 16 and I wonder how far I can get to completing this entire log from 118 beginners. I'm definitely not going to finish it, but uh, we might get pretty close. Oh wow, there it is. That's the first giant key. I was actually wondering when I was going to get it. It's 1 in 16, and if you look at the beginner clues I have in my bag, we're actually on kill count number 50 now, so that took a very long time, but I don't need the keys, I already had 118. And that casket is the halfway point, 59 caskets and I have 61 keys, which means I have got 2 keys from the boss itself, let's scroll up. That is worth 1 million GP for 59 kills, and we got 2 keys, which of course I'm not going to use because we're not going above the drop rate, and I did get 118 keys to start off with. And um, yeah, it looks like we're going to end at about 2 million worth if we do not get the Hill Giant Club. But if we do get it, that is another like 600k I think it's worth or something like that. So I guess we'll see. Oh, we actually got it. I didn't think we would actually get it. We're, uh, how many? 62 kills in. Hill Giant Club, 614k. Guess it's pretty good in free to play, otherwise it wouldn't have that value. Oh my god, look at that. That's a nice looking weapon. I think it has the same stats as a rune scimitar, but it's crush instead of slash. So that's pretty interesting, but yeah, nice, we won the challenge. Of course, that means we also completed the collection log for Obor. Let's go all the way down. That is now green. Only one item completed at 67 overall kill accounts. We did not get the Bryo Fighter one completed, so I will have to go back for that in the future. But we did win this one, which is really nice. And we ended at 62 beginner clue scrolls. I'm going to open them all and only show the uniques that I get. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, there we go. That's the first unique frog slippers collection log item unlocked. Very nice. 53k. I mean, the most expensive items here, I think, is like 500k. So, can't really expect to get a lot of money from this. And from the inventory, you can probably see that uh, these are not worth a lot. That's the second amulet of defense T. Already had it actually on the collection log, so nothing too special there. Ooh, I thought it was a unique. I guess I already had it. Bare feet, 36k. We are coming down to the last 10. Ooh, there we go. I already had that? I Okay, I guess that's the only one I already had because I'm pretty sure I don't have most of them. Okay, that's the only one I had. And I now have three amulets of defense T as well and two bare feet. I pretty much only got the items I already had. But uh, I'm going to bank everything and do the last 10 quickly. So in 52 beginner clue scrolls so far, I've only got one collection log item, so I guess I kind of overestimated how many you actually get from beginners, I only really got cabbages and steel items, but uh, I'm going to spam click all of these last 10 and see if we get a collection log pop up, so let's go ahead and do that right now. All of them up, and no collection log item, and nothing valuable at all. So the beginner caskets were probably not worth a lot, judging by the last one being worth 13 GP. 
I think because I spam clicked in the end, the Runelite plugin kind of bugged out, so it only counted 55 of the beginners, but uh, won't really make much of a difference in terms of its value, so I think around 240k maybe at maximum, the loot is of course on the screen for all the beginners, but um, you can make more of that, of course, more than that, of course, if you do get the uh, more unique items that are worth like 500k, but beginners in general is not very good money. You might not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. It is time for another episode of On Drop Rates, and in this one, you might be seeing from my gear, I am going to be doing a wilderness boss. And if you've done quite a lot of wilderness bosses, you might already know which one it is. I'm going to be doing Venonatus. This is a big money maker. Every single kill is worth around 100,000 GP. And the item we're going to be hunting for is the Treasonous Ring. So at a maximum, we will be doing 512 kills. Now, of course, this is in the wilderness. So I'm only bringing three valuable items, the Anguish, the Pegation, and the Croft's Bow. And I'm using a Bandos Coif, which I protect from Protect Item as well so i'm only risking 288,000, which is not that bad and dying at venonatus is uh, kind of hard to do actually it's kind of easy to get away and uh, the losing bag of course i will lose everything in if i do die but uh, everything i will count in if i do lose the challenge it doesn't matter if i die or whatever i will go by the uh, loot tracker on rune light so any lost loot will still be counted towards the giveaway now I have done Venonatus before and I have a current kill count of 107, so if I do not get the Treasoner's Ring and I do lose the challenge, my end KC will be 619. When it comes to Venonatus, the only scary part is really the PKers. I'm never really going to die to Venonatus, as you can see, I'm just safe spotting the boss. And actually safe spotting Venonatus with a Crafts Bow is one of the easiest things ever. I just stand on this tile and attack at a certain time when the front legs of Venonatus is on the mark tiles I'm showing you right now. First kill, elite clue scroll already. I guess the ring of wealth imbued is helping out quite a bit. The, the drop rate of the elite clue scroll will be on the screen right now. I actually don't know what it is, but you do. So anyways, when the front legs is on this mark right here, it will actually start attacking me. And as soon as it does that, I attack her and I can AFK from that point. You know, normally when I get these wilderness steps, I'm really annoyed because I'm like, ah, oh, man, I have to re-gear and everything. I have to unequip my gear so I don't risk anything. I've already geared up for being in the wilderness, so this is going to be very convenient. I'm going to be honest, I've never done this before. Score a goal in Skull Ball. I had never even heard of this. And I feel like I'm doing it correctly, but apparently I am not doing it correctly, so... Guess I'll be stuck here for a while. Oh, okay. Wow, that's a long step. Six minute long step for that. Oh, hopefully I don't get a lot of those. Because I'm only going to be getting probably a maximum of around 10 elite clue scrolls, I'm just going to open them all as I go. So let's see what the first elite clue of the grind is going to be. And it is... Oh my god, that's so many items. Stacked elite clue scroll, 200k, and a unique item, and a master clue scroll. Not really feeling like going on too many master clue detours, so I'm just going to save that, and I'm going to actually do that at the end of the video. Man, we're going to be making some money this video, I can already feel it. 258,000 GP from that one drop, that is beautiful. And there he is, the first PKer of this grind. And I got the teleport, it's actually really easy to get away. Even I got teleblocked there, you can see in the chat, but I still got the teleport off before it. So it's kind of easy to get away if I'm fast. The money from this is ridiculous. Look at this, 10 kill trip and I got 832,000 in loot. And of course, mostly from the red spider eggs, 500k of it, but uh, it's not that rare of a drop, so it's pretty good. Okay, I guess we're banking. 488k, I've actually been here for a bit now, like 12 kills or something like that, maybe 10 kills. We have another elite clue as well, so that is very nice. What is going on here? I've never seen this. I wonder what they're doing. They're all in full obsidian with Obimal. Is this like a PKing team or something? Very interesting. Second elite clue scroll is going to be some... Oh my god! I have never seen that many purple sweets. 53, 500k. That has to be like two or three rolls of purple sweets. I wonder how rare that is. That has to be incredibly rare. 
I actually had to look this up. Look on the screen right now. There's actually two different amounts of purple sweets you can roll, and you can see the chances of getting them. I actually got two of the ones that are 9 to 23, and then I got one of the ones 8 to 12 to be able to get 53 purple sweets in one roll. I'm not sure how rare that is, but it's probably very rare. Oh my god, oh, I thought I got a dragon pickaxe, but oh my god, 1.2 million. That means one snapdragon is 12,000. Dude, raids 3 is really making those expensive. Yo, what? That's back to back. I teleported and I got back 4.9 million GP. Holy, let's, Jesus, let's have a look at that. Dragon pickaxe, that was very early on the grind as well, beautiful. I'm banking that for sure. Okay, dragon two-hander. I'm getting a lot of interesting drops, that's for sure. I already got that on the collection log, so not that great, 132k. It is that time, I am about to get absolutely destroyed by these PKers. I think I can pretty much give up. I got teleblocked, I didn't get the teleport. These guys were very, very quick. And uh, it is not looking good here. I'm pretty- yeah, I'm dead. There's no way. Well, I only lost like 500k, I think. Not all too bad. I think I lost an elite clue scroll as well, so... That is unfortunate. Couple of kills later, recouped that elite clue scroll. For a decent elite clue scroll, 211k. I feel like I've been decently lucky with them value-wise. What? Is that real? Two dragon pickaxes and I've done, what, 90 kills or something like that? Oh my god, we are making bank. Hopefully I get the ring as well so I get to keep this. By the way, I am actually going to be tracking the kills on rune light. You can see I have 90 kill counts, but in the chat I think it says I've done 93 kills or 94, I don't exactly remember. But it's because sometimes I hit the boss and I had to telly out and then he died later and he counted as a kill count. Let's see what we get from elite clue number 4 of the grind. We get a very average elite clue, 277k. Actually all of them have been pretty valuable so far. Yo? What? Treasonous ring, 142 kills in. I am lucky this video, that's for sure, we completed the challenge, and I have to say, I'm pretty happy to actually get this, because uh, both, we got the dragon pickaxes, so I made a lot of money in this video, 20 million, but on top of that, I don't like wilderness bosses, so being done with this challenge a bit earlier is very nice, I will do all the wilderness bosses in the future, but I have to say I'm pretty happy with this one. I sold everything instantly and I lost some money, also I did get PK'd for like 1 million I think that one time, it was actually more than I anticipated, but 17 million, not bad for that grind, but uh, I will do the Master Clue Scroll as well that we got earlier and let's see what we get from that one. Alright, let's have a look at the Master Clue Scroll, I think this is clue number 11, so can we get the pet spooned to us, it would be very nice at this point, let's go ahead and open it. And that is a lot of items, it's 500k. That would be a lot to the giveaway, but this time I won, so there is no giveaway. I actually get to keep the money this time. What is going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Undrop Rate. In this one, we are venturing back to the God Wars dungeon for the second time, first time doing the Samurai God Wars boss, Krill Thusaroth. But in this one, we are doing General Grador. We're doing Bandos, and we're going to be doing 381 kills in hunts for the Bandos boots. I picked the least expensive item because then it has a big chance to be a nice giveaway. If I get all the other items except the boots, that is a lot of money. So, Bandos boots, 1 in 381, and my collection log looks like this. So actually, any of the uniques would cover a slot, which is really nice. I would like to get this log completed sometime in the future, so getting anything would be really nice. Now, when it comes to my inventory, I am using this right here. I might change this up, of course, because as I said, I've never actually done this much before. I think I've done five kills this way just to try it out, and that was quite some time ago. So, it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. And I'm using the blowpipe for the minions and some self-healing. The master wand with an Arum's top for a blood barrage to be able to heal off the minions. And I should be able to stay there for a long time. 
Now the really nice thing about the Doing Bandos is that the kill count to get into the room is a really really simple. You just go all the way north here in the dungeon. I can show on the map right here. And the Bandos stronghold is right here on the left side. And you pretty much just use a blowpipe. You tag all the goblins. They have nearly no HP at all. And you can run around this area right here and just do that until you have 40 kill counts. Probably only takes a couple of minutes every time. Alright, so let's do a very quick brief on this. I am a massive noob to doing this. I've never really done this much before. As I said, I think I have overall 6 or 10 kills, maybe at maximum, doing this. So, it is going to be quite a trial and error experience for me. But I do have all the tiles marked and all the information I need. And what you essentially want to do is, you can see they are numbered. So you start at number 1, hit the boss one time, run to number 2, hit the boss one time, 3, and so on. And then when you actually reach tile number 6, which I'm going to get to in just a second here, you actually red click on the cannon base, avoiding Bandos and running through him. You can see right there, I did not take a hit. And then you repeat the cycle all the way until he is dead. If you do actually take damage, he can slap you a massive amount, like 50 damage, and he's going to do that quite a lot. Uh, I mean, if you fail it, you're going to get hit almost every time. He hits zeros very, very rarely on the gear I'm using, so... Doing this correctly is essential. But here we go. Can I get the last hit in? That should be it. And 1 in 381 chance of actually getting the item. Are we going to get spooned? No, we do not. But anyways, now after I kill the boss, I actually want to barrage the minions and ideally prayer flick them as well so I get max HP. And then after that, I can finish them off with the blowpipe and then start off the cycle again by standing on the start tile that you can see on the far right now on my screen. Oh my god, I am so dead. There's no way. Uh... Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was very early, like two kills in or something, I'm already dead. Yeah, this is going to be a learning experience, I got absolutely combo there. Oh my god, how did I get hit that time? I feel like I actually didn't fail there, but I probably did. Of course I did. I mean, I'm just not really experienced with doing this. But uh, as I said, it's going to be quite a learning experience. But I think I'm kind of learning how to do it. Yo! Bandos chest plate. That is why I picked the boots. That is a potential massive giveaway. That is so early. Oh my god. And I got an elite clue scroll in the same drop as well. That has to be so extremely rare. The chestplate is 30 million. I don't remember it being this expensive because... Uh, maybe it's because of the Torva. I guess it is because you actually needed to make the Torva. Look at that. That is uh, the first item unlocked on the collection log. It's going to be nice to see. Where is it even? General Growler. There it is. 85 kill counts overall. So that's like 30 kills in. 29 I think exactly or something like that. And the first item has been obtained but we have not won the challenge just yet. And as per usual, we're doing the Elite Clue Scroll as well that I got on that. And let's see what we're going to get from this one. And we get a Master Clue Scroll. Beautiful. 270k as well. That is not bad value. All of this is of course going to the giveaway if I do lose the challenge. But let's also do the Master. Potentially a lot of money here. Let's have a look at the Master Casket. I think Master number 12 is 399k. Man, quite a good value, I think. Pretty good from the Onyx Bolts. Oh, okay. I can't complain. That's actually a bit more rare than a Bandos piece, the Rune Sword. It's like kind of a meme from this boss, I guess. But I can't complain. I've got a Bandos chestplate so far, so yeah, I'm fine with that. Oh, Bandos Hilt! 1 in 508! Man, 16 million. That has gone up in price a lot. I think that's because of Raids 3. Oh my god, I actually got the Bandos Hilt and the BCP in what? Like 60 kills? That is ridiculous. You know, after that clip, I kind of feel like I have to show you guys how extremely lucky I've been in general in God Wars Dungeon on this account. Commander Siliana, everything except the pet in 399kc with two Armadil crossbows. Let's go down, General Grado, this is now my log in 113 kills. We have Kriara, which is just beyond crazy, completed at 338kc, which actually I completed at, I think, 170 kills or something like that. And then we have Krill, I have everything except Staff of the Dead and the pet in 156. Yes, I've been lucky at this area. I'm going to be honest, I've died probably like 5 times since I started this grind, and I've done like, what, 65 kills? 
Yeah, it's pretty bad. I mean, it is a hard tactic to learn, but I feel like I'm starting to actually get a hang of it, and it's fine every time I die, I get supply drops, and I can stay here longer, and then die and get another supply drop, so it's all good. Oh, very nice. A second elite clue scroll. They're actually pretty rare, one in 250, so getting two of them pretty early is very lucky, actually. One in five chance to get a master right here. Let's see what we get from the elite clue scroll. And we do get a master. Very nice. So let's try and do that as well. I believe this is the first master clue scroll I have not been able to complete in the series so far. I am not getting like six herb law levels, unfortunately. I would like to give you guys a bit of an update on how it's actually going. That is kill number 129. And actually the last time I died was kill number 65, I think. So we have done three full trips now and I have not died on any of them. So it's safe to say I got this down now, should be fine. I'm probably going to die once or twice, maybe even more than that in the remaining like 200 plus kills. But at least I am starting to learn how it's supposed to be done. And unless I go really slow on the brain, I should be fine. I do want to direct your attention to my kill count, 128, and every single kill is like 4 because you kill Bandos of course, and then all the 3 minions. Sometimes I do not actually kill the mage minion, so it only counts as 3, but this means I've done around 30 kills in one single trip. That is really good for me, I know with the like max everything, you can do like 50 kills, but yeah, 30 for my experience and my gear is pretty good. Oh my god, another collection log item, Bandos Tassets, 22.6 million. Am I actually going to get like all the uniques? If I actually get the Bandos boots now, I've completed the log, which is just, I mean, except the pet, but that is nuts. Look at that. That's so much money. Oh my god, this is so nice. You have got to be kidding me. 248 kill counts on Rune Light Tracker, and we do win the challenge. Bandos boots... And as I said, we completed the log except for the pet. Wow, in 305 overall kill count for the entire account. I have every single unique that I would need. If I was an Iron Man, I would have every single item you could want from this boss. That is ridiculous. What is up guys and welcome to another on drop rate episode in the last one we did some bandos we almost completed the entire log in just 250 kills except for the pet of course but we got every single unique otherwise than that so that was pretty lucky but in this one I did say we we're going to be doing a slayer boss to begin with at least and see how it goes and the first boss we're going to be doing for this video is thermonuclear smoke devil and the item we're going for is the occult necklace and the reason why i'm saying the first boss is because this is a one in 350 drop rate so if with the bracelets of slaughter which i have a lot of in my bank i can do this in two tasks and i might get really lucky and get it right away two tasks and complete it super fast or i might get really unlucky and it takes a long time between the tasks i guess we will have to see now when it comes to gear, this is my setup. I'm actually using a Blood Amulet of Fury because this extends my trips by a lot from my experience. So it's very nice, even though it is kind of expensive, it's worth it in my opinion. And for special attack weapon, I'm using a Crystal Halberd. I was actually going to try Dragon Claws, but I checked the Grand Exchange. They are 90 million, so I'm just not going to do that right now. And I'll be happy with a Crystal Halberd anyways, but uh, let's get into it. Now when it comes to drops for this boss, my luck overall on this has been very strange. I've got 1442 kills and I've got two occult necklaces which is very unlucky by this KC. But I've got seven smoke battle staffs which is very very lucky and they're worth a lot more. So let's see if that continues and I do not get any occult necklace and I might get some smoke battle staves, then I have a giveaway to do. So let me go ahead and explain how I'm going to be doing this. So I start off with a Crystal Halberd spec, basically doing 100 damage in one hit, very nice. And between every single hit, I walk under the boss, because that boss attacks twice as fast as I do, and if you walk under it, you can basically mitigate one hit. You see, I'm taking one hit between every single hit that I do, but if you would just tank it, you would take two hits between every one that you do. And you can actually not protect against this boss, so you just have to tank the damage. And when the boss is about to die, I swap to the Bracelet of Slaughter to get the effect. By the way, if you do not know what the Bracelet of Slaughter does, it has a chance, like a 25% chance, to not consume one of the kills for your task. So let's say I had 150 kills left on the task, I equip the bracelet, it has a chance to stay at 150 even though I kill the boss. And you can see here I think I will get hit twice by the boss in just a second, or maybe it already happened. 
but uh, if you stay out too long you will get hit twice by it instead of once. Now there is an alternative method that I see a lot of high tier PVMers do and they only bring prey potions, no food at all, but this is a bit too intense for me. It's basically just to do the same method I'm doing but basically only heal through redemption because it hits so fast. I'm just going to tank damage now to show you guys and I will go down because the max hit of the boss is actually 8 so you can never really die if you have redemption on and I'm not really getting hit anything right now but let's see if I do get hit. There you go, redemption, you drink one prayer pot and you do that again. And you only really heal through this way, but uh, I'd rather just have full HP the whole time and have my piety on and not really have to carry too much and just walk under it all the time. Oh, right, I'm on a slayer task. I can get brimstone keys, something I didn't even think about. Maybe do an on drop rate for that in the future as well. Brimstone chests could be interesting, maybe. Oh yes, my favorite drop. Nothing. Of course this happens to me. Dude, in all these kills before, as I said, I've only got two of them. And that's the third one. We're like 70 kills in. The loot is on the screen right now. Man, I kind of don't want this to happen. I've won all of the recent challenges and I kind of want to do a giveaway soon. We're going to do another challenge now though, but that's that one done. So lately I've been doing a lot of combats and I feel like it's time for a switch up. We are actually going to be doing a first clue scroll on drop rates. And what clue scrolls I'm going to be doing is the easy clue scrolls and the item I'm going for is the willow composite bow which is 1 in 360 but because you get 3 rolls on the easy clue scroll table every single time you open a casket the average drop rate is 1 in 120. The reason why I picked this one it's because it's not worth a lot and I do not have it on the collection log and compared to the amulet of Matic T with the same drop rate, I do already have four of them. The tried and true method of getting easy clue scrolls for a main account is of course buying the gourmet implings. They're pretty expensive so I'm not really expecting to be making money in this unless I get really lucky I guess with like Cape of Skulls and stuff like that which are worth 10 million per one. But I'm going to be buying 3000 of these, that should be about the drop rate of getting 120 of the easy clue scrolls. But of course I might have to buy more, we will have to see, but uh, most likely not going to be making a lot of money here. They are very expensive, but uh, it's the fun thing that matters. Well, them all exactly for 5k GP, so that's a very nice 15 million coins. And I will keep all the loot tracked for the gourmet implings that I actually get from opening them as well, so we can calculate everything together at the end. I'm so happy I actually built all the stashes on that goblin video I did when I did like 60 easy clue scrolls or something. I don't actually remember exactly, but it's such a nice convenience to be able to just put the items in here and go for the next one. We are now at the halfway point, 60 easy caskets done, and I'm going to have a look at the bank and see how many implings we still have left. So let's have a look here, 1443, so almost exactly halfway of the implings used, so that's pretty good. It looks so good in the inventory, 100 easy caskets, 20 more to go so we're not quite done. But I have to go to my bank and see how many implings I still have, I don't know if I will have to buy more or not. I mean 466, yeah on drop rate I should be getting 19 I think, so uh, yeah there's still a good chance I don't have to buy more of them. Well look at that, I have 31 of these implings left which is uh, one easy clue scroll on drop rate and I only need one more to actually get 120 so I might not have to buy more and if I do have to buy more it's going to be a very minor amount. By the way when it comes to all the impling loot the rune light tracker have actually not calculated everything and counted all of them in. I think from 3000 it's like 2.5-2.6k it counted. And uh, most of the money that you get back from these implings is just the jars. This is almost all the money. And then sometimes you get these grubby keys, which is like 50k each. So that is also a good amount of the money. And there it is. That's the last easy clue scroll. So we do not need to buy any more implings. But it was almost exactly on the rate. So that is a very nice to see. But um, when it comes to the implings, I am really only going to be selling back the impling jars and the grubby keys. Because collecting all the bass and everything would be way too much work and not really worth anything. So I sold everything, we can go into the history and you can see all the things right here and I got back 4.6 million and I spent 15 million on the implings themselves so that means I have to get back 10.4 million from the easy clue scrolls to actually get money back but that is not what I care about, I want the willow composite bow and collection slots in general would be very nice so let's go ahead and open all of these and see if we win the challenge or if we lose it.
Now, before we get into this, I feel like it's kind of important to show the collection log. 206 overall, and we have the cape of skulls out of all the team capes, and 42 out of 131 collection log slots. And the item we're going for is the willow composite bow, which will be a collection log pop-up. How I'm going to be doing this is I'm just going to show the highlights, the unique items, the pop-ups, and the rest of it I will not show. And of course, if we get the willow composite bow, I will show that. Please let me know some feedback for the future of Clue Scroll videos. If you want to see everything, just raw footage. It would be a longer video, but uh, less entertaining in my opinion. So I'm just, for this one, going to show the highlights. So let's get on with it. Oh, first collection log item. Imp Mask. 10 easy Clue Scrolls in. And uh, you can see in the chat, these are not valued at too much. So making the money ma back might be pretty hard. Right away, armadillo robe legs after that, 80k, not too bad. Oh, red beret, another collection log item. I think most of the money that we get in this is going to be from purple sweets. They are pretty consistent. And also these teleports, 95k, that's not bad at all. Okay, I was actually going to go for this item initially for the challenge, Amulet of Magic Tea, because it has the same drop rate as the composite bow. But if we go and look here, the reason why I didn't pick it is because I already had this collection log item in the slot. And now I have five of them, so that would have been the challenge done already. But uh, for this time, we have not won yet. Black Beret, very nice. Um, I have actually got a lot of unique items if we go in here. I've got like Black Wizard Robe T, G, some more Saradomin items, Bronze Fall MG. But I already had all of them, so they were not new uniques. But that is a new unique, Bod, Bod, Bob Red Shirt. Not really worth anything, I would assume. 30k, so yeah. But not too bad. Oh, I did not have the recording on there, but Steel Kite Shield G, another unique item. It's not worth much, but uh, always nice to get these collection log items. Maybe sometime in the future, I will complete the entire easy collection log. Alright, so we are down to 50 easy caskets. We have not got the Willow Composite Bow yet. But we, of course, still have a decent chance of getting it, so we can still win the challenge. Oh, another item. Blue Wizard Hat T. That is 73k. Yeah, so I would assume it's for free to play. Oh my god. There it is. Willow Composite Bow. I actually don't know how much money we've made from these easy clues yet. I have to have a look. And the loot is on the screen right now. We opened 81 caskets to get the Willow Composite Bow. And we only made 2.15 million so far. We still have 39 of them left to go and we will open all of them. But that means I am back quite a lot of money. Like 8 million right now just buying the implings. But at least I get to keep what I actually am going to get from these, which is very nice. I've won pretty much all the challenges, so we haven't really done like a giveaway in four videos or something. So maybe I can lose a challenge in the near future. Kind of want to do a giveaway soon. Wow, Master Clue Scroll from an easy clue. That has to be pretty rare. And on top of that, Iron Plate Body G, which is worth 400k for some reason. Uh, I think it's the same as the wizard items, probably free to play. Oh my god, what?! Two of them. After that, that's back-to-back -back three collection log items. But not on the third one. Oh my god, Black Plate Body Age 5. I think these are all like the same rarity, so I don't think it's like this is more rare than anything else. But uh, wow, we are getting a lot of collection log items right after that Willow Composite Bow. I did actually get a Bronze Full MT as well, but I missed recording it for some reason. I'm dumb, I guess. But uh, we have 10 more to go, the 10 last. And in my Goblin video where I got the Cape of Skulls, I actually got it on the second to last one. So what we're going to do is we're going to spam click these last 10. It's kind of a tradition on YouTube, I guess, for Old School RuneScape. A bunch of YouTubers do it, so I might as well jump and do the same thing. So let's go ahead and do it, and let's see if we get any collection of pop-ups or any of the valuable capes. So let's go ahead and do it. Spam click all the 10, and we get a collection log item, Pantaloons. Is that a rare item? Like, really rare or something? Let's have an examine. It is worth 15k. So probably not, uh, not that rare. Now, let's see how many collection log slots we actually unlocked with this. We started with 42, and we ended at 56. We got 14 collection log items. You need 131. Yeah, completing this is a massive challenge. I can imagine it being thousands of easy clues to be able to complete this. Probably more than that, like maybe even in the 10,000s, 10, because getting these is like really, really rare. 
So I guess uh, sometime maybe in the future we will get this through a bunch of other drop rate challenges, but uh, that will take some time. I went ahead and sold everything that I got from the easy clue scrolls and this time I kept literally everything and we got 2.2 million back from that and that means I lost around 8 million making this video but we still have one small saving grace if I can complete this master clue scroll and it's worth over 8 million then I didn't lose any money so let's go and try and do it. That is the last glimmer of hope dying I need to go to the north wing of the farming guild and I'm only 71, so even with a boost I could not reach 85, which is the requirement for that. So that is the second Master Clue Scroll I will have to drop. And that means we are pretty much done with the video. What is going on guys and welcome to another on drop rate episode. If you have killed these monsters before, you already know by the gear I'm using, where I'm standing, what this video will be about. And probably the thumbnail as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to be killing demonic gorillas. And the item we're going for is actually not the Senite Shard, which you might think would be the case. It's the most expensive item and also the most common. But I think 1 in 300, that's a boring grind. I'm just going to go for the light frame. 1 in 750, meaning we're going to do more than double the amount of kills for the Senite Shard. So we should see one Senite Shard at least. Maybe even two if I go all the way without getting a light frame. And I want to show you guys my collection log for this monster. Look at this. I've got two Senites, two heavy frames, Ballista Limbs and the Ballista Spring in 141 KC. But I do not have the light frame. So getting that would almost complete the entire log. So we can't re really lose here. If I lose the challenge, I do a big giveaway. If I win the challenge, then we almost complete an entire collection log. I actually think last time I killed these demonic gorillas, it was over a year ago. And I'm going to be killing them over here, so I will have to relearn how to actually kill them. I kind of know the basics, but uh, I will probably take some unnecessary damage for a while. But I did actually buy a Saradomin God Sword. It was worth 30 million. So that was quite some investment, but it's really good here. You can use it to hit pretty often with good accuracy. And it restores your prayer and HP, so it will extend my trips by hopefully quite a bit. Now these creatures are very click intensive to kill honestly because every 50 damage you do with a style it starts protecting against it and you only really want to do ranged and melee damage so as you can see every time I do 50 damage it just starts protecting what I was doing so I have to swap over to the other style you swap between ranged and melee basically all the time and the attacks the monster does itself as well is kind of tricky usually how I think it is after three blocked hits with a prayer like I'm praying range right now I block three attacks and then it will swap to either magic and melee and really I think you can somehow predict which one it's going to be or maybe it's completely random regardless I just look at what uh, the animations on the monster is and I swap to that immediately so every time it swaps to another style I tank one hit either a zero or a random amount of damage and then after that I just swap to, to the correct prayer and uh, keep going with the kill. Oh my god! Do you guys know how rare that is? Elite Clue Scroll is the first drop like 20 kills in, that's 1 in 500. You know, this time I'm just going to keep them in my bank, so that is the first casket, and uh, at the end of this grind we will open all of them. If I have more than one, which might even not be the case, but uh, I guess we'll see at the end of it. Dragon Fruit Tree Seeds, they are pretty rare, 1 in 833, but they have good value, so I'm not complaining. Oh, look at that. Ballista Spring, 29k. I already have the collection of item, and it's not the item we're hunting. It's not really worth a lot, but uh, yeah, always nice to see a rare. One in 500. Not really a drop or anything, but kind of a cool thing. I am like two hits away, maybe one hit away from 99 defense if I don't die here. Okay, come on. 5 XP, one more. 12 XP. Okay, there we go. 99 defense. And I think I got one combat level from that, which is pretty nice. I think I'm 124 now. And that means every single combat stat is at 99, except for prayer, which is 82. So sometime in the future when I get a lot of uh, money that I can just spend on prayer, I'll go for 99 there as well. Of course, we can get those as well. Hard clue scroll, the first one of the grind. It's 1 in 100, so I'm expecting to get a couple more of these than the elite ones, but guess we'll see. Oh, there it is. Look at it. Senite Shard. That did not take that many kills. My current KC is a 148. So actually only half the drop rate. I have to price check this. Let's click on it. If I can click on it correctly. There we go. 
15.1 million. We are making money here. You have got to be kidding me. What? Second one, like 70 kills later, I think that is. 80 kills, 229kc. Still below the drop rate for one of these. And we now have two of them. We are making some nice money here. Excuse me, how is this a thing? I just got the second one and it's been 11 kills and we got a third one. How much money am I going to make on this? This is ridiculous. We're not even halfway to the end goal of this. We're barely even a third through it. So it's been 60 kills since my third Senite, which is just ridiculous. And that is now 300 KC on the Demonic Gorillas, which is not even the halfway point. Imagine if this keeps up and I get like six of them. Of course, I'm not expecting that, but uh, wow, this has been good so far. Oh, second Ballista Spring, 29.7k. You can't always get Senite Shards. I mean, they are more rare than Senite Shards, but only worth 30k. It's fine. I can't complain. What? Oh my god, dude. <laughs> okay, that's the first death. I was talking to the Spanish guy, you can see in the chat, and I tried to help him and I kind of zoned out. <laughs> Unfortunate. The halfway point has been reached. 375 kills, you can see on the right hand side there. And we do not have the uh, light frame yet, so we have not won the challenge, but we have made like 55 million GP. Which is quite a lot, so I'm kind of getting scared now, I'm not gonna get it. Oh, that has to be rare. I have the rare drop table right here. It's, uh, oh my god, 1 in 13k almost. Oh. <laughs> what is that? Heavy frame, 200k, that is 1 in 1500. That's twice as rare as the light frame, and I already have it on the collection log. I am getting everything except for the light frame. Oh my god. Just look at this collection log. I have 5 Senites in all these overall kills. 3 heavy frames, which I said is 1 in 1.5k. And we have no light frame. This is getting ridiculous. Another elite? I actually didn't expect to get any because they're so rare. I mean, I can't complain. That's pretty cool. I will do all of them, of course, if I can. A third elite clue scroll? I just came back. I finished the other one and I've done like 10 kills. I have never seen this step before. I have to go to the Necropolis Mine? Where even is that? Is it in the desert? Right here. Can I even get here? I've never been there. It has to be because of the new quest beneath Cursed Sands, I guess? Well, it seems like I can't really get in here. I'm trying to find a way in, but I think it's just locked because I need to actually do the quest or at least begin the Beneath Cursed Sand quest, so I don't know if I can do this. I actually looked it up. You only need to start Beneath Cursed Sands to be able to do this, but uh, the NPC where I start the quest is not here, and uh, to be able to even start the quest I need to do Contact, and uh, if I look at Contact, I need to do Prince Ali Rescue. So I have to do quite a lot of things to be able to do this Elite Clue Scroll, and I don't feel like it's worth it. Elite Clue Scrolls are not really worth a lot anyway, so this one is going on the ground. Yo, you have got to be kidding me. A fourth Senite Shard? Oh my god, we're like 530 kills in. That's like one Senite so far every 120 kills or something like that. That is ridiculous. Oh, it's not a Senite, but uh, not complaining about a hard clue skull. Haven't had many of these, surprisingly. Oh no, I can. F okay, I'm going to get so much uh, salt and hate in the comments, man. I cannot believe this Senite luck. This is uh, getting a bit out of hand. I mean, I'm not complaining, we're making bank. No light frame has been seen yet, and we are getting really close to the end here. 700 KC done, 5 Senites, and 90 million worth of loot. Maybe you guys will uh, excuse me if I do not win this challenge, because <laughs> there will be a massive giveaway. This luck so far has been just nuts, so it's going to be interesting to see if I do get the item or not. <laughs> what do I even say at this point? 711 kills. That is 6th Senite. We're over 100 million now, just from 711 kills. I mean, I knew Demonic Gorillas could be good money, but uh, yeah, not this good. After this Demonic Gorilla right here, we have 3 more kills to go, and we have not seen the light frame, of course. 
I have been incredibly lucky during this video, I could not have asked for better RNG. But that means if we do not get the light frame in the last 3 kills here, we have some clue scrolls to open and a massive giveaway to do. So meanwhile I'm killing the last demonic gorilla for the entire grind here, I will talk briefly about how this grind was. Of course it was super super lucky and it kept my motivation up getting all these rare drops all the time. The Senite is I think the most common rare of them, so you should expect to get them a bit more commonly than the frames that I got. Um, the heavy frame is 1 in 1.5k, which is of course a lot more rare than a 1 in 300, but over the course of this entire grind, 700 150 kills I should have seen two and a half so between two and three senite shards in the entire grind we ended up getting six maybe even seven if I get one from this kill but I'm not going to uh not going to expect that really but uh, we did not get the light frame and that is death runes so that means we did lose the challenge meaning I am going to give away half of all the loot that I got from this challenge and also everything that we got from the clue scrolls but uh, let's have a look at the collection log and see what the RNG looks like so let's go over to other gloves experiments look at that eight senai charts in 891 kills overall for the account three heavy frames which we got one in this video which is the one in 1.5k so that is ridiculous but uh, let's have a look at the end results as always i give away everything that i get from clue scrolls and we ended up getting three hard caskets and two elites so let's start with the hard ones and let's see what we can get i'll have the chat open so you guys can see the value first one is 98k second one 32k and last one 650k that was a lot of money i think that might be the lunar isle teleports let me actually check if this one is worth anything or if it's just the teleports oh my god Sammy Fulham is 560k. Interesting. Let's go for the elites now. Can we get any collection log items at least? First one. Oh my god. That is a collection log item. Rangers tights. That's be pretty rare. But it's only worth 331k for the entire clue scroll. But it's not too bad. Let's go for the last one. Can we get something unique here as well? Oh my. What? That is uh, another unique ND Master Clue Skull and 211k worth of value. Yes, we're going to try to do the Master and hopefully I can complete it. Would you look at that? We could complete the Master Clue Skull, so let's go ahead and open it. Hopefully this will be worth quite a lot and this as well is of course going to the giveaway. So how much are we going to be giving away from the Master Clue Skull? It is going to be 273k, so nothing too special. Welcome to another on drop rate video. I have just one thing to say in this intro. This is going to be rough. Uh, we're going into the wilderness in this one and we're going to probably the most PK'd area in the entire game. And I am a very bad PKer. It's not really something I've ever really done much of. But we're going to the Revenant Caves and we're going to be killing the Revenant Dragons in hopes of getting the Ancient Crystal. And without being scalded, it's 1 in 2667, but if you are scalded, it's 1 in 1467. And that is the drop rate we're going for, so we're going to be playing scald the entire time, risking quite a lot, and I might get smited for a crafts bow in this video, which is worth like 36 million right now. So we're risking a lot, and I will get PK'd. A lot of times in 1467 Revenant Dragon kills, but I guess let's just get into it and see how it goes. This is the gear and the inventory I'm going to be using. I am risking the Crofts Bow. If I do get smited, I would lose a lot of money. So let's go and do this. Look at this, 36.6 million. And if I do have the item protection on, I only risk 298k. So it's Kind of important that I keep that up, hopefully I don't get piled by a team and get massively smited. The grind has officially begun, this is the first dragon of the video, are we going to get a rare drop right away? Bracelet of Ethereum, yeah I mean it has good value, 43k, but it is a 1 in like 6 or something, so I'm going to be getting a lot of these. Ooh, dragon plate skirt, 2 of them, 322k, that's on kill number 2. It seems like we're going to be making some money in this grind, hopefully. If I don't get peak at all too much and I lose too much money, we might actually make some money. So I think we're already coming up to the end of the first trip and I have not been PK'd yet, which is a very good sign. I can't even pick everything up. And I want to teleport out and show you guys. I did 23 kills 
And that took me, judging by the potions, around 10 minutes to do. So around 30 seconds per kill, somewhere around that. And the amount of money we made is crazy. Look at this. 23 kills, 1 million GP. And then I just run to 30 wilderness and I use the grand or royal seed pod and teleport out. And then I can bank everything that I've got. Now, because I'm not a very good PKer, I have decided to not really try to counter-attack people. I will attack them if I'm frozen, just to do some damage to them, rather than just doing nothing. But I'm not bringing like an AGS or D-Class or something like that, which is going to be a massive risk for me. I think it would literally never get me a kill, and I would just risk more money. So what I'm doing is just escaping every single time, trying to get to 30 Wilderness and be out after that. And the people that attack me here are very good gear. They're usually in like... 30 to 50 million worth of gear sometimes even more than that and uh, I don't think really I stand a chance so I'm instead of showing like 40 clips in a row of different people attacking me me just running away or being frozen I'm just going to show a couple of clips of me trying to survive these PKers and me talking uh, meanwhile showing them so actually what I'm trying to do if I do it correctly but as I said I'm a pretty bad PKer and if you're going to do this yourself the best advice I can give you at least is protect melee as much as you can and then just hope that you don't get specked out and spam eat the entire time stay very high HP and so every time they try to spec you out, like they hit a 40 ranged or something, you just spam eat. Meanwhile, praying melee so they can't AGS you for like an 80 or something. And then you get away to the lower parts, the 31. And they never really have teleblock because they're using ancient magic to freeze you in the first place. Of course, there will be some people that use the normal spellbook that can teleblock you. And in that case, it's going to be a bit harder. But uh, in general cases... You definitely can just get frozen, tank it out, and then at the end teleport out at 30 wilderness. Not sure if this is really helpful, but I actually marked the entire line where I can teleport. I can't do there, but if I go here and press the teleport, this is the line I actually have to get to exactly to be able to escape. So far I have not died yet and I've done roughly 100 kills, so it's looking good, but I am getting attacked fairly often. Now, after I kill this Revenant Dragon right here, we are pretty much 10% or one-tenth of the way done with the entire grind. I needed 1,467 kills, and I can't do 146.7 kills, so this is kill number 146. And uh, I have made a good amount of money, look at this, 4.45 million from 145, and that means times 10 in that, if I get no rare drop and th this loot keeps going on, I will make 45 million, which is very nice. Ooh, look at that. Baba the third, a PKer, is coming this way, so I guess it's time to change world. All right, I'm getting attacked by this guy, and he's not very good geared, so I'm probably not going to be dying here, but let's try out this method as well. Can I actually leave and get a log before I even uh, get attacked again? Uh, can I get a gap... Alright, I did not get a gap, so I'm probably going to still get attacked here if people are quick. And uh, I still think this is better, because if I get teleblocked, I'm actually outside of the rev caves, so I can technically run to safety. But in the rev caves, you can't leave anyway, except teleporting out or this uh, exit. So I would actually be kind of stuck in there if I would get teleblocked, which some people do bring spellbook swap and try to teleblock me. But uh, yes, because of that, I think this path is better to take. That is the first rare spawn I've seen. You can see in the chat, a superior revenant has been awoken in the middle of the caves. I don't think I will actually try to kill these. If it spawns really close to me and there's like no one around, I might try and do it. But uh, I guess we'll see. The, the rewards from it is not great, so I don't know if it's worth the risk. Wow, okay. This guy actually managed to get a teleblock on me on 31 wilderness. I am completely fine though, I'm not really going to be losing my crafts bow, so that's all good, I protect item on, but uh, Idol is the first guy to kill me on this grind. Oh, this time it spawned really close, it's just south here, when I can actually teleport as well, so I just have to look out for being teleblocked, and I should be fine. There's another guy here, and there's a PKer. Yeah, if I get teleblocked here, I die. I don't have the agility shortcut, so I'm just going to teleport out. I don't feel like it's worth the risk, but yeah, I was expecting that. PKers are going to flood to that area, of course. I am keeping track of how many times I've been attacked and how many times I've actually died from it. So at the end of the video, I will show you guys all of that. And I can tell you, there is a lot of PKers here. It's actually kind of ridiculous. I think like every 20 kills on average, I've been attacked one time, which is... 
pretty bad. But at least I haven't died many times. So far I've only died one single time. So that is good at least. But uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how many PKers at the end of this I've been attacked by and how many times I've actually died. I think I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, I didn't want to go with the Amulet of Avarice, but it has a 20% damage bonus to Revenants, and it actually keeps me Scald the entire time, which is kind of annoying without it, I have to go find the Emblem Trader all the time to re myself. So I'm actually going to invest in this, and even if I do die, it's not the biggest loss, it's 350k, and I get that from like killing 10 Revenants, so it's not that bad. I'm going to be wearing it and it will keep me scald the entire time and if I do check right now how much I'm actually risking when I'm scald that is not the correct one enable so PK skull active I would lose 35 million and if I protect item on I lose 600k so it would be 300k roughly without the amulet so it's not that bad still. This amulet also notes a lot of really annoying items to pick up normally, like adamant bars, black dragon hide. They're noted now, so they don't take that much inventory space in my looting bag. I usually want to kind of, you know, bank when I have like a million worth in my looting bag anyway, so this might not extend my trips by a lot, but uh, it's nice nonetheless. Have to pick up less items. Oh my god. Oh my god, the 8 million ancient effigy? Oh my god, I think that's the second rarest one, or maybe the second most expensive at least. Oh my- okay, I have to run and I have to go to a bank right away. Someday I might complete this, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Just have a look at this log, this is ridiculous. This is probably overall like 100,000 revenant kills or something like that. It, it has to be ridiculous to complete. And by the way, we did get that drop on 457 kill counts, and the loot is on the screen right now. The average amount of money I've made from each dragon so far is 49,000 GP. That is not bad. Okay, this amulet is definitely worth it, and for only 350k, yes, I am going to keep doing this, even if I die and lose a couple of them, because my kills now are incredibly fast, because I think it's every 4 hits that you do, the monsters heal themselves again, and if you just keep hitting all the time consistently, you don't really have to deal with much healing at all. But if you do splash a bit, look at this damage. Oh my god, it healed one time and now it's pretty much dead. So before it could heal two, three times sometimes and that slowed it down quite a lot. So yes, I am going to keep using this amulet, definitely worth it. Oh, it spawned by me? Uh, should I even try to fight this? I don't know if I can kill this. It's probably not a great idea. 1250 HP. Normally I would not run to this. I've seen a couple of spawns, but it spawned literally by me, so maybe I'll try. Alright, so a couple of people showed up and everyone attacking is attacking the boss. Uh, I don't know if I want to stay too long because I don't really have that much food. And someone is attacking me, so yeah, I don't think I want to risk it. I have like 900k in my looting bag right now, so I don't know. The totem that it drops is not worth that much. The boss is going to die now, I think, and yeah, there it is. You see the buff over me? My skull turned blue. I think that is if you have the Amulet of Avarice that I'm using right now. If you kill one of those rares, you get like a... 10% damage buff or something to Revenants. I'm not sure exactly how much it is, but I can use that now to Revenants, which is not bad. Another one? Oh god, it's the 500k one. That is actually more rare when you're Scald. It's only 500k. It's without being Scald, it's 1 in 1.3k. When you're Scald, it's 1, 1 in 4.4k. <laughs> Congratulations to you, Dusty Nan. You are going to claim the first Amulet of Avarice from me. It's going to be a minus 300k right here. This guy definitely deserved it. He played really well, and now he's trying to smite me, I'm pretty sure. But I have a lot of resource, I should be fine. But this is the power of teleblocking. If you're going to be PKing here, I mean, maybe I shouldn't give recommendations, but I'm already done with the grind now, after this video is out. So it's all good. Bring Spellbook Swap. Or even just Entangle and... Uh, and the uh, teleblock spell, because I cannot escape if I'm teleblocked. It's really hard. But uh, yes, minus 300k for the amulet right there.
Oh, that is ironic. <laughs> Five minutes to uh, a system update. I just actually died and lost this like a couple of hours ago in the last clip you probably saw. And that is, uh, well, I got it back through a Revenant Dragon Kill. That's a 1 in 11,000 drop. It's not worth a lot, but cool. Ooh, the 6 Magic Seed drops 766k. Worth quite a lot. It's actually very rare. It's 1 in 1,100. But it's not as rare as some of the other Revenant items, of course. Like the Amulet of Avarice that I just got is 10 times as rare. I am so dead. <laughs> there is no way. I have like 3 Saradomin sips left, 15 seconds, and I'm Venomed. And this guy has a Heavy Ballista as well and an AGS. So I think I am pretty dead here. Maybe the, another Amulet of Avarice is going to go to this guy. And his name is very interesting, so I'm not going to say the name, but you can read it. 51. Can I get the TP? I'm actually unfrozen. Oh my god, I do. I thought I was dead there. I actually lived. I am still Venomed, of course, but 16 and I have 24 HP. Yeah, I'm fine. I actually lived that. That was... Ooh, that was a bit too close. After this Revenant Dragon, right here, we're actually on the halfway point. We're at 733 kills. It's actually halfway point would be 733.5, but of course I can't kill half a dragon. But there it is, 732 to 33, and we have made 31.8 million so far. So if the luck and the average DP per kill is staying up at this rate, we will end at like 62 million, which is a lot of money. Is that the real dino? That's like a PK YouTube slash streamer, so he knows what he's doing. Hopefully I get the gap. World up, please? No, he froze me! Oh no, dude. This guy is good at the game. I am going to get demolished here, I feel like. Ah, uh, might as well just spam it, maybe? I don't know. I have a lot of food, so I'm kind of in a good spot, at least. And I don't know. I feel like he's going to have Teleblock, because he's, he's like a really good PKer, so I'm kind of scared he actually does have Teleblock. I might just pray. Okay, 77. I'm just spam eating. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just spam eating. He did not have teleblock and I got away. Easy clap. I actually ended up getting attacked by Dino a couple of times, but I do have one of the clips right here. He's a very nice and entertaining guy and he did give me permission to show this clip. So here you go. Got lots of steps then. I'm gonna need some sort of ridiculous size barrage. Or range hit on him. Any XP drop would be lovely. Just... Still in it, we're fine. There's still a chance. That's more like it. Someone's going to change his prayer. Well, that's a shame. Bad hits, man. No fucking way. Dude, there's no way. Oh my god. 36.5 million. Oh, that's like the best drop I could have got. I don't think that... Yeah, there's nothing more expensive than that. That is a 1 in 22,000. Oh my god. I have to run out. I, there's like no one here. I should be fine. Holy sh- I don't even know what to say. Twin- oh, 36 million, one in 22,000 crops, but I actually got the item. So I got it on 1072kc, and you can see all the loot on the screen right now. And currently I am at 73,000 GP worth of profit every single kill. That is ridiculous. Let's also look at the collection log, because this is going to be ridiculous. Let's look at Revenants. I've broken the 1,100kc mark, and oh my, just look at this. I have Kraut's Bow, Amulet of Avarice, I have the Ancient Effigy, Ancient Emblem, and of course a bunch of Aether as well. I have still not got the Ancient Crystal though, so I have, what is that, like 400 kills left to do, and I have still not won the challenge, so this could either be a massive payout for me, or both a massive, massive payout for me and a good giveaway, so I guess we'll see how that turns out, but uh, if I ever want to complete this log, I have uh, done a good dent into it already. The code has been cracked, I know exactly how to not get PK'd at Revenants as much as I was getting PK'd. I was getting PK'd all the time until I found this one simple trick, 
that no one wants you to know. And the answer to it is... The Australian worlds. No one wants to PK on these worlds. They are so extremely laggy that PKers just don't want to go here. I was getting PK'd the entire grind all the time. And now I haven't been PK'd in like 200 kills. And uh, ever since I joined the Australian gang, it has been all but uphill. Okay, hear me out. I know this was a terrible idea. I stayed the entire Maledictus this time. I really wanted to get the emblem. I have like no food left now, but it's about to die. I know the drop is going to be mine as well. And if you do actually get an effigy, there it is. The ancient emblem, 500k, a bunch of other items as well. The emblem is always dropped on death, by the way. So even if I pick this up, I am probably going to die from this guy. Luckily, he is not super geared. I'm going to be picking everything up. And get the food as well, so I have some food at least. That get the blighted items. All right, can I escape this guy now? Infernal cape with uh, mystics and an abyssal tentacle whip. I don't know what that is, but a DFS as well on top of it. His setup is very strange, and maybe I can actually gap him if he's not a very good player. Guess we'll see. I actually think I gapped him right here. I don't think he can attack me from this range. I might actually get the log here. I am tele, and I get it. Easy as that, was worth it. So we are getting down to the last 100 kills. This one is kill number 1367 and all the loot that I've got so far will be on the screen right now. You can see it is worth a lot of money, but I have not got the crystal that I was actually hunting for. We have 100 kills left to do, I still have the chance of getting the item, but otherwise it is not looking good for me winning this challenge. Yo! Ancient statuette, another collection log item. So shortly after that 100 kill left mark. Dude, I am getting all of these collection log items. I'm actually getting no duplicates, I don't think. Just from the Maledictus, of course, I got the duplicate statue. But other than that, oh my god, my luck has been incredible. Now, according to the actual drop rate, this kill right here would be where I would exactly get to the Ancient Crystal. Kill number 1467, the last one for the entire grind. And let's see, are we going to win or lose this challenge? Regardless, I have been extremely lucky in this. And the last kill is Bracelet of Ethereum, the most common drop you can get. I did lose the challenge and the loot for all the kills is on the screen right now, 92.4 million GP. What is going on guys and welcome to another episode of the on drop rate series. We are actually going back to the wilderness just like the last video I did on Revenant Dragons in this one as well. And we're going to be killing Elder Chaos Druids. Bit of a weird one maybe, they do not really have the most interesting drop table but they do have the Elder Chaos hood, robe and top. These are worth like 250 to 500k each. And they have a drop rate 1 in 1419. And the specific item we're going for is the Elder Chaos Robe. So the bottoms, the least expensive one. And these actually have a good drop rate of hard clue scrolls. If you use a Ring of Wealth imbued, the drop rate of a hard clue scroll from these is 1 in 64. So we're going to be killing these and getting probably a lot of hard clue scrolls. Complete them, add everything together, see if we win or lose the challenge. Let's go ahead and uh, get geared. Now hear me out, this is a bit wild and I know that I am like a really bad PKer, but uh, I kind of bought a PKing setup for AGS swap and a heavy ballista, because maybe some people are not super good geared who attack me at the Chaos Druids, and I would love to try to like anti-PK, and even if I die, I don't risk that much. I don't really risk my cannon, so if I place that, and I have Protect from item on. We can actually have a look at, because I don't have to be Scald this time, like the Revenant Caves. I only risk 1 million. That's not that bad. And I think most of it, honestly, is in the Cannonball. So it's, nah, it's not that bad if I die. Alright, so this is the spot right here. If I can actually put the Cannonballs in the Cannon right there. There we go. Now I can pretty much just AFK. And every time I get a hard clue scroll, I will teleport out and do it. And that is pretty much the entire grind. If I do get attacked here, it's only 13 wilderness. So if I get teleblocked, even with this food, I should be kind of okay. Yay, there's the first hard clue skull. That took me six kills, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, I feel like these trips are going to get interrupted quite a lot by these clue scrolls, but I don't mind. 
Okay, it's done. Uh, this takes the cake. I have never been as jebated as I just got. Look at this. I was like, why is this not working? Bro, what is this? Well, this is an unforeseen and pretty awkward challenge. I can't reload my cannon. I'm sure I will be able to in the future, but uh, I just can't click it. I'm just getting spam teleported the entire time by these mages. Maybe I have too many of them on me or something, but uh, <laughs> hopefully when there's fewer of them I can actually reload it, because otherwise this is going to be a challenge. I'm going to probably get carpal tunnel from clicking on my cannon so much. Now, I really wanted to actually find PKers here, because just killing these and doing the hard clues is not too good content, so PKing would be a bit more fun. But unfortunately, as you will see in a second here, there is a PKer. And he is too low level. There is actually quite a lot of PKers that come here, but they're all very low level. And in like the 70-80 range, and they can't attack me. So we will have to see if I will even encounter someone that can attack me, but hopefully that is the case. So we actually just hit 500 kills, and it's actually been a while, because you can see on the loot right now on the screen, I got 9 hard clue scrolls. There was one I could actually not do, because it uh, required me to do one of the new quests, Land of the Goblins. I've not got to doing that yet, but uh, it takes a while to get these 500 kills, because I have to go and re-gear everything for the clue scrolls. But uh, otherwise, there would be like no loot for this, so you can see 700k besides the clue scrolls. Oh, we actually get an item, Elder Chaos Top, it's 550k, I think actually the most expensive one out of all of them. And you saw that collection log pop up, all of these items, the Elder Chaos items, are actually on the collection log. So even if that is not the item I was hunting for, I would like to get them all in the future for just the collection log. Oh my god, Elder Chaos Hood, that is not the item I want, but actually a very good item to get. For the collection log, now I've got everything except the item I want, so if I do end up getting it and winning the challenge, that is actually a green collection log, so actually not bad at all. So this is what it's looking like right now, I only need the robe bottoms and 2 out of 3, so this is definitely a pretty easy one to complete, but would be nice to complete it in this run, because honestly this is not the most fun activity to do. Oh, oh, that's the wrong one. Add me a bit of a heart attack there. Elder Chaos Top, 500k. I mean, it's the most expensive one, so we're actually making some money at least. But uh, yes, I still need the robe bottoms for both the challenge and the collection log. There has been an update, and they actually just put in the max hit splats. Oh, you can see one there from the cannon. They look a bit different. Hopefully I can get one from the crafts bow as well. They're like orange hit splats that look a bit different if you actually manage to get your max hit. I think with the crafts bow without praying it should be like 30... Oh, there we go, 36 right there. And if I'm praying I should be able to hit like over 40s, but I think that's a very nice additional mechanic to put into the game. I guess for PKers especially, so you know what your max hit is more clearly. And other things like that, without having to go to the dummy in your house. And also very nice in PK situations where you would like AGS someone, you see the red splat, like the extra orange around it. Would look very nice. Well, we are coming up on uh, 1000 KC now, and we have actually encountered zero PKers. And that is actually saddening me, because when I did Venonatis or when I did Revenants, I was running from them every time, getting annoyed. But this grind, I, it's not a very risky situation I'm in, I'm not Scald or anything like that, so I don't really mind it. And I kind of wanted to try to counter PK, but uh, seems like that is not happening in this video unless in the last 400 kills here I actually encounter someone, but I have barely seen anyone. This might be common knowledge, but I actually had no idea. I got some additional challenge scrolls right here, and if you have a hard clue screen in your inventory, you can't pick them up. But if I drop this one, I can pick them up. And I've actually completed the step already on my hard clue scroll, so... I don't know, maybe I can put these challenge scrolls in the bank and they might stay there as like a placeholder or something. Because now I have three of them and they are the same one, all of them. The question is, can I actually bank them? Yes, I can. Very nice. I'm just going to keep them here as a placeholder, I guess. Because I don't think this is going to block me from being able to get more hard clue scrolls because it's not the same ID. But that's pretty neat. It is looking pretty grim for me winning this challenge. We have 1,319 KC now, which means 100 left. And the loot I've got so far is on the screen right now. 
a lot of Raynars and the two Elder Tops, which is most of that money and 3.3 million almost from 1,300 of them is like 2.5k GP per kill. So if you're going to be doing this yourself, don't expect a lot of money. I do have to say I am actually very disappointed that in the entire grind I did not encounter a single PKer I could actually have a fight with. Normally this would be great, but uh, for the Elder Chaos Druids, the PKing here is the only activity you really have. And this is the last one, and we did not get the robe bottoms we were hunting for, which means I did lose the challenge. Now you might have seen there, it said 27 hard clue scrolls. If I can actually teleport away now, I'll just do with the glory. I'm getting like spam TP'd. I could not complete all the hard clue scrolls. I need to do some questing in the future. I could only do 24 of them. Let's do my pin. So um, I have 24 caskets. You can see right there. So three of them I could not actually do. Now, of course, we did lose the challenge. So we have 3.37 million to give away from the Elder Chaos Druids. Anytime it's below 10 million in value, I give away everything. But on top of that, we are going to give away everything from the 24 hard clue scrolls we're going to open right now. And just so you guys know, I have done 220 hard clue scrolls and 68 out of 134 collection logs obtained. And within this, look at this. A long time ago, I actually got this. Third Age Kite Shield. If I can get any of the third age items, I mean, uh, there is technically a chance in 24 of them. And the 24 is not too many of them, so I'm just going to open them all on video and comment while doing it. So let's go ahead and see what we're going to get from these clue scrolls. Let's go ahead and open them right away. 28k, it's not looking good for making a lot of money right now. 163k, no collection log items so far. I don't think even I will bank. I will just keep going. All right, Samra Kite Shield. That is the first collection log item so far overall. Ooh, 141k. We have made 932k from Hard Clue Scrolls. So not too much so far. We have not actually passed the Elder Chaos Druids with this. Purple Sweets are very nice. Ancient Coif, the last 10. Let's go pretty quick here. Dark Cavalier. Ooh, a Master Clue Scroll. Uh, I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to uh, do it between the clue scrolls. I'm probably only going to get one anyways. Last five. Ooh, chaps are very good. Also a collection log slot for those. We're going to get a very large pile of loot here, so I will have to be quick with looting afterwards. And the last one is going to be pretty mediocre. We actually... Oh my god, I need to show you guys this. Look on the screen right now. The hard clue scrolls and the elder chaos druids made exactly the same amount of money. That is funny. What is going on guys? Welcome to another episode of the On Drop Rate series. In the last one, of course, we took on the Elder Chaos Druids. And we did get some items on the collection log, but we did not win the challenge, meaning I am giving away 10 million in this video in just a second. But in this one, we're going to be killing Rune Dragons. This is a good money maker. A lot of people do this for money. So there's some nice potential here, and the item we're going for is the Dragon Limbs. These are 1 in 800, but killing 800 Rune Dragons can be pretty time-consuming but that is why I've made some investments. I have bought two very important items for this grind and the first one is the Dragon Hunter Lance and the other one you can see already in my inventory, a Dragon Warhammer. Now together these are really good to kill the Rune Dragons but they are also worth a lot of money, 127 million almost together. But of course we can make some money from this grind hopefully and then sell these back and hopefully not lose too much money. Now for the last week's giveaway for the 10 million we had 415 entries and let's go ahead and roll the winner right here. The winner for the 10 million giveaway is going to be Dillion Oikel, I think and his in-game name is Goblin Giant so congratulations to you for winning 10 million GP. And of course here is the trade of the 10 million to Goblin Giant so enjoy all that money and thank you for supporting the content. Let's kick off the grind with missing a Dragon Warhammer. Can I get one actual hit in? Oh my god, that's a big one. 70. It doesn't really matter how much you hit with a Dragon Warhammer. It always reduces the defense by 30%. And with the Dragon Hunter Lance, you can see how much I'm shredding this. But I'm also getting absolutely destroyed. I was actually thinking about maybe going with Justiciar, but uh, it costs some money, so I don't know if I want to invest in that right now. Of course, I can always sell it back, but I will probably do the first trip here. 55, and that was a max hit. I will probably do this trip right here and just see how it goes. And if I take too much damage for uh, how many kills I get per trip and stuff like that, if the trips are, trips are pretty short, then I will try something else. But uh, first kill is going to be... 
Runite Bar and Dragon Bones. So a very standard drop. I actually think that was a nothing drop because I think both of those items are guaranteed. It's not a very good start. Honestly, getting absolutely shredded using Bandos gear. I love seeing the massive hits, but uh, I do think ultimately for the uh, length of this grind, it's probably better to have a bit more relaxed and slightly less damage. So I'm just going to go ahead and sell maybe something I don't really use. Maybe the Saradom and God Sword for my bank and just buy Justy with it instead. It is a really good set to have. I don't know, do people like the look of this? Because I really do, and look at these defense bonuses, like 300 plus and everything, so I should be a lot tankier. With Bandos, I got 5 kills in one trip, which is not very good, so let's see the difference with this gear instead. I mean, you just can't argue with that. I mean, 15, it's going to go to 16 after this one if I don't die. That means 11 kills in one trip, that is more than double, and I can feel that I'm taking way less damage, so this is definitely the setup I'm going for for the rest of the video. Oh my god! Elite Clue Scroll, you might be thinking that's actually not that rare, but it's 1 in 300. And of course killing 300 rune dragons is pretty slow. Wow, that is nice, let's go ahead and do it. Oh no. Uh, I wanted to try to just stay one more kill. That's what I get. Yo, that was so fast. Oh my god. All the loot is on the screen right now. This grind is already over. 116 kills and we actually made almost 5 million in just 116 kills. I'm not sure how many kills that was an hour, but I would guess around 30 kills an hour. So I've probably been, maybe it's a bit more actually, like 35-40 kills an hour. I think I've been here for roughly 3 hours to get this. That is, wow, that was really quick. I guess we might as well just open the elite casket right away. So let's go ahead and do that. And the loot is going to be worth 70k. The uh, average elite clue scroll, I guess. I mean, now that I already have the setup, I kind of want to make this into the dragon episode, I guess. So we're going to be killing... Ancient Viverns. We're going to be killing 600 of them and it uses pretty much the same setup. The only thing I changed is that I changed the insulated boots into the Guardian boots. I swapped into a Ring of Suffering, just overall more tanky. And we're going to be killing 600 of them for the Granite Sword. A very weird item, it's not worth a lot. But there is the Granite Boots on the same drop rate, which is actually worth 1 million. So, could be pretty interesting of a grind. Man, these guys are massive, look at them. I've actually barely killed these, like, ever, so it's going to be very interesting to see how hard they are. What? Oh my god, wait, do I have to be on a Slayer task? I'm pretty sure I have seen people kill these off Slayer tasks. Maybe there's, like, another area or something? I guess this might be the Slayer cave where you actually kill them, so let me look it up. This is the location right here. I am about to fight them in the dungeon, and it actually is kind of close to a bank. I wonder if it's closer than running to the Slayer dungeon. I am going to assume it slightly is. So that is a good thing, but there are, I think, only two of them inside here, and you have to run all the way into the end of the dungeon. So you have to run quite a bit through these dragons, or the wyverns, I should say. And of course, these do drop the wyvern bones, which are worth like 3k each. So regardless, I'm going to be making some money from just that. And also the alkyballs and like Raynar seeds you can get from these are pretty good. I see they do share some of the items with the normal skeletal wyverns, so... Hopefully it's going to be a good amount of money in general. Now if I would be comparing these to the rune dragons, I do think I kill these slightly faster. So doing the 600 kills is not going to be all too bad. It's probably going to be like an overall of 10 hours maybe killing these, maybe a bit less. But also these have a skeletal visage you can get, which is a 1 in 10,000. So of course I do not expect to get it, but that is like 25 million, so... If I'm really lucky, I could get that and not get the granite sword, which would be quite something. This ancient wyvern right here is kill number 100, what is it going to give us? Air battle staves, that's not a bad drop, and the overall loot I've got so far is on the screen right now, the majority coming from the onyx ball tips, the wyvern bones, and the Raynar seeds, and the overall loot is 2.2 million, which is not that bad, meaning if we go all the way to 600, then I will make over 10 million, which is pretty nice. Oh, wait, no way. I just got a rune spear. I don't have a ring of wealth on me. Let me actually check how rare that is. I have the rare drop table right here. 
that is a 1 in 8918, so almost 1 in 9k. That's almost as rare as actually getting the Vyvern Visage. Unfortunate and sad to see. Elite Clue Scroll. That is actually even more rare from these than the Rune Dragons, but not much more rare. It's 1 in 350 and the Rune Dragons were 1 in 300, but uh, we're like 260 kills in and we get one, so we're slightly lucky on that one. So I'm standing here in the wilderness with a rolling pin equipped, which uh, I didn't even know existed. That's how I roll. And uh, I got this step. I have to have the Pharaoh soundtrack. And of course I don't have it, but I do not want to throw away this. And I have been planning on doing some quests anyways, and I need to do Beneath Cursed Sand, which is a pretty big quest, to be able to get this song. But I'm going to do it, I am not going to show it in this video, but I will record it for another video. Maybe you've already seen that video, I'm not sure. But I will complete this step and I will open the clue scroll, so I'm not throwing this away. The song has been obtained, let's play it and complete that step, and hopefully I can now complete the rest of the steps. Oh wow, another elite. I feel like this always happens when I get a rare drop of an elite clue scroll or something. I always come back, done like 20 kills, and I get another one. Hey, We get the granite longsword, it's only worth 20k. And I think we're like 310 kills in or something. The entire loot I've got so far is on the screen right now. Wow, we won both the Rune Dragon Challenge, getting the Dragon Limbs very early, and we got the Granite Longsword halfway on the drop rate. So we have been lucky this video, but I guess we have some clue scrolls to open. Alright, so we have two of them. Let's go ahead and open these Elite Caskets right away. What are we going to get? The first one is 91k, and the second one is... Oh, a Mimic! Nice! That was a while ago. Overall, I've now killed four Mimics. You can see that in the chat right there. I actually just didn't want to re-gear, so kind of a slow kill with Justy, but uh, let's go ahead and open, see what we're going to be getting. Any third age? I think it's 1 in 200. Oh, that is yeah, not very good. What is going on, guys? Welcome to episode number 20 of the On Drop Rate series. This is a special one. Every 10 episodes, I have decided to go for a pet hunt. And the one I'm going for is Scorpia's Offspring, meaning we're going to be killing Scorpia yet again, a wilderness video. But it's going to be fine. And this time, I am actually bringing anti PKing gear as well. A decent amount of risk, not too much, with the Ballista and the Black Dragonhide. And then outside of that, I'm just using Monk Robes with basically a decent magic bonus. And I'm also bringing a cheeky DDS to maybe get some kills that way. I know this area is multi, so I can get jumped by a team and just instantly die. But at most, I am risking how much? Like, with item protect, I think it's around 250k. Oh, it's 400k, so it's a bit more risky, but most of it is in supplies, so not too bad. Now, when it comes to my collection log and how many kills I've actually done already on this boss, I've done 50 and I've gained none of the collection log items, so hopefully in this video we can actually complete the entire log. That would be very nice, and uh, that means we're going to be ending on a maximum of 2,066 kills. So let's get into it. How do you actually kill Scorpia? Well, you start by attacking Scorpia just normally and then barrage the boss so it cannot attack you because the boss is freezeable and that is why you want to bring barrage. I think you can do it with Ice Burst as well, I'm pretty sure, but uh, barrage is just very convenient and nice. After that, you get the boss to around 100 HP. I think the actual attack that you do when it has reached 100 HP or less will spawn these guardians which spam heal the boss uh, you can't really out damage them unless maybe you have absolute max mage which I do not have and after that you want to barrage them run away you can see I hit one of them there but uh, you can sometimes get them stacked up and actually get both of them in one freeze and when they're both frozen you can run away with the boss freeze the boss again and kill it because after a certain amount of time that the minions has not healed the boss, they will despawn. And they will only really spawn one time, I'm pretty sure. But uh, overall, it is a very easy boss. And what is the first drop going to be? Have to turn off my auto-retaliate. 
that is a task as well, but uh, 800 GP. Yeah, this boss is absolutely terrible profit, but it spawns very quickly again, so it's not going to be a lot of waiting time at least. All right, so I'm running pretty low on supplies, and I think I'm going to bank after this kill right here. I did put a timer on when I started the trip, and I wanted to see how many kills I can get every hour, and I think it's pretty clear. If I go over here, I have got 28 kills and it's been 28 almost exactly minutes so that is one kill per minute and I do of course have to include banking and so I would say it's probably like 50 kills an hour which means this entire grind if we go to 2016 KC that is like 40 hours of killing Scorpia and that of course does not include the PKers that might attack me. Now when it comes to actual loot from this trip, this one was 200k, and I would assume that in supplies I probably used like 150k to 200k, so I'm probably just going to break even here. So this is the first time I actually got attacked by a PKer, and the rest of the PK clips will be live commentary, but just the first time I do want to actually talk about a couple of things. The people that actually come here in general does not have that good gear. They have like this guy pretty much. They have the Ballista, like an AGS or DDS, and then they have Mystic gear. And Mystic Gear has no defensive bonuses, so there is actually a decent chance of me getting some massive hits in on these people and actually specking them out. But I am a terrible PKer, as you could see right there, and the Monk Robes are not helping either. They have no defense bonus, so I got absolutely destroyed there. But hopefully in this uh, video we can overall get a kill. I actually thought that I would be protecting the Immune Magic Cape, but because you are above 20 Wilderness, you actually lose it, but it's not that bad to get back. Well, it is kind of bad, but I will show you guys how you get it. But uh, also, also the Book of Darkness, I can talk to this guy right here, and I have it completed, so I can just take as many as I want, so that is a very easy one. Actually, can I get take more of them? I can, very nice. I'll just get a bunch of them right away. I actually kind of realized I have to swap through the normal spellbook to be able to reclaim my imbued cape. So what I'm going to do for this video is I'm just going to get a bunch of the normal ones and use those as well. They are good enough anyways for this. It's uh, I'm losing 2% magic strength, but I don't think it's going to matter too much. Hey, oh my god. Odium Shard 3, which is like 350k, and a hard clue scroll. That's actually the first unique... And I think the first hard to scroll as well for the grind, so that is very nice. Oh, shit. Look again, he has mystics like the other guy does. Maybe I can get a freeze. I actually got a freeze, 31. Maybe I should... Uh, do I attack with... I can't attack with Trident even, so I guess I have to barrage him. Oh, Scorpio is attacking! Get him! Scorpio, I believe in you! Uh, he's actually not really hitting me or anything. And there's another guy with Ballista. I guess maybe I should run at this point. I still have a good amount of food. But I I mean, look at him. Like, he has Mystics. DDS him. Come on, get him. He's not, he's not praying anything? Actually, my DDS him? Come on. Give me like a 30-30. I am unlucky, man. That could have been crazy. I could have actually killed them there. I feel like I could have killed them, but I think it's better if I just run now. At this point, I'm actually getting a gap. I think he actually thought I would go in again. My Discord mod Lucid Loud actually said I could kill her and she has a care package for me with the stuff that I can extend the trip. Let's see. Oh, no prayer potions, but uh, still a lot of food. Oh my god, I have my looting bag open. Oh my god. I just wasted like a lot of food there. Unfortunate, but we still have full inventory, so I guess it doesn't matter too much. But uh, honestly, I think prayer potions would have been better, but food is still fine. If I get PK'd, it's nice. Bro, what is this? I never comment on people's gear, but this is an absolute monster. Look at him. He's punching it as well. He had a weapon. Please don't. Wait, does he think I'm gonna PK him? No worries, dude. I'm not gonna PK you. What? <laughs> I could never PK him anyways. He's the most tanky person I've ever seen. I do want to say, this is how I feel about it. Look at this guy, for example. He's after me right now. He has fair gear that I could fight. And even if I do... Oh my god, that's a big one. 44? Holy... I could actually kill this guy. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, if I fight full on ancestral people, that's not fun. But if I do find people like this that attack me, I'm just going to probably death fight them. Because uh, I don't really care if I die. It's like 350k that I lose, plus the loot that I got. But all the loot is like 200k from an entire trip. So it's not really that good. And I could actually kill this guy right now. 
Ooh, that was very close. I actually think it's gonna log out. We've been fighting for a while. I had a decent amount of food left. Yeah, he's gone. That was a good fight though. After this kill right here, we actually hit the 500 kill mark, which is one fourth of the way. So we still have a lot to do, but uh, all the loot is on the screen right now for the 500 kills. You can see that it does miss some of them. And I don't think that is a tracking error in terms of me like teleporting away someone else getting the kill. You can actually get blank drops from Scorpia, meaning you just don't get anything as a drop. And I think in that case, it doesn't really count it as a kill. So I've got 13 blank drops, but every actual item that I got as a drop will be counted in. So yeah, if you look at the chat, you can see I got nothing that kill and I did check the tracker and nothing happened. So at the end of the grind, we know how many nothing drops I got at least. The story of Bronze Duriel did not end there. It's been 15 minutes and he found me again. We fought for a while. It was a good fight, but ultimately I think he has more food than me. And I, yeah, I'm getting absolutely slapped. So I'm about to die here. I did not get the freeze. Come on, get the freeze. Can I? Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, that's all good. Good fight. Oh yeah, it's one of those... It, it is one of those. They won in 2048 drop Dragonstone, which is almost exactly the same drop rate as the pet, but that Dragonstone I cannot actually use as a pet, unfortunately. Excuse me, what is the value of that item? Malediction Shard 3, 65k? I mean, it's a collection log item. It's the first one, of course, because I got the pop-up, but... Uh, 65k oh yeah yeah that's better 337k odium shard the second odium shard we're like 700 kills in so i should have got one and a half odiums i guess another one of those did that actually drop in price 61.5k is that the same as the last time or even worse it's kind of funny to say it, but that was probably the best trip money-wise I've ever had. 631k. Compared to most bosses, that would have been terrible, but for this boss, it's not that bad. Now, of course, this area is multi, and sometimes this happens. Even though they are all in Mystics, as I've said. I mean, look at this. How am I supposed to survive four people attacking me? I'm, I'm just going to die when this happens. It, it just is what it is. But at least, as I said, I don't really lose a lot. A third one. Very nice. Odium Shard 3. Definitely wants more of them than the Malediction ones. Oh my god. A fourth one? I will actually add all the loot I've collected so far on the screen. And the most valuable item overall I've got from this boss is actually Odium Shards. I've got four of them so far. I've got three Malediction. I did actually want to record on the halfway point, but I kind of missed it. We're like 50 kills over the halfway point now. We have done 1,085 on the counter, minus 50, of course, like 1,035. But we have not got the pet yet. And I did get another Malediction Shard, but I did not record that. I'm probably not going to show any more shards from now on because there's a lot of them. But at the end loot, you will see everything that I got. And let's hopefully see a pet in that as well. Okay, I have to show this, even though I said no more shard drops. Odium shard 3, and then two kills later, Malediction shard 3. Imagine if I was an Iron Man, and that was my first three kills. I would have been done with the boss. Yo, I was going to bank, and this guy just actually saw me on the way there. I don't think I'm going to die, though, because realistically, I really only need to barrage him one time, and then I can walk under him and log out. Now that he TB'd me, it's like the only strategy. And of course, I'm splashing every single thing. Dude, hopefully I don't get specked out here. Oh my god, okay. Melee prayer, just one freeze. Come on. One single freeze, man. That's all I need. There we go. All right. Please do not freeze me. Nice. I should be fine. So I was just running to the bank, ending the trip, and this guy just actually TB'd me. There we go. So I pretty much run out of Trident of the Swamp charges. I have 872 left. And I actually started with like 19k, so nearly maxed out. And if I buy back 20,000 charges... It's going to be like 10 million GP. And overall, from all the loot that I've collected so far from Scorpia, it's like 15 million at this point. So just in the charges of the Trident, remove like 66% of the profits. And you, of course, the restores are even more expensive. Oh, 
Oh my god, no way. I actually got it. Scorpius Offspring. We were actually quite far into the grind. 1,516 kill count. So we were lucky on the pet. That is so nice to see. My god, this grind has been something. I've done 5,000 Listen Men Shamans, 1,000 Vorkath, and this was the worst one. It, I really didn't think it would be. But it really is. There's PKers and just overall the most boring boss in the whole game. It's just freeze, runaway attack. But we actually managed to get the pet. That is so nice. And a very nice thing about getting a pet now is that you do not have to insure it anymore. Before you had to pay like 500k to insure it. And if you did actually die before insuring it, you would lose the pet forever. But that is not the case now. It is already actually insured. And if you die with it now, you have to pay 1 million to get it back. And uh, that is pretty much all there is to it. Just look at this pet though. This is such a good looking pet. I love the green thing on the tail. And... Uh, yeah, just really happy about getting it. But let's complete the last hard clue scroll and then open the ones I got. I don't quite remember if it was my last on drop rate video or if it was the one before that, but I did actually save a master clue scroll and I was going to do it, but uh, I realized the like 88 smithing requirement is quite long to do and I don't want to do that right now. So just for the chance of actually getting a master from these hard caskets that I collected on this grind, I'm going to drop it. I was pretty early into it anyway, so it's all good, but uh, let's now open the 13 hard clue scrolls that I get to keep everything from in this video which is very nice because of course we got the pet 244 hard clue scrolls overall completed and 72 out of 134 collection logs let's see if we can get any if i get any collection log slots that is a win for me so let's go ahead and open all of these first one out very good and uh, no master just yet i'm probably just going to go through them pretty quickly because usually hard clue scrolls are not super interesting Ooh, that's worth quite a lot probably. Yeah, 500k. Pretty good. And the nice loot beam in the background. Two more to go. Ooh, that's worth a lot. And it is a collection log item. 722k. And the last one. Can we go out with a bang as well? 104k. Ooh, no collection log on those two? Interesting. But uh, probably made like a couple of mil from those. I mean, we didn't get another master, so I might as well pick it up until the future, but I'm probably just going to drop it every time I open clue scrolls, and uh, if I do get a master, I will probably just keep this on the ground, otherwise I can keep it uh, in the bank. So on the screen right now, I have everything that I collected over this grind. I got 2.7 million from the 13 clue scrolls, which is not bad at all for hard clue scrolls. Most of that obviously carried by the Bandos Dehyde Boots and the Purple Sweets. And then for actual Scorpia loot, we got 16.8 million, which is very bad. I mean, if you're ever going to do this boss, you're going to be losing money, even if you do it in a very cheap way. I don't really think there is a way to make money here. Even if I would use like a bind without the ancient spell book and i would go for like fire surge or anything like that i feel like i would still lose money in all the uh, restores that you use all the runes and everything so yeah this is not a boss you want to make money at in the last episode of on drop rate we went to the wilderness and fought scorpia and actually managed to get the pet in 1516 overall kc but in this one, we're not going to go to the wilderness again. We're going to be in the Tsar Caves, and the item we're going to go for is the Obsidian Helmet, which is a 1 in 2,000 drop rate. Now, the monsters we're going to have to be killing is the Melee Tsar. They are called Tsar Ket. Now, there's two different versions of them, a level 149 and a 221. We have to be killing the 221 and up to 2,000 of them because they are the only ones that drop the Obsidian items. My collection log for Sark Creatures is also completely empty, so seeing any drop is going to be a collection log pop-up, which is very nice for the dopamine. If you actually want to do this yourself though, you need a fire cape, unfortunately, because you need to enter this area right here. You can see that the ones outside are only the 149, and when I go in here, you can see that there's still a lot of the 149s, but these are the big ones, the 221, and those are the ones that actually drop the obsidian items. The overall drop table of these creatures is pretty dull. You only really get Tuckle or you get gems like these, the uncut diamond. Now, if you do have a gem bag, bringing that is really good. Unfortunately, I am a slacker and I have max combat and everything, but I do not have a gem bag. So I will have to just pick them up like this and bank them over time.
Oh, nice. First Onyx Ball Tips, three of them as well, 24k. They are fairly common from these, it's like 1 in 50, and those are probably going to be the most of the money except the rares. Oh my god, the best item to get, 1 million worth obsidian plate body, very early into the grind as well, I'm like 200 kills in, so only 10% of the drop rate of actually getting that item. And we have not won the challenge yet, of course, the helmet is what I wanted, but that is a lot of money. Yo, shield drop, Sox, Ket, Xil, I probably pronounced that terribly, but uh, another collection log item, and that only took me like 50 kills or something since the Obsidian play body, so we are getting pretty lucky here, actually. Obsidian Cape, 600, oh my god, why is that worth so much? 678k, another collection log item, I'm like 350 kills in, so we're actually getting spooned here. Oh, that's nice. Another obsidian cape. There's 700k almost each, and it's good money, but I would like to get the obi mall at this point just for the collection log, but yeah, 650k is definitely not bad money. Might as well update you guys on the collection log. Of course, you've seen all the drops anyways, but just seeing all the collection log slots being filled in is pretty nice. Of course, we still need the mall and any of the obsidian items except the plate body. I actually just noticed this. Look at this. These things on the wall, you cannot deny it looks like a face, right? And then like in the middle where the Tsar is, it's kind of like its brain or something. It looks pretty cool and funky as well. Okay, I can't unsee it now. They're <laughs> the big one as well. They're all over the place. During this whole grind, I'm just going to be looking at it and thinking about it. Oh no. Hey, another obsidian shield. 400k. I mean, it's really nice to see these drops. Even if I already have the items, they're worth quite a decent amount and the beams always give that nice dopamine. This guy from my clan has been here for a while now. I think he's doing Slayer or something, but that whip override is so nice. I gotta go and get one myself. Only 1 million GP for this. 996k to be exact, and uh, you just basically use this on the whip. Shattered Relics Variety Kit or something like that, and there we go. Matches really well with my gloves as well. They have some blue in them. In the hopes of not sounding too much like DJ Khaled, another one, really, a third Obsidian Cape. I mean, they are really worth quite a bit, so I'm not complaining. Pretty good. Hey, that is the one. Obsidian helmet. Actually worth pretty much the same as an obsidian cape. That is the item though. That's uh, like how many kills were we in? Let's uh, have a look at the loot. The overall KC that we ended at is 630 and we made 5.1 million GP. Actually not that bad. I mean it looks pretty good as well. Unfortunately I did not get all the items these monsters could drop but we are only really missing the legs and we're missing the obi mall. but everything else I got and I'm really happy with the overall loot. I got very lucky in like every single regard on this grind. Now because I got really lucky on the last grind we're going to be doing another one straight away and the item we're gonna go for now is a very obscure free to play item the shaman mask. It's a 1 in 1200 drop rate and it is actually a collection log item as well. So if I do get it, it's going to be a pop-up, which is very nice. And it's dropped by these creatures, the Ogres Warriors and the Ogres Shamans. They both drop it. So I will have to tally up the kills together and make sure together they do not exceed 1,200 kills. So let's get into it. This area is actually a single way combat area. So bringing the cannon is worth it in my opinion, but not super good because it can't cleave multiple of them down at the same time. But it still does some extra damage and on top of that eventually they will un you and you will have to manually attack them. At that point the cannon is really good, it will tag them for you and you can kind of afk even more. Now another thing I want to mention is that these are warriors and shamans, meaning the warriors use melee and the shamans use magic. So the one I'm attacking right now you can see it's shooting magic out and I've not decided 100% yet if I should protect from melee the entire time or magic. I feel like I don't want to have to swap between them all the time. Too click intensive for me and to think about 
what I'm attacking at that time because they look very similar. I could just miss what I'm actually attacking sometimes. But uh, I'm going to try melee. If I take too much damage, I'll go with magic. This might seem kind of insignificant, but these guys actually now and then drop one to three salmons. And they don't heal a lot, but you don't really take that much damage here. And if I would bring mostly prayer potions and then I protect from magic, I kind of realize that's the best one. Because I can kill the melee guys before they even get to me and actually get any melee hits in. So if I protect from magic, I eat the salmons that it drops, I can actually stay here for probably a forever. Whoa. Wait, these guys drop rune med helmets? What other mobs in free-to-play drops rune items? Isn't it only like Bryophyta and Obor? That's pretty nuts, actually. Could be good for free-to-play. You cannot make this up, are you? <laughs> are you kidding me, man? What is this luck? Uh, there we go. Shaman mask done. Uh, the loot is on the screen right now. Yes, uh, I killed 22 of each, 44 overall shamans, and we are done. A 1 in 1200 got in 44 kills, and let's have a look at it. Oh my god, that's a free-to-play Chad item, look at that, that actually looks really good. Kind of looks like my armadillo helmet, but if you split the beak up in two, I kind of like it actually. If you follow my lead and do an obsidian grind and you also do the shaman grind, you can also look like this absolute unit. Give or take some items, you might get lucky on some items and unlucky on another one, but this could be you. What is going on guys, hope you're all having a great day and welcome to another episode of the Undrop Raid series. This one is a bit special, we're going to be doing the first Slayer boss of the series and the one I've decided to go with is the Alchemical Hydra. This boss makes a lot of money the average kill is worth 187,000, according to the rune wiki and we're going to be killing 513 of them so that is a lot of potential money and we're going to go for the hydra's tail as the item now you do need to be on a slayer task to kill this so i will have to do a bunch of slayer and try to get the tasks i will be using bracelets of slaughter as well which can extend the task by quite a bit so we should be fine on that. Probably it's going to be like three overall Slayer tasks. That did not take long at all. That is the first Slayer task of Hydras. 149 of them. And as I said, with Bracelets of Slaughter, they do extend the task by quite a bit. So that's probably going to be like 180 or something. Now for this video, I am going to get a Twisted Bow lender to me by Max Nick himself, just like in the Giant Mole video. Just to speed up the grind slightly, I don't have 1.1 billion and I really appreciate Max Nick for letting me borrow this item. All in all, this is the gear I'm going to be using for this boss. You might be wondering, why am I using Ring of the Gods, Samurai Bracers and Crystal Armor instead of Armadillo and like max range and everything? It's because of Prayer Bonus. You basically take zero damage from this boss ever if you just protect the correct prayer. So I'm going with a full prayer outfit, but still good at range damage to be there as long as possible. And my inventory is just full with prayer potion and some sharks if I do mess up some prayer flicks. The last thing we actually have to show off before we go into the boss is the collection log. I've got 873 kill counts, meaning that if we do not get the Hydro's tail within the 513 KC, I will end at 1386 KC. And I think in that time, we have a decent chance of actually getting these collection log items I'm missing. The Hydro's Claw is 1 in 1000, the Jar of Chemicals 1 in 2000, and the Hydro's Heart 1 in 181. So we do have a decent chance of getting at least one of them. Okay, the first trip was really clunky because I took a lot of damage I should not have taken and I will have longer trips in the future. But just to show you guys how much money you actually make from this boss, look at the loot on the screen right now. 11 kills, 1.4 million GP. That, that's a lot of money for just common drops, nothing rare in that at all. Oh my god! Oh my god, I actually got the collection log item, the Hydra's Heart. That is the last item to make the Brimstone Ring. Uh, because I already had the two other ones, I'm not sure I'm going to divide the loot here, but I guess we'll figure that out. Oh, combat achievements. Alchemical Speed Chaser. New personal best, 141, just camping the Twisted Bow. This is a crazy good weapon on this boss, I have to say. 
Oh, that's the reset, by the way. That's the first item from the Brimstone Ring creation. And I think what I'll probably do is you need three pieces and the Brimstone Ring is worth three million. So each piece I get is going to be worth one million to the giveaway, potential giveaway. 422k in Onyx Bolts. I don't think it's that rare to get Onyx Bolts, but it is very good money. It's always nice to see it. What? You, this is 3.6 million. It used to be 5 million back in the days. That's the fifth Hydra's leather for my entire collection log in like 950kc. Those are, by the way, 1 in 512 drop rates. First Elite Clue Scroll. Very cool. Uh, I'm definitely going to do all of these. And at the end, I will see how many caskets we have. Probably not that many because it's kind of rare. This kill right here of the Alchemical Hydra is kill number 100 for the grind. And of course, we have not got the Hydra's tail just yet. But what is kill number 100 going to be? Just some coins and a black the eyed body. Probably one of the worst drops you can get. But here is the loot overall so far. 14.7 million. We are making absolute bank here. So I'm actually pretty much done with the task, but I just realized looking at my chat here, my personal best is now 1 minute and 22 seconds, and that is just camping the Twisted Bow. And if I go to bosses, I go to Alchemical Hydra, and I look at the Speed Runner task, it's actually 1 minute and 20 seconds. I was 2 seconds off it, literally just camping this setup, which is kind of nuts. Most likely the last kill of the entire task here, and we have actually been extending this task a ton with these bracelets there we go that is the task done and let's see what the last of the task is going to be some pretty normal loot but i'm going to put everything that i got during this task on the screen right now 193 kills that means we extended the task from 149 with 44 additional kills thanks to the bracelets of slaughter you actually have a 10% chance when wearing the Slayer Cape to get a back-to-back -back task, so this is a very small chance, but possible that we get Alchemical Hydra back-to-back. -back. Let's roll the dice and see what happens, and we do not get lucky, but that is a very fast one. Yo, there it is, 146 Hydras, just barely on the last point. I think I have two more skips to go, but yeah, very nice to get another task. Another ring piece, Hydra's Fang. By the way, the ring has doubled in price due to raise 3, so each one of these pieces are actually 2 million now instead of 1. Oh ho ho! 3.4 million. Did I just turn into like Santa or something getting that drop? Ah, there's a second leather anyway, it's very nice. Yo, that is actually the first hard clue scroll of the grind. They're actually 1 in 100 and we're like 350 kills in, so surprising I haven't got more of them. By the way, the rest of these kills probably will be with Blowpipe. I had to give back the Twisted Bow. Most likely the last kill of this task. Of course, the bracelet could save the kill, but let's see what it is going to be. One more hit, and there it is. It was the last kill. So we are currently on 378 kill count. We do not have the Hydra's tail yet, so we still have to do more. And the next task, 100%, is going to be the last one. So let's see if we can get lucky and get a back-to-back -back with the Slayer Cape. Come on, Jagex. Do this thing for me. Please give me the back-to-back -back task. Konar, be kind to me. No. Barrows Brothers. I guess I'll just do the minimum amount. A bit of a small advice I can give you guys if you are hunting for a specific task and want your other tasks to go a bit faster, make sure you buy the Expeditious Bracelet. They have a 25% chance to make one kill count count as two. So, for an example, if you kill four enemies, it should count as overall five. Hey, there we go. 126 Hydras that did not take that long and that will be guaranteed the last task I need. Slightly missed it, I guess, by a couple of kills, but we are roughly 100 kills left to go. You can see on the counter it says 96 Hydros left to go over my inventory, and that is now exactly how many we need. I've been using the Bracelets of Slaughter, of course, to get it exactly so I end when my task is over, so that is perfect. But we have still not got the Hydros tail, so we do have a decent chance of getting it, but it's not looking great. 
another Hydra's heart. Is that the second Hydra's heart? Have we actually got four pieces in total now, I think? That's pretty good because the ring is really up in price. Just a small thing I wanted to share at this point, we just hit over 60 million worth of loot and that is actually lower than it will end up being because that is without the clue scroll openings and also the ring pieces which currently I think are going for like 1.7 million each or something and we got an entire brimstone ring completed so far so that is going to be some extra profit on top of it and keep in mind I haven't really been lucky like crazy lucky or anything I haven't got the Hydro's Claw which would be 40 million so if we do get that we can actually still make the 100 million mark but at this point with only 44 kills left it's not looking like it oh we got an elite cruise girl literally on the next kill beautiful no shot dude the dragon knives Ah, uh, they're so rare. It's 1 in 2001, I think, to get the Dragon Knives, and they're not worth a lot. I mean, 1.3 million is okay, but that's pretty much the same drop rate as the Jar, which I still need for the Collection Log, and the Claw is 1 in 1k. We are really getting down to the wire here. This is going to be KC number 500. You can see I have 13 KC left on the task, and no Hydra's Tail yet. Can we get it here, though? No, we cannot. I've got a lot of Dragon Med Helms on this grind, so... It's going to be some fashionscape, but uh, yeah, nothing yet. We have made a good amount of money on this task though, and I will show everything in the end. And here we go. We are finally coming down to the last kill if my bow didn't can hit. And by the way, the Slayer counter on the top right is how much Slayer experience I got from all the tasks and also the 513 Hydra that I had to do to complete this video. Over 1 million Slayer experience. It took quite some time and we did not get the Hydra's tail. And all the final loot is on the screen right now. 65.4 million GP from this grind. And if I would have got a Hydra's Claw, which I should not have got in 500 KC, but if I was lucky, that could have been over 100 million. But still a lot of profit. Now, even though hard clue scrolls were quite a lot more common than elite ones, we only got two of them and we also got two elites, but let's get them open and see what we get from these. Let's start off with the hard ones. First one is going to be very good, 536k Gothic's Dehyde Boots, which is a collection of items as well. So let's go for the second one, 39k, not as good, but a collection of item, Bandos Kite Shield. Let's get over to the elites. These are notoriously disappointing, but maybe we can get lucky and get a mimic. That would be really nice. The first one is 111k, and the last one is, yeah, 174k. Nothing too interesting, but all of the ones that all the loot that I got from the clue scrolls is going to go directly to the giveaway. What is going on guys? Welcome to another episode of the Undrop Rate series. This beginning of the video will be a bit different than the other ones because I'm actually going to start off by doing a couple of requirements that will help me on the grind that I'm going to be taking on. I'm going to be going for the Enhanced Crystal Teleport Seed from the Elves and I'm going to be pickpocketing them with 85 Thieving. But for that, I actually want to get a spell from the Archaeos Spellbook which is called Shadow Veil. This one actually reduces the chance of getting stunned when pickpocketing, I believe by 15%, and for that I need a Kingdom Divided completed. I still have quite some things to do for it, but let's get into it. The first thing I have to do is get 100 favor in all the houses, so I'm going to be getting Hosidius right here, have all the buckets, and I already had quite a lot of them done, and 75 on Hosidius, so already pretty close, so let's go and hand it in, 100% done, time for Piscarelius. After that, we completed the Queen of Thieves quest to get the Piscoralius Favor Certificate. This gives 10%, so we actually end up at 30%. And now I can use the method to get all the way to 100%, the Sandworms. Maybe not the most exciting content in the game, but it is a very fast grind. You basically just dig up the Sandworms, get them in the buckets, hand them in, and you get Favor. Let's have a quick look. I have 30% favor right now and I have a full inventory of these. Use them on Tynan and now after that we have 38 so it should not take that long. I think last inventory here we go this should be a 100 completion and now we just have a couple of quests to complete before I can actually do the big one a kingdom divided. Completing the Hosidius quest, Depths of Despair, 4k coins, 1,500 agility experience, and a memoir page, and I don't really need the certificate because I have 100%. 
Another quest completed, the Ascent of Arceus. And here we have the Tale of the Righteous completed. We now only need to do two more quests, I believe. The Architectural Alliance and then the Kingdom Divided itself. Because the Architectural Alliance is a mini quest, you do not get a pop-up for it after completing it. But a really good thing of completing this quest is you get this teleport right here. You can actually teleport to the Xerix Heart. So now you don't have to use the current teleport to get to this area right here. Everything ready in my inventory for the kingdom divided, so let's go ahead and complete the quest. There is a couple of boss fights in this quest, but none of them are really that difficult. So during this quest, there are two main bosses, the first one being the demon judge of Yama. This one protects from magic and ranged all the time, so you do have to kill it with melee. It teleports you in the back of the room and you have to run to the boss and avoid the fire waves. If you do not avoid them, you will take some damage. It's not probably going to kill you unless you're a bit lower level. But in general, it's a pretty easy boss and depending on what HP it has, there for example it teleports you back in the room and you have to run back to the boss. And I think here I do avoid the fire so you can see what it looks like when you do not take any damage. But I kind of just brute forced it and there we go, that is the first boss down for the quest. And the final bigger boss of this quest, I guess, is called, I think, Samphir. And this is a ghost, and the mechanics I'm not 100% sure of, but it's also a pretty easy boss. It has these two hands, it protects from magic, so you do have to melee or range it. Also, I think the pools on the ground, you do take damage if you walk into them. Otherwise, you can pretty much just protect from magic, hit the boss, and there are two main mechanics that this boss actually does. When the boss says this, your fate is in my hands, it spawns two hand minions. They have very low HP, so you can literally just one-shot them most of the time. And that is really all you have to do with that mechanic. Your death is at hand is the second mechanic, which is a bit more dangerous. It will spam spawn hands that will land on your face. So you just want to walk all the time basically during this mechanic until it's over. And that is the end of the fight, after that it gets full HP and you basically just get one shot and there's a cinematic but you actually defeated the boss. But finally, here we go, after those two bosses we are now done with the Kingdom Divided, which of course is a very useful quest just in general. The Archaeus spellbook now gets a bunch of new spells like Thralls and of course the Shadow Veil which I've been looking forward to, so let's go have a look at it. And here it is, the Shadow Veil spell requires Earth, Fire and Cosmic Runes, it lasts for 1 minute and also you have a 30 second timer before you can click it again. So you can refresh it essentially every 30 seconds but only need to refresh it every minute. Now I'm already in this room right here and I would advise you guys if you use Rune Light to swap the left click option to pickpocket otherwise you have to right click every time. Do that and now I can just spam it. Now on top of the Shadow Veil spell I do have a dodgy necklace as well which also reduces the chance of taking damage and getting stunned by 25% and on top of all of this I also have the Ardoin Hard Diary which gives a 10% higher chance of pickpocketing successfully so this should not be that hard to do 1024 pickpockets. Well, I've done like 25 attempts and of course now because I start recording it, I get really lucky. But uh, I've done like 25 attempts and I think in those 25 attempts I got hit like 20 times. So it's not looking like this is going to be an easy grind after all. But at least good thing I got the Shadow Veil because without that I can't even imagine how bad it would be. Oh, two crystal shards. That's actually 1 in 35 to get crystal shards from this, but of course the rogue's outfit doubles it. So this could be an insane crystal shard method. It is a good thing that the enhanced crystal teleport seeds are worth quite a lot and they're not very rare as well. Because from 100 pickpockets, you can see the loot on the screen right now that we just hit. It's 33k plus the coin pouches, which I would guess is now around 60k overall loot. But hopefully we get lucky during this video and get that double enhanced crystal teleport seed. So I actually wanted to look up what the chances was of successfully pickpocketing an elf at the different levels. And as I am 85, which is just the level to do it, I was wondering if it is a massive difference compared to 99. And there is a difference for sure, but you can see here on the screen that it's at 33.94% at level 85 and 392 at level 99, which is not a massive difference. But there is one thing that actually does change this quite a bit, and that is the thieving cape. I do not have that, and it gives a 10% bonus on top of the 39.2% you would get and the hard Ardoin diary does the same thing so you can get at 99 a maximum of 47.4% chance but at my level and my boosts I have a 37.3% 
And how percentages work, that is an overall of roughly 20% difference in success rate. So we just hit the halfway point, 512 pickpockets, and I do have to say, it is pretty slow for my level. If I was 99 with the thieving cape, all the bonuses I could have, I could probably get this roughly in an hour, but it has been two hours for me now, so I'm getting about half of the maximum amount of efficiency you can get. But that is okay, I have still not got the enhanced teleport seed, but there is still a decent amount of pickpockets left to do. Yo, what? <laughs> did you guys see that? She just walked through the wall. How did that happen? I mean, I'm not complaining now. She's stuck again. What the? <gasps> oh, I got it. Oh my god, I actually got it. I was getting kind of close to the end. The loot is on the screen right now. 725 pickpockets and we actually finally got it. Look at that, four and a half million GP from one of them, and of course because of the rogue's outfit, that is a nine million worth pickpocket, and of course basically all the money you get is actually from this enhanced crystal teleport seeds, but uh, we also got 256,000 thieving experience, so overall super successful. I was actually kind of curious how much money you can make if you go all the way from 85 to 99 thieving on doing only the elves, and I counted that if you're on drop rates, you should be making 257 million GP at the current prices of the Enhanced Crystal Teleport Seeds if you go all the way from 85 to 99 thieving. That is a lot of money. Now, another thing you can also do with these Enhanced Crystal Teleport Seeds is you can actually talk to Amrod, which is located right here in Priftinus, and you can turn them into Crystal Shards, which is really good, and they're untradeable as well. So if we talk to him, trade, I'm going to hand in one of these, and you can see I have 44 shards now, hand in one of them, Oh, two of them. So, okay, I won't do two of them at the same time, but you can see it's 150 crystal shards for each one of them, which is actually quite a lot. You only need 2,000 of them to corrupt your bow for Adenan, which is quite a grind usually in the corrupted gauntlet and stuff like that. So if you actually just want crystal shards, I would say this is probably the best way of doing it. I'm going to be speculating a bit, but I do think it's a pretty good educated guess I'm going to be doing. So if you look on the screen right now, this is the graph for the Enhanced Crystal Teleport Seed the past month. And you can see how much it's gone up the past week. I think this is because of Raids 3, and a lot of people are buying these seeds to actually make them into Crystal Shards for the Bow of Ferdinand. It's really good in there. And you can see right now it says 4.5 million, but it also says actively traded price 4.6 million. So I'm going to be putting them in for the medium price. And just because of that they're not selling but i'm going to keep them in here for a bit see if they sell and honestly i think they will because there's so many people well there you go they sold that did not take long at all so yeah if you're going to be doing this this is a great time to be doing it what is going on guys welcome to another episode of the on drop rate series if you have been watching my videos for a bit i did post a video a couple of weeks ago i think of me getting 77 hunter for a specific grind and it is time to live up to that promise we're going to be doing crystal implings and we're going to be catching 128 of them in hopes of getting the 11 signet so let's get into it now, to be able to actually catch the crystal implings, you need an impling jar, so I'm buying 128 of them, as well as a butterfly net. And because I'm only 77 hunter, I will need to boost with a hunter potion to 80 every time, but that is very simple. Just when I see the impling I'm about to catch it, I will just drink one of the doses. On top of all of this, you of course need the Song of the Elves to be able to access Prifdinas, the Elf City, to be able to actually catch the crystal implings, because this is the only area in the entire game they are located at. And what location I use in the entire city is right here at this marker. What I essentially do is I just zoom out as much as possible. And then I just world hop until I see a crystal impling. And usually it does not take that long. And there we go. That did not take that long. Probably like six world hops. And I have them marked with red so I can even see them on the minimap. You can see it right there on the top. I drink a potion and I try to catch it. And there we go. That's how I'm going to be doing it for all the 128. Well, one of the downsides of doing this world hopping spam method, you do get locked out sometimes and you have to wait for a while, but uh, hopefully it's not that long. So I'm going to have to be honest, I'm currently at 44 crystal implings and I got all of them except one, just standing still world hopping. But it did get kind of boring and sometimes I had to hop like 35 to 50 worlds to even find one of them. 
So what I've decided to do is to just run around one time in the city with stamina pots and hunter potions. If I do not see an imp, I will world hop at that point. Also, as I said before, and you saw it, you do get locked out now and then if you spam hop all the time. So this should probably fix that as well. So we are now currently at 119 implings, so we are very close to done, only need 9 more implings, and I think we have a bit of an advantage on getting the last ones, because the servers have been down, and they just came up, so I'm hoping that there's going to be more implings than usual, none of them have been caught, I don't really hunt implings that much, I'm not sure if that's exactly how it works, but uh, regardless, 9 more should not take that long to complete. Oh my god, yes, that is the last one. It actually was really fast, the first ones, but then this specific one, the last one, oh my god, it took so long to get for some reason. Probably like 15 minutes of just constantly world hopping. But there we go, that is all the implings of 128. I'm going to go to another area than Prifdina's because this area has kind of a bad FPS. So uh, we are going to be opening all of these in just a second. I basically never used the Narda bank, so might as well do it this time, and before we get started with the opening, I'm not really sure how many I can bring in every inventory, I probably can bring more than 10, because most items are stackable that you get from these. Second thing is that there is a 1 in 50 chance to get an elite clue scroll, so over the course of opening 128 of these, I should get at least 2 of them, and hopefully even 3 of them. I would also like to say that even if I were to get the ring kind of early on or even overall in this opening, I'm still going to be opening all of the implings. I do want to see what kind of loot I can get. Maybe even I can get two Elven Signets. Guess we'll have to see. Also, the item is on the collection log. If we go down here on the miscellaneous tab on other, you can see it right there. So getting this would be very nice for the log. I probably spent like seven to eight hours, something like that, world hopping. So it's not really the most fun activity to, to do in the game. So it would be kind of nice to have it done. But uh, let's get on with the opening. Let's start with these 10. First loot. Are you actually... <laughs> what? The first one we're done. Okay, I'm... I've never seen that. That is insane. By the way, for a fact, I opened, I think, like, 80 of them on my group Iron Man. Got absolutely nothing. How did this just happen? Well, okay, let's see. Let's go for another no, another one. Dude, I'm actually speechless. I don't even know. The likelihood of us actually getting two of them now is actually good. Let's see how much this is worth. Oh my god! I got two of them in the same inventory. There is no way. How much is this inventory worth? Dude, this is... 3.8 million GP from the first... Dude, this... <laughs> uh, there's no words for this. Well, where do you even continue from that? Uh, I guess we just keep going with the openings. Hopefully we can get some elite clue scrolls from this. Would be fun to do some. Also, we do have a lot of collection log slots we can actually get from the elite clue scrolls. But uh, the money that you get from these on even a main account is not that bad. I think the average value of one of these is like 68k, 70k, something like that. And I think 15 is a good amount to open every time so my inventory doesn't get flooded. But look at that, 627k from just 15 of them. Let's do a quick fire round, spam them and see what we get. Oh yeah, also crystal shards is really good and the first elite clue scroll. So let's actually take a break from opening, complete the elite clue scroll, open it and see what we get. But also I did get and I did mention the crystal shards. There is a 1 in, let's actually see, 1 in 18 to get 5 to 10 of them. So from this opening, I should get like 80 or something like that, which is not that bad. Not too much friction. That is the Elite Clue Scroll completed for the casket. I do just want to do a bit of a flex here. Look at that backpack. I also invested in the Osmontons Fang for the future TOAs. I've been doing a lot of them and enjoying them quite a bit. But anyways... Can we get as lucky on the Elite Casket as we do with the Imps? Let's have a look. And the... Oh! Master Clue Scroll! Not that bad. I guess I'll complete it as well. Hopefully I can. There's quite some steps that I cannot do, but the first one I can. Unfortunately, we cannot complete this one. I actually got pretty far into it as well. I did four steps, but uh, I do need 87 fishing for this step. And I'm only 77, so I guess it is time to drop this and get back to opening the crystal implings. 
All right, 88 crystal implings left to go. Let's do 15 more. Can we get another elite crew scroll or even another elephant signet? All of these seed drops are really good, by the way. I think most of them are worth quite a lot. Like these Raynor seeds is 250k. And the dragon dart tips doesn't look like a lot, but 60k, that's not that bad. Just going to go through these as quickly as I possibly can until we get an elite clue scroll or something else that's very interesting like a third element signet but it's not looking too good right now. That might have been so far maybe the worst inventory so far. Oh still 600k that's not bad at all. Because I'm kind of dumb sometimes, I did not actually record the past 25 openings, but you can see on the screen right now I've opened overall 91 implings and the loot is just 7 million exactly. And we have 36 left to go, but we have not got any more elite clue scrolls and no signet, so let's keep going. Maybe we can get a third signet on this inventory right here. Otherwise, I would say the money from this is decent. I would not say that it's like a good money making method because it does take like eight hours as i said if you try to collect these kind of efficiently like in a kind of try hard way it's not that good it's like one million hour and i got two rings i mean one million hour with two rings which is definitely not on the rate you should be getting one so you can expect probably like 800 900k an hour if you're hunting these for actual money but for an iron man i would say it's a decent way of getting crystal shards meanwhile you're getting the elephant signet overall you do get the seeds as well like the crystal acorns u seed rainar seeds all this good stuff you can see everything here get some decent alkyballs as well so for iron man i would say this is definitely a good grind to do for the account the elephant signet itself is a good item but let's go for the last six can we get another elite clue scroll or a third signet on these Onyx ball tips, power amulets, nothing, rune arrows, rune darts, and the last item is going to be onyx ball tips. So we've now opened all of them, and of course we did get two of the items, so we have the collection log filled in twice even. And let's have a look at the overall loot that we got from this. I'm going to just be doing a normal in-game price checker, and the price is 8.6 million. On real light it says 8.46, so kind of the same I guess, but maybe the rings are worth slightly more on the GE. And also we did get the Elite Clue Scroll, which was worth like 170k, something like that. Which was also pretty good. So we made a decent amount of money in this video. The most important thing, of course, is we did get the Elevent Signet on the first one, which was kind of crazy. But we also got 5 Crystal Acorns, 51 Crystal Shards. So if you're going to be doing this for an Iron Man, which I think most people will be doing it for an Iron Man or Collection Log, you can expect this loot right here. Now before we end the video, I do have a bit of an extra segment in this video that I want to put in because I thought this would be a very fun thing to try out. And it does have a challenge to it as well. And I'm going to be doing it with one of my Discord mods, one of my friends, Lucy Loud. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a PvP fight and we are only allowed to use these weapons right here. Wooden Spoon, Egg Whisk, Spork, Spatula, Frying Pan, Skewer... Rolling pin, kitchen knife, meat tenderizer, and the cleaver. Now, what I do think is so interesting about these weapons is that they all have widely different stats. For example, the egg whisk is terrible. Let's have a look at this. <laughs> look at the weapon itself. It just looks hilarious. It has four strength and like four, three, five in all the attack bonuses, even four minus in crush. Let's compare that to the kitchen knife, has 24 melee strength, 25 stab. And then go all the way up to the cleaver, which has 44 melee strength. I think all of these have around the same attack speed. But then we have the two-handed meat tenderizer. Look at this absolute unit. It has 53 crush and 48 strength bonus. So this is like a rune two-hand in a free-to-play finisher. You use this as their big hit to finish off the opponent. You can have the meat cleaver for the passive damage, maybe the rolling pin for more prayer points because we are allowed to pray in this fight. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this goes. Now you might be wondering, why is this in an on-drop rate video? Well, there is a nice forfeit to this challenge. The person that loses this PKing duel have to hunt 171 werewolves for the rune med helmet. This is of course just like any normal on drop rate challenge for me if I lose. If she loses, she will link me the loot, give me an update on everything, how it went. But also on top of that, we have to kill them with only using these weapons. 
No other weapons are allowed. So we have to kill the werewolves who are level 88 with only using these weapons. Now, on top of that, werewolves are extremely annoying, obnoxious to kill. Because without a wolf bane, they transform into the higher levels. And they also have a transform animation. So if I attack one right here, you can see what I mean. You can't do damage there. And now you can attack them again. So I have to kill 171 of these. Lucy has to kill 171 of these if we lose. All right, we're pretty much same stats, so this should be a fair duel. Let's actually count this down. Three, two, one. I really want to get the first attack in. So spam, spam, spam. Oh, I think I got it. I think I got it. And I also hit eight on her. And then she goes, hit me ten and zero. All right, so I think we're about even at this point. She also has the two-handed meat tenderizer. I'm going to try flick one. Five damage. Fourteen with a cleaver through prayer what that's a, a, a massive hit all right it, it looks fine on prayer we have 57 13 whack with a meat tenderizer this is oh my god look at our hp this is not looking good okay i, I max it 13 max it 13 her max it is higher than me that is interesting not sure why but uh it is what it is flick some smite smite can i get oh my god there's no way redemption no way she hit 24 there on my redemption. Oh, no. Oh, well. We know who is going to be doing the werewolf challenge. I thought it was only fair that Lucy decides what armor I can use with a cleaver. And her only requirement was to use a rune medhelm. So, I think this is going to be the gear I'm using for 171 werewolf kills. Or getting the rune medhelm drop from the werewolf. So, let's get into it. At least I can use the super combat potions. This is going to be bad. Even though these drops are very uneventful, there is actually a chance to get easy and medium clues from this. So if we get really lucky, we can get one of these and get like ranger boots, maybe. Get like 40 million loot right there from werewolves. What? There is no way. Is this guy's looting my wolf bones. How? Oh, no way. He's taking time out of his agility training to loot my wolf bones and my grey wolf fur. That's worth 300 GP each. After a longer grind than I thought it would be, we are now at 170 kills. So we're doing the last kill right here. And we actually managed to get zero clue scrolls. And I made sure I had no clues in the bank already. So we were good on that front. So unfortunately, but can we get the rune medhelm on the last kill? We cannot. So we did lose this challenge, we both lost the PvP duel and this werewolf challenge, and that means in any lost challenge, if the loot is below 10 million, I give away 10 million. So the giveaway for this video will be 10 million GP. Welcome to another on drop rate episode. In this one, I have invested 700 million GP for all this gear to efficiently kill the Fusani's Nightmare. We're going to be killing up to 100 Fusani's Nightmares in hopes of getting this sleepy tablet, which allows you to teleport right to sleep, which is a super good unlock on the Draken's Medallion. So what really is my personal experience with a Nightmare? Well, if we go down here on the collection log, I have 100 kills. And actually most of them is solo, but I've never seen a single drop. But as you can see, I have zero for Sunny's Nightmare Kills. You can see that on the tablet right here as well. And that is going to be quite a learning curve. That's why I want to go in with the best possible gear invested in all these things. And at their all-time low, I thought it would be a good point to have them for future content anyways. Just to stay it in the bank. But uh, hopefully we can get some good drops. Hopefully not die all too many times. And let's get into it. So let's quickly brief the mechanics of the fight. The first one is the prayer switches. If the Fosani's Nightmare does this animation, you have to pray magic. If it does this animation, it's ranged. And this one is melee. If you miss any of these prayers, you will get hit like a 70. To make it slightly more difficult, Fosani can do this animation right here, which flips all your prayers for around 5 attacks one step to the left, meaning melee becomes magic. Range becomes melee and magic becomes ranged. There are three main minions that also spawn during this fight. The first one being husks. For this you have to equip your melee gear, pray piety, equip your ham joint which is a fast attacking weapon. And you will one shot these every single time at least with max stats. 20 damage and during these husks you cannot move and they also hit a fair amount of damage. So killing them right away is a high priority. 
The second minion is a parasite. The boss will actually impregnate you with this parasite and you have to drink a Sanfu serum dose to reduce the power of this parasite. If you do not do that, you will take like a 70 and the parasite will be way stronger when it spawns. But if you do drink it, you can then use your melee gear again, max gear, with an Elder Maul or a Saradom and God Sword or something very high hitting and you will one shot the parasite. This parasite heals the boss, heals the totems which we will talk about in just a bit. And lastly we have the sleepwalkers, these will spawn after each totem phase has been completed. There are a total of 4 totem phases and after the first one, one sleepwalker spawns, after the second one, two of them spawn and all the way up to 4. And you have to kill these with blowpipe, they spawn in each corner of the room and if you miss them you will take a massive amount of damage. At the absolute end phase you also have to burst down the boss of 150 HP. During this phase it will spam sleepwalkers that do 15 damage every single time they enter the boss. At this phase you just want to burst the boss and take as little damage from these as possible. Now the hardest mechanic during this fight that definitely killed me the most times is the dark circles on the ground. The Fosani's Nightmare will spawn a bunch of circles around you and you have to find the gap where you can actually stand. This will happen multiple times in a row sometimes or sometimes just one time. And if you do miss a circle and you stand in one, you can take up to 70 damage. To make this even worse, the Fosani's Nightmare also spawns these mushrooms around the area sometimes. And if you walk into them, you cannot use your run speed for a couple of seconds. And avoiding the circle sometimes without run is really difficult. Before we talk about the totem phase being the last major ability that this boss does, I do want to mention the flower phase as well. So in this phase, you can see right here, it splits the room in four different areas. And there is only one specific area where it's both flowers covering in the area and in this zone you can actually stand and take no damage if you're in any other area you will take periodic 20 ticks every single tick so you will die very very quickly if you're not in this area and also every single time this mechanic happens it will start spamming the dark circles so you have a very small area to avoid them which makes it pretty difficult sometimes and lastly, let's talk about the totem phase. So when you get the Fosani's Nightmare's shield HP to zero, you will then have to attack four totems around each corner of the room. If you use magic on this, you will deal double damage, so that is highly recommended. When you've completed that task of getting all the totems completely filled up, the phase has been completed, the sleepwalkers will spawn, and you will have to repeat the process. No! No, I was so close! Oh my god, are you kidding me? Ah, it's time to run back, I guess. All right, let's see what is the damage is going to be like. Hopefully it's not like 200k, something like that. Oh, it's 60k. That's literally nothing. I can die as much as I want. Oh my god, no. No, I was a tick off there. Oh my god, no, please. No, I actually died. I'm getting so close to getting the kill as well. I don't want to complain, but it's like I actually spent like nine minutes at this and then I just die like that in the end. But it's a dumb mistake. Oh, yes, <laughs> actually first kill, prayer potions and we get Fusani's veteran 11 minute kill, that is really bad, I'm not going to lie, uh, I think I should be able to get this down with my gear to maybe like 9 minutes, something like that, maybe even better than that, because my mage gear is not the best, and that would speed up, if I had better gear for magic, it would speed up the totem phase by quite a lot, but yeah, first kill after, I think, five deaths. Like, seriously, this fight is so intense at the end of it, because I'm not experienced with it. But I can see at the end of it, it's probably not going to be that bad. But uh, I'm also considering maybe bringing thralls. It could make the totem phase slightly faster. Bruh! No! Hey, I am not dying as much anymore. Definitely still dying, but uh, not as bad as before. And we are getting consistent kills now. We got a personal best of 10 and a half minutes, which is not great. But I do want to try to get that down to like 9 minutes or even less in this video. Oh, this is a good one. I think this is a personal best again. I will probably see a bunch of personal bests now that I've actually learned the boss more properly, you know. And that is Fosani's Master for 5kc. And oh, look at that. 10 minutes. That was like 25 seconds better than the last one. <gasps> oh, no. Are you kidding? <laughs> 
Oi! I actually got so baited. I saw the big beam and I actually thought I got something. Ah, well, 350k. I'm not complaining. That's probably the best drop you can get from this boss, honestly, except for the actual uniques. I actually think we might be getting a sub 10 minute kill here if I can get some hits in. I think... Felt like this was pretty fast compared to my other attempts. So let's see what we're going to be ending at. Dropping some vials, mithril ore, and yes, we did get below 10 minutes. Very nice. I need to shave off another 47 seconds though for my goal. Okay, I do want to make a statement here. I was streaming some Fasani's Nightmare and someone told me, why do you have the ancestral hat and not the occult necklace? Occult necklace is 10% magic bonus and uh, the ancestral hat is 2%. Yeah, I completely forgot about that this item even existed, so we have that as an upgrade now for magic setup. What? What? What is this drop? Sh 20 sharks? For 10 minutes of work, I get 20 sharks. What? Okay, there's no words. So we just had another personal best, and I'm pretty sure that we are a bit above the actual KD of 1 now. So I actually have more kills than deaths now, which might sound not that impressive, but for me learning this boss, it was quite a struggle. Look at that, 19 kills and 13 deaths. For a while, I think I had 5 deaths and 1 kill, so we have definitely caught up and we're doing a lot better now. Actually, every single time I've been dying, I've teleported to Canafis and ran through the whole haunted woods, because I do lose my Draken's medallion when I die, because I do bring it to the boss. But you actually can pay this guy 1 million GP to have permanent access to this rowboat. And you can use the ectophile and then teleport right here. Use the boat and you will actually go right here. Which is actually slightly even closer than the Theater of Blood teleport. So if you're going to be doing the Nightmare Grind yourself or the Fosanis, this is a great unlock. And 1 million GP is not too bad. We've been doing a lot of successful kills here, and we are actually reaching a Grandmaster task, Fosani's Grandmaster. 10 minute kill for 25 KC, we're one fourth of the way there. We have not seen the Sleepy Tablet yet, and no uniques, but it is going a lot better, not really dying much. Oh, first Elite Clue Scroll, this is actually a 1 in 35, so not too rare, we should see 3 of them during this grind, if I do all the way to 100 kills. Yeah, let's complete it, and I will stack the caskets in the bank. Yo, this was so fast. This has to be under 9 minutes. 8.36. Oh my god. Fosani Speed Chaser, Master Task. If I want to get the Grandmaster one, which is 7.30, I definitely need a lot better magic gear. There is no way. 1 HP and I die. 1. 1 HP. Oh, is that a thing, man? One higher hit, and I... Oh my god, dude. <laughs> I am back for revenge. Not dying this time. Running very safely. 4 HP left, and there we go. That is the kill. Let's zoom in and get my very nice draw. Oh my god, dude, there's no way. Yo, I actually got an item. I even zoomed it. That's kind of a prediction, I have to say. It's not the best one. 55 million. There's definitely better drops. Whoa. Whoa. We actually got an item. That is so nice. I think we officially might profit from this, which is kind of crazy to say because the supplies for this is very expensive. 100 normal kills, 41 for Sani, and we finally have the first collection log item for the boss. That is really nice to see. Hopefully we can get even more in this video. And the question is, can we get a back-to-back -back Inquisitor or even Harmonized Orb drop? Can we get it? No, we cannot. But Prairie Pots is not that bad. Ooh, Parasitic Egg. Uh, that is another collection log item. Getting my wish, getting more collection log items. That is a 1 in 200 drop. I am very tired right now. I've been doing this for a long time. But that is very nice. It's a transformation for the pet, but I do not have the pet. After this kill right here, we are reaching the halfway point, and I have to say, this is a very draining boss to actually do. It just requires so much focus, one fuck up, and you're gone. Also, a bit of an update, the Inquisitor's items are actually going down by quite a bit, but I did actually finally sell the helmet for 48 million GP, so I'm probably going to be profiting regardless, which is nice. Oh my god, we actually got the Sleepy Tablet! Yes, I really wanted this item so badly, and that is the challenge one. 
It is such a good item to have for future for Sunny grinding. And that also is my overall 500 collection log item. Very nice. Let's actually try this out. By the way, if you missed it, that was on 57 kill counts. And before, I had to run all this way to get to Fosani. From Theater of Blood, all the way up here, down in this dungeon. And from this area right here, all the way down here, up to the Fosani's Nightmare at the top. Now, I can actually just inspect this. And let's apply it to my Draken's Medallion. I guess I have to use it on it. There we go. Very nice small sound animation that you guys probably couldn't hear. And now let's see where can I teleport to sleep and we land. Oh my god. That reduces the time getting here drastically. And after all of this we of course had one elite casket to open. So let's see what we're going to be getting from this one. Hopefully a mimic. I would love to see one of those. So let's go ahead and open it. And it is no mimic and the reward is 167k. Yeah, Elise Crew Scrolls are pretty much always a disappointment. I definitely do realize I got extremely lucky during this video. The drop rate of getting any unique of these at all, the orbs and the Inquisitor gear and the Nightmare Staff, is 1 in 167. And I did get the helmet in 57 kill count, also got the 1 in 100 sleepy tablet in 57, and the parasitic egg, which is 1 in 200. So very lucky indeed. What is going on guys? Welcome to another episode of the On Drop Rate series. In this episode, we're actually taking on another Slayer boss, the second one of the entire series after the Alchemical Hydra. And this time we're taking on Cerberus. The item we're going for in this video is the Pegation Crystal, the one in 512 drop. And it is only worth 46,000 GP at this current point. But there are a bunch of other items this boss drops that are worth a lot of money. Albeit a bit expensive, with the scythe charges, this is the gear for the fastest kills I'm going to be using. And the scythe actually has a crush setting, which I'm going to be using rather than the slash one. And that is why I have the Inquisitor gear. I'm also going to switch the Ferocious Gloves close to a kill with the Bracelets of Slaughter to extend the task. And of course, for a special weapon, we have the Bandos God Sword. Cerberus already has kind of low defense, so using a Dragon Warhammer here is not super useful, but how with the BGS works, it is a really good weapon for lowering its defense here. So let's actually go over an entire Cerberus kill. In the beginning, I drink my combat potion, turn my prayers on, and then I go in for the BGS spec. I should have had it on Crush here because I'm using Inquisitor, but for some reason I didn't have that. After that, you go in with your weapon, your arc light, your scythe, whatever you're using, and you just kind of shred the boss. It dies really quickly. I also summon my thrall, and there are really only two mechanics this boss has. One of them, the boss will say Gur, and you have to move from some puddles that spawn on the ground. The second one you will see probably in a second here, it will say Aru and it will spawn some spirits. So right here you can see that and they will have different colors. So you will start with the blue one from the left playing magic, then melee and then ranged. So the red one is melee, green one ranged and you have to protect against them otherwise you take 30 damage every single one you miss and they also drain 30 prayer every single time you do them successfully. Oh, sorry, I forgot to show the collection log as well. I started with 506 kill counts. We've only done three kills, got nothing too special. You can see that in my inventory. The only items I've got in the collection log in these kills is the Keymaster Teleports, which is kind of guaranteed, and then the Primordial Crystal. No way! Oh my god, how many kills have I done? Uh, dude, <laughs> Hey, 9kc, smoldering stone, first drop, pretty much at the end of this trip. Second trip, by the way, the scythe is absolutely incredible, by the way. It's like the first time I've ever using it here. I used a hammer, Samuraki and Hasta last time. Wow, this is 5 million worth. That is really good. It has been a while, but that is actually the last kill of the task, and that was a milestone task, 870, and nothing really happened after that smoldering stone, but we did get a lot of extended kill count in from the Bracelets of Slaughter. Overall, the loot is on the screen right now. We did 173 kills for a total of 9 million loot, so so far it's going good, but no Pegation Crystal. Can we get lucky and get a 10% chance of a back-to-back -back with the Slayer Cape? Please, it would save so much time. We do not. Unfortunate. Hey, unfortunately not a collection log item. I already have this one. But meanwhile, trying to get another Hellhound task, we get a Drake's Claw. 
Oh, that looks so good on the ground. 1.7 million Abyssal Whip from a barraging a Abyssal Demon Task, which is actually super good for tasks. It's good experience and very fast. You know, I've actually spent almost an entire day just spamming Slayer Tasks, hoping to get a Hellhound Task specifically in Taverly from Konar, because I wanted to try to get the Brimstone Keys. I am working on a video for that as well. But after doing so many tasks and not seeing a single Hellhound task, let alone one specifically in the Taverly dungeon, I'm just going to be doing it from Duradel. So no more Brimstone Keys from this entire grind, and it should be way easier to get the tasks. By the way, if you're wondering, you can get Hellhounds in the Karun Slayer dungeon, Catagums of Current, Stronghold Slayer dungeon, Taverly dungeon, which is the one I need, or Witch Haven dungeon. So five different locations and it's actually kind of a rare task in the first place. All right, there we go, 148 more Hellhounds. I actually took quite a lot of Slayer points, I have 128, and I also did three more tasks, so not super lucky, but we did finally get another one. Oh, that actually took some time. The first Elite Clue Scroll, it's one in 100, but that took me like a 180 kills, I think, so well over the drop rate. Oh my god, okay, we're catching up on the Elite Crew Skulls, I guess. That was like 40 or 50 kills later. Very nice. I do realize I haven't really shown much clips of me doing Cerberus, but uh, I am now at 300 KC for the video. The loot is on the screen right now. And the only really notable thing I got was the Smoldering Stone really early on. And then four Elite Crew Skulls, which is not that bad. It is definitely above drop rate with 1 in 100. But yeah, no other crystals so far, no pets, nothing like that. Just a smoldering stone, but hopefully in the last 212 kills we can get something nice. Oh my god, look at the value of that. <laughs> 46,000 GP, but it's actually worth a lot more than that because that means I am winning this challenge, getting to keep all the loot from this. And another collection log slot as well. And I don't have to try to get another task. Look, I had one left on the task. And all the loot that I got is on the screen right now. 14.2 million. But I do actually want to show you guys this. So on the rune light tracker, it does say that the smoldering stone is worth 5 million. But if I examine it, it will say 6.1 million. This one has been going up like 100k every single day. So I don't know why, but the Smoldering Stone was a good item to get early because it is just skyrocketing in price. But let's go ahead and open the four Elite Caskets that we got during this grind as well. I could complete all of them easily and we have done 47 Elites overall with 12 out of 59 Uniques unlocked. And the chance of getting a Master from an Elite Casket is 1 in 5. So we should technically be very close to getting one of them. But let's see how this goes. Let's go with the first one. And the first one is already a master clue scroll. So let's take a break already, complete this, open it. Hopefully we can complete it and then keep going. Usually I'm a bit nervous about master clue scrolls, but we could complete this one. Let's go to our bank and open it. When it comes to masters, I've only done 13 openings of them. And we only got two uniques, which is the samurai shirt and the bowl wig. So let's see, can we get another unique from this? We can. And oh my god, anguish ornament kit? Wait, I think that's actually worth a lot. Let's go to the game filter. 7.2 million GP. I mean, you can't complain with that. That is really good. Uh, that's pretty much half of the money I made from Cerberus. So that is very good money. Let's go ahead and keep opening the elites though. Can we get another master? First one, no master, 150k. No unique either. No unique in that one. 33k for an elite. That is pretty depressing. And the last one is going to be nothing. 90k. Wow. Well, we at least made a lot of money from the Anguish Ornament Kit. Overall, 7.5 million, with the Anguish Ornament Kit being nearly 7 million. Now, when it comes to the collection log of Cerberus, we did unlock two more uniques, which is duplicating the uniques from the table I already had. I had the Primordial Crystal and the Keymaster Teleports. We did get some more Keymaster Teleports in this video as well, but I did use all of them to make the grind a bit faster. But we're still missing the Eternal Crystal, Jar of Souls, and the Pet. The most rare items, of course, being this Jar and the Puppy. But in the future, I can get those, maybe do an on-drop rate again for the Hell Puppy on a number 10th episode. I guess we'll see in the future.
Now, let's be honest, that grind was a pretty quick one, so we're going for another one right away. The item we're gonna go for is the Gold Locks. It's a 1 in 61 drop rate from the Golden Chests, and the mini game we're going to be doing for the item is the Shades of Morton. So we need to get 61 golden keys and the way you actually get those is by using these fire remains which are actually 2.7k each. I'm going to be buying 300 of them and then also I need magic pyre logs and you have to burn these at the Shades of Morton minigame. You have a chance I think 1 in 6 to get a golden key and when we have 61 we will loot all of them and hope that we get the golden lock. It is a very simple process, I basically just use a Morton teleport, I use all of these to try to get the keys, and after that I teleport to Castle Wars, get 13 more of each, and how you basically do this is you put the magic logs on here, it has to be magic pyre logs, the fire remains, and then after that you light the funeral, you get some experience for doing this, 100 prayer and 404 fire making, and then you get a key, and it's 1 in 6 to get a golden key, which is the ones I need. And there it is, that is the first golden key, and as you can see it has a color name, it's red, and there are actually four other colors I think, but they do require like 95 fire making to get. The chances that they have for the golden locks is like 1 in 59 instead of 1 in 61, so not really worth it. You definitely have better and worse inventory runs, this time I got absolutely no key at all from 13 ones, but the first one I got 4 of them, so hopefully it won't take too long, I won't go too unlucky, and I might have to buy more of the shades actually, but that's not that bad, if I have to do like 400 instead of 300, it's not going to be a big deal. Alright, so we only have 4 more of each left, and I have 38 keys, which is a bit more than halfway, so I will definitely need to buy more, but uh, in terms of the other keys, I have a lot of silver keys, but I'm not really going to be using them, at least not for now, but uh, let's go and buy some new logs and fire remains and get the last keys. Another upside to this grind is that the experience you get from this is actually not that bad, and look at that, 86 fire making, and let's actually go here... I gained 31,500 prayer and 127 fire making in roughly like 1 hour and 10 minutes, something like that. So definitely not that bad. Hey, there we go. That is the last one. Let's actually go to the bank, put it in and see if we now have 61. I am pretty sure I needed 4 more and I got that from that last inventory. There we go. 61 golden keys. So it is time to open the chests. Now because I have red keys, I'm going to be opening the ones with the red locks. I am bringing 15 keys because I don't really know if it's going to be taking up a lot of inventory slots, the items that I get from this. By the way, you can actually get the gold locks drop rate down from 1 in 61 from these chests down to 1 in 59 with a ring of wealth. But because there are other items I would also love to get, like the seals, boots, helm, robe bottom and robe top, which is a prayer boosting outfit which is 1 in 128 drop rate. I'm just going to go with as many keys as possible for this grind. So let's actually go ahead and open one of these chests and see what the loot is going to be like. The first one is Dragonstone Ring and some Swamp Paste. I guess if I spam this... Oh, Collection Log Item, Flame Tear Bag, a very common item. And there is actually other items as well on the Collection Log, quite a lot of them. So hopefully we can get that before we even get the Gold Locks. But I think regardless, I'll open all of the keys just for the Collection Log Items. Last key for the first trip, let's see what we get, and we get a rune long sword. Let's actually price check this and see how much this is worth. Of course, I do have to take out some stuff. That in the teleports, 280k. Not great. I definitely spent more on that on the shades and the power logs. Oh, another collection log item, fine cloth. I don't think it's that rare actually to get that. It is one in six. So I've actually been kind of unlucky so far. Oh, Undead Cellot. Is this the one that actually drops the Cellot robes? Oh my god, if it is, it's actually kind of rare to get this. One in 128, I think. Bleached bones, and do I get an item? Oh, I do not. So, I guess that's not the case. Last key of the second inventory, and we get nothing. Apparently, you can actually use these bleached bones I got from that zombie on this altar right here, and it should give me full prayer. Let's see what actually happens. Yeah, there we go. I don't know what that's actually good for, but it is in the game. Oh, another collection log item. Amulet of the Damned. I think this actually has some value to it. How much is it? Oh. For some reason, I thought it was like 400k, but three, 35k, well, it, it's something, I guess. 
Now, the keys that I have in my inventory are the last ones for finishing the 61 key opening. And this is my current collection log. Amulet of the Damned, the Flame Tear Bag, 5 Fine Cloth, no gold locks, no sellout items, and no bloody notes or tree wizard journal. These are the split bark armor like recipes or what you would say. And uh, I have not got any of them. So hopefully we can get lucky on these 15 keys here and see one of the uniques. Another amulet of the damned. I think this is actually broadcasted in my clan every single time. Oh, I guess not. Only the first time, I suppose, because of the collection log slot. And we are down to the last four keys. Let's do them all on video. Two more to go. A dragon stone. Is that actually rare? Let me look that up. Well, okay, not super rare, but it is 1 in 72, which is more rare than the gold locks. So that's kind of unfortunate to get on the second last, but we do have one more chance. Let's go ahead and open this. Can we get the golden locks on the last key? We cannot. So overall, here is all the loot that I ended up getting. 754,000 GP. One of the keys did not get tracked for some reason. Rune Light can be like that sometimes, but it is pretty close. 60 of them did get tracked, and I don't think one more would make that much of a difference in GP. What is going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the On Drop Rate series. This is going to be a big grind with a lot of potential money to be made. We are going to be completing up to 200 and 83 medium clue scrolls. You might be thinking I'm going for the ranger boots. It is by far the most expensive item on the drop table, but that is not the case. The item I'm actually going for in this video is the wizard boots. Pretty much any single item from the medium clue scroll is one in 1,133 drop rate, but because you get four rolls on every single medium clue scroll you open, it is a one in 283 to get the specific item you want. Just like in my video where I did easy clue scrolls, I'm going to be going for the eclectic impling method. I'm going to be opening them and they have a 1 in 25 chance to give a medium clue scroll. And this is pretty expensive. Hopefully I will be making money. If I get one single pair of ranger boots, I am making money. So let's buy all of these, see if they buy. Pretty much all of them bought right away for the medium price. So investment will be like 27 million. The first medium clue scroll is completed for the entire grind. Let's put that down here and keep going for quite a while. Dude, I swear, this game sometimes is wild. Look at this tree. Do you see how bugged this tree is? It's because of how they probably make the details. I, oh my god, it's just despawning. And then if I go this way and I turn around... Oh my god, dude. And now it looks fine. Actually a bit off there, but maybe so uh, from this angle, maybe it looks pretty good. We have now completed 10 medium clues. And I think because I'm going to be doing a potential up to 283 clue scrolls, I'm going to start opening them every 50. And then the last ones I will do 83 if I have not got the wizard boots by then. So in case I get really lucky and I get it early on, I do not have to do like 200 unnecessary medium clue scrolls. And there it is. That is the first number 50 medium casket stacked up. It is time for us to go and open these and hopefully get something good. Now, before we actually get started with opening these 50 medium clue scrolls, I need to show you guys this. I have 3 out of 115 collection log items on the medium treasure trails. Usually at this point of an account, you would have way more than this. It's just I have never really done many medium clue scrolls on this account. So we should be getting a ton of collection log items. The item that would end this challenge, of course, is the wizard boots. Just a quick reminder. And if I do get the ranger boots, the risk of this challenge of a massive giveaway is vastly higher. But let's go ahead and open the first one. And after that, I am only going to show the more interesting items because there could potentially be a lot of clue scrolls. And I don't want to make this a one hour video of just opening clue scrolls. So let's go ahead. The first one is going to be, yeah, about collection of items, by the way, two of them right off the bat. Ooh, first master clue scroll. You know what? I'm not really feeling like doing master clues right now, and there is like 50% chance that I actually complete this. So for now, I am not going to do the masters. Sorry for disappointing. All right, so when you actually close a clue scroll, you get all of the broadcasts in the chat. So that is quite a lot of items. Oh my god, I actually got the ranger boots so early as well. 30 million GP. Dude, people are gonna go crazy in this clan chat. 14 medium clues in. Imagine if ranger boots was the challenge. Okay, we have a lot of risk on the line now. 
We are now down to the last 10 of the first 50 potential medium crew scrolls opening of this video. So far, I cannot complain. I have got so many collectional items. We will see how many unlocks after this. Let's see. Can we get something good from the last 10? I will just kind of spam them quickly, I guess. I did not see any wizard boots in there. Does not seem like it. So we are going to have to do more of them. Let's quickly look at the collection log. Wow, 20 unlocks from just that opening. Easy collection log slots. You have got to be kidding me. I have not done the observatory quest on my 1.9k total account with how many quests? 130 quests completed. Wow, I guess it's really time for it. Is this actually intended or is this bugged? Look at this guy, what is he doing? Uh, <laughs> at least he's working hard, it seems. And there we go, observatory quest completed with uh, 260 quest points. Sat up all night to get another 50 caskets done, and I just woke up and it is time to open another 50 medium caskets. Alright, it is time to spam the clan again with more uniques, hopefully, so let's go ahead and open the first one. We have uh, Firelighters, Death Runes, and Yu Longbow for the first one. 4.6k! But let's go ahead and open more. Oh my god, a gold elegant shirt. That is actually twice as rare, I think, or even more than that, than any other unique. So very nice to get that for the collection log. And time to spam the clan again. Yeah. Oh my god. Another gold elegant shirt. I'm actually getting really lucky here. It's not worth a lot, but uh, yeah, overall we're also getting a lot of collection log items. Let's uh, open three more here, qu here quickly, close, and then see collection log slots again. Yep, decent amount, three of them. Well, we are getting a lot of collection log items, but we have not seen the wizard boots yet in soon 100 medium clue scrolls, so it is not looking great for that. Of course, we still have 183 potential medium clues more to go. But yeah, I would definitely like to see those wizard boots at this point. Alright, we're down to the last 10 medium caskets and we have not got the wizard boots, no ranger boots, no boots actually at all on this opening. So let's hopefully see if we, if we can get... No way! No way! I actually got the wizard boots on the first one. Well, that means we have completed the challenge. We got the ranger boots, we get to keep them. We also got the wizard boots. Let's just open these nine now. Maybe we can get another pair of ranger boots. That means we completed a challenge on 91 medium clues. That is so nice to see. We actually got it. And how many collection log slots did we clean up in this process? Let's go into the collection log right here. Medium clue scrolls. And we started with three. And now we have 43. So we actually unlocked 40 items in 9 or i guess 100 clues that is very nice but we did get the wizard boots on 91. you know as a celebration i might as well do the master clue scroll that i got earlier in the video so let's see if we can actually complete this and hopefully get something good from it a bit of a side note i wanted to record when i actually completed all of the medium stash units and i have them all tracked but there are actually two medium stashes that i never got as i step in these 100 clues and that is the one at mount Corom and in catherby i think archery emporium those are the ones i did not complete but every other one i have completed and in the future if i do mediums again i should be able to get the last two Oh man, I need the flare trousers for this step, but uh, I can complete it, so I'm going to be doing it, but uh, 3 million GP for one single step is kind of ridiculous. Very nice, we could complete the master, so let's go to our bank and open it so we don't take desert damage. Can we get a mimic? That would be nice. Please and thank you. We did not get a mimic, and that is a very... Okay, 455k. I was going to say terrible, but eh, it has some value. You know, one of the really good things about this is that I get to keep a lot of the implings as I didn't really have to use all of them and I spent at the beginning 27 million GP to buy the supplies for potentially 283 medium clue scrolls. But as you can see, I am getting 19 and a half million back from that. So I only really lost 7 and a half million GP going for this. And now, of course, I have the ranger boots. So overall, 50 million. Which means I made a lot of money in this video. I'm not going to do quick math right now, but that is a good amount of money to make.
Welcome to the biggest on drop rate video I will probably ever do in the entire series. In this one, we are going to be killing Mithril Dragons, and we are going to be killing 8,192 of them for the Dragon Fall Helm. Combining the drop rate of the Chewed Bones themselves, the chances of getting the Dragon Fall Helm from the Chewed Bones, and also the normal drop rate of the Dragon Fall Helm from the Mithril Dragon itself, I have calculated with my Discord the exact amount of kills you need to do to theoretically from either the Chewed Bones or the kills themselves get a Dragon Fall Helm, and the math will be in the description because I am not a mathematical person, and if you are good at math, you can probably understand it from that. So if you want to see the math behind it, why it's exactly 8,192 kills, you can go ahead and do that. This is such a long grind that it is very likely you will see me change or even upgrade gear over time. For example, I am using Bandos right now, but in the future of this video, I might be even having Torva because of how long this grind is. But the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to do a one hour test and see how many kills I can get an hour so we can get a rough estimate of how long this grind is actually going to take. Now you might be wondering, why am I using the Osmontan's Fang versus Dragons when there is a Dragon Hunter launch? Well, we ran some DPS calculations and the Osmontan's Fang is so accurate as you can see that it is actually better DPS by quite a good amount on Mithril Dragon. So as you can see, the kills are not that bad with the Fang and that is why I'm going to be using it. Hopefully I don't die here, it seems like I'm going to be fine. This is the last kill of the first trip, and this is kill number 12. I definitely don't need two Divine Super Combat Potions, so I'm going to be banking one of them. Changing up my inventory slightly, maybe I can get like 13 kills per trip, which is not that bad. Hey, there is the first Chewed Bone of the Grind. I'm going to probably have to get a lot of these, but it's nice to see the first one. Also a collection log slot. So the way I'm going to be doing it is every 10 chewed bones I get, I will use them on the pyres and see if I can actually get the dragon fall helm. It is a 1 in 256 to get it from the pyres, but I'm not going to be getting up to 256 chewed bones as we're counting in both the kills and the chewed bones as the drop rates. But I think every 10 chewed bones should be fine to go with. Kinda missed it, but I did get an ancient page, and they are actually a collection log item. You can see that in the chat, I did get one, and it's one in 64 from Mithril Dragons, and I don't know how many there are. I think there's a lot of them, though, so I will probably get a good amount of collection log items from that. So yeah, here they are, one in 26 collection log slots. That is a lot of collection log slots that you can get from just doing this grind. It is completely RNG which one you get. They're all just called Ancient Page, but they do have different IDs and they all drop from the same monsters. So it's going to be interesting to see how many I get during this grind. One in 64 from the Mithril Dragons. So we're coming to the end of the first hour and this is what I got. I got 78 kills in this hour and 5 chewed bones, which is definitely above the drop rate by quite a lot. So that is very nice to see. By the way, if I keep getting 78 kills an hour, which means I'm going to do this at high efficiency all the time, which is unlikely, this would still take 105 hours to complete. To compare that with any other grind I've done before, Vorkath with 1000 kills took 55 hours. Oh, that beam actually kind of scared me. Elite clue scroll though, that is not that bad. It is uh, 1 in 350. But because I'm going to be killing so many of them, I will probably see a few of them. Oh my god. What am I doing? I was hard AFKing and then I came back and I just... I didn't know what to do, I just died. <laughs> I felt like 10 was a bit too little for how many I probably have to do. So that is actually chewed bone number 20. And that is how many I'm going to be doing every single time. So I will use all of these 20 and then go back if I don't get the dragon full ham and get another 20. Because you also need logs for this, I am bringing 10 chewed bones at a time, so let's go ahead and construct some pyres, and hopefully, if we get the Dragon Fallhem this early, that would save a lot of time. The loot from the first pyre is going to be... What is this? Super Attack Mix 2. And as you can see in the chat, it says I have one laid to rest, so this will track all of them for me. Well, no Dragon Fall Hem so far, and we're down to the last Chewed Bone of the first round of 10. And the last one gave me, I don't even know what it gave me, like Adam and Dars or something, I guess. But let's get another 10. 
Anyway, over the last 10, hopefully we can get something nice from this. But the regular loot that you get from this is very bad. As you can see, this item, for example, is worth 136 GP. And we are down to the actual last chewed bone that I've collected so far. Number 20. What can we get from this one? Hopefully not a defense mix or something like that. Can we get something? I actually got something a bit better too. Rain or potions, which is like 15k. And we got... Anti-poison super mix too. How much is that worth? That is worth 255. So that, that is a bit better than the other one. I knew this would happen. 36,000 GP for a dragon spear. I even looked up before doing this grind what items would be terrible to see. And that is one of them. It is more rare than the dragon full helm. This spear is 1 in 36,000 drop rates. Which is like 1 in 3,000 more rare than the dragon full helm. So that was definitely a missed roll. We are now a decent bit into this grind and that is the number 40th chewed bone and we're going to go back to the pyres and do another 20 and maybe this time we will get really lucky. On average by the way I'm pretty sure it's around 10 hours to get 20 of these bones so every half hour I do get one of them so this is now round 2 of 20 bones. Can we get absolutely spooned? First thing is a super strength mix 1 which is worth... 34 GP! And the last bone of the first 10 of this round is going to be... What are we going to get? Super defense mix. By the way, I do want to mention my collection log for the notes is looking quite decent at this point. I have got 12 out of 26 of them. I didn't want to show all of them because you get them fairly frequently. And sometimes you get a lot of dupes of them. But we have actually got 12 unique ones, which is pretty nice. And here we have the last chewed bone. What are we going to get this time? Rune... Well, actually, Adam and Knives, not even Rune ones. There we are. 40 completed so far. But let's get back into Mithril Dragons again and get another 20 in 10 hours, hopefully. You know, after doing this for roughly 30 hours at this point, I would say that this is definitely more tedious and boring than you might expect. It is pretty AFK luckily with my gear, and if I had Torva, it would be even more AFK with the more defensive stats. But it definitely is a very slow grind, but I knew what I was getting into, and uh, this is only the beginning. Oh, she left half... Number one of the grinds. It is a one in, I think, 27,000. So not as bad as the spear. So I went ahead and went a bit crazy. The plan was to get 20 more chewed bones, but uh, I spent an entire 16 hours today just killing mithril dragons. I went a bit ham and went all the way from 1,448 KC to this, what you're seeing on the screen right now, 2,600 KC. And we got 28 new chewed bones to go for. So let's see. Is this going to be it for the Dragon Hole Full Helm or no? I think this time I'm going to be using this side instead of that one. Maybe this one is cursed. So let's go ahead and start with the first 10 bones. We are going to do this in three inventories. 10, 10 and then 8. And let's actually record the first one here of the pile that we have. And it is... Adam and Dodge poisoned. 41. We're going to be ending at, what is it? 68, of course. And we're about to be done with the first inventory of four. A fishing mix, two for the last one. 50 KC overall, but nothing that time. And that is 60 KC done, second inventory done. Imagine spending 15 hours killing Mithril Dragons, and uh, the reward that you get is this right here 11.88k from one inventory of 10 bones. But uh, we still have eight more to go. Maybe these are the lucky ones. I have to say, it is not looking good. This is the last bone. And what are we going to get? We got some blood runes. Well, that is that for today. I guess I'm going to bed and go again tomorrow. You know, I do have to say, one of the really nice things of this grind is that I am not using any degradable gear. I'm not using a scythe, I'm not using any barrows gear, I'm not using a blood amulet of fury. So every single time I go to a bank, I don't have to care about anything gear related. I can just get the potions, get the food and teleport right back. You know, most high tier PVMers have like really organized banks. I don't really. This is my gear tab. It's just <laughs> a mess of everything. At least I put the Mithril Dragon gear right here so I can just take all of this out. And then when it comes to restocking on potions, I do this. 
And then I take these out, five of that, one of that, and I am pretty much good to go after drinking the pool of refreshment. This is a very special Mithril Dragon kill right here. This one marks the halfway point for the drop rate of the Dragon Fallham. And we have not seen it yet, but we do actually have a good amount of chewed bones in the bank that we're going to be using right now. 29 chewed bones is what we have and that is like what a 14% maybe 13% chance of actually getting the dragon fall helm first inventory of bones and the last one is going to be nothing second inventory what is the last one going to be and we get some blood runes it is what it is we are actually getting really close to 100 chewed bones overall use. This is going to be 97 and the last one for the 29 that I had in the bank. And this of course marks exactly the halfway point for the grind and we get a super strength mix 1. Not the best thing to get for the last one, but uh, another thing I do want to mention is that on the notes I have actually 23 out of 26. So if I get just 3 more unique notes I've completed another collection log. Oh my god. I just realized how much experience this grind has given me so far. I started this strength counter on 2.5 million experience and I'm at 7.2 million experience almost. That means almost 4.5 million strength experience. That means as I'm roughly halfway done, this entire grind is a 9 million strength experience. That is pretty insane. It has been another, I would say, like 12, maybe 13 hours of killing Mithril Dragons since the last clip, and we are actually about it. Another massive milestone, 5,000 Mithril Dragons. And I do actually want to talk about one additional thing that I've never really mentioned during this grind. There is a 1 in 10,000 drop rates of getting a Draconic Visage from these, which would be such an incredible item to get. And why is this dragon taking literally 10 years to actually kill? just when i need it by the way it's ten and a half thousand gp per kill i just saw that kind of an interesting stat but anyways this marks the 5000 kill mark and we're going to go all the way to 6000 before using any more chewed bones so quite a lot left but uh yeah, hopefully we can get either the dragon fall helm or it would be really cool to actually get a draconic visage as well Oh my god, dude, what? I was playing another game and I just heard the message and I didn't even know I didn't have the recorder on. No way, we got the Draconic Visage! Uh, dude, I, wait, didn't I just record a clip, the last one, when I was talking about it? This is actually quite a lot later than that. I think like 800 kills after that. Oh my god. I, dude, there is no words for this. This is such a hard collection of item to get and we have it. We just need a dragon full hand now. I honestly still can't believe we got the visage, but this kill right here, 150 kills after getting the visage, that is now 6,000 mithril dragons done. Look at that. That looks so clean on the loot tracker. And I'm honestly not sure how many chewed bones we have, but it is time to open a bunch of them again. Besides the beautiful Draconic Visage, we now have 45 Chewed Bones. That is by far the most I've done in one go. So hopefully we can get lucky and get the Dragon Fall Helm. It would be so nice to get both the Visage and the Dragon Fall Helm. And for number 100 overall Chewed Bone, we get Antifire Mix. Not quite a Dragon Fall Helm, but we will keep going. Last bone of the first inventory is going to be some more Death Runes, but we still have a good amount of bones left. So we're now up to 122 after this 123 and what is the last bone of the second inventory going to be? Honestly I didn't even see what we got but uh, can't be anything good. I'm going to try the other side for the last bone of this inventory. We do have 6 overall chewed bones left after this one. Are we going to get lucky on this side instead and oh my oh no way! What? Oh my god, we actually got the Dragon Fall Helm on the last pyre of this inventory. Oh, look at that helmet, dude. I, this is like the biggest nerd freakout ever, dude. I have been here for so long, like 70 plus hours. Oh my god, you guys have no idea. It's like a weight lift off my shoulders. 58 million GP, just look at the clan, everyone is freaking out. Holy, we got both the Visage and the Dragon Fall Helm. No way, just look in my clan, I got the Dragon Fall Helm, and then right after that, Korea gets the pet from Soul Wars. That is two insanely rare items to get almost back to back of two people. 
All right, let's have a look. Are we going to get a second dragon for him in these six last bones? Of course, I do have to use them. Let's pray. Imagine if I would get a second one. That would be just insane. And that is all the bones used. I did not get a second dragon for him. 142 chewed bones used. And we did win the challenge. And I do have to say, the dragon for him does not look too good. But it is worth a lot of money and the icon for it at least in the inventory is really cool and it is of course a very difficult item to get on the collection log and if we go all the way to collection log we go to other and then we go to miscellaneous i think it's right here look at that that is an insane slot to have covered the last thing we have to do is to open the 10 elite caskets that i managed to complete during this grind we have 51 overall completions and this right here is my log so let's go ahead i will probably get some masters from this as well dude what is happening in this video rangers tunic on the first one i have to do this for the clan i think that's a message yeah it is dude oh my god this video's luck is actually insane and there we go that's the first masters i'm going to do all of these if i can very easy master to complete but let's go ahead and keep opening these elite caskets we have seven left to go and we have another master all right well that is just not really happening i think i need a five level rune crafting boost for that maybe i can do it bind the blood rune at the blood altar i do think that's 77 right so i technically could go for it it is kind of at the end of the master so i might try to get a stew for it yeah might as well all right are we going to get lucky let's see oh my god we got it on the first one that's actually i don't even know what the odds of that is but that is very very uh, rare to see that but uh, as you can see i actually have a kitten and i got all of these with a kitten so this took a while we did get the master completed so let's continue with the elite casket opening first one is collection log holy blessing not worth too much though second one not great either no master yet three more to go two more to go very average elites and the last one is going to be nothing as well just a bunch of planks now let's go ahead and open the two masters that we got the first one is going to be a very average master as well 316k and the second one oh my that's a lot of dragon weaponry and then a rune <laughs> it just looks so funny it's like every dragon weapon i guess not the long sword not the scimitar i don't know if you can get those I did not collect every single dragon bone, but I did get 4.3k of them, and this is all the loot that I got from 6,000 mithril dragons. The dragon bones is 10 million themselves, and then all of these items together is 106 million GP. What is that? Like 14k every single kill on average, and it's, it's so insane to see that we got both the dragon for him and the visage definitely lucky there in this episode of on drop rate i am going to the boss where i've been the most lucky ever in the entire game we're going to be killing the armadol boss kriara the item we're going to be hunting for the challenge in this video is the armadol helmet which has a one in 381 drop rate so that is the maximum amount of kills we will do now, why am I saying that this is my luckiest boss ever in the game? Well, this is my collection log at this current time. 338 kill count and I have everything collected on the entire log and I have 4 Armadil hilts, which is pretty insane. But this gets even crazier. This is when I actually completed the log. 186 kill counts at every single item, including the pets and two hilts at this time so in the past like double that 186 kc i have got two more hilts but i feel like it's time to actually get even luckier than that so let's see what we can get in this video now if you are going to do kriara i would strongly recommend to get ecumenical keys and if you can you should be on a slayer task i actually currently am on a slayer task let's have a look at that check and i have 133 aviances in the god wars dungeon from konar even so we can get brimstone keys on this one but i am not going to get more slayer tasks in the future that would take way too long for all the 381 kills but uh, yes ecumenical keys i will use for the entire time and i will be on a slayer task in the beginning now let's talk about some investments I'm going to be doing for this grind. I am selling my Scythe of Vitter and my Inquisitor set because I don't need that anymore. I needed it for the Nightmare and in the future I can buy them back. They are actually at a very low price right now. 
And that is kind of unfortunate, but I did buy them at pretty much the same price. Everything has been going down a lot since Raid 3. That is not really useful in the Raid itself. So we have 700 million GP now. And the first thing I'm going to be buying, and overall, is going to be Masori Body F. The stronger version of it. I'm not going to be using the mask just yet, even though it's only 46 million. I'm going to be using that after I'm done with the first layer task. So for now, we're going to be buying the body and the chaps. Actually, both of them instantly bought for the medium price and probably lower than that. Yes, that is a sign that they're going down. So hopefully it's not going to go down all too much during this grind. And the body went, ah, not that much, 223k. But uh, I've actually never been equipped with these Masori items. So I do want to look at how they actually look. That is really nice. You know what? Oh my god, I just realized I already have the Masori assembler. So this will actually fit perfectly. High defense is also very valuable at Kriara, so I'm going to be using the Dragonfire Ward. And one item that you might not know existed is the Bottled Dragon Breath. You can actually buy this, and then you do not have to charge it through tanking Dragon Hits. Because right now, if I inspect this, it has no charges. If I use this, which was like 11k, which is very low, it now has 50 charges. I don't have to do anything with uh, like going to Nightmare Zone and tanking Dragon Hits. Another big investment is that I have to buy a lot of these Black Chinchompas because of the way we're going to be killing Kriara. I will show that in just a minute, but uh, these 10,000 I am not bringing at a time because if you die, you always lose every single Chinchompa in your inventory. So I'm probably going to be bringing like 250, 300 per trip. And this is all worth 22 million, so hopefully we actually get lucky and get some items on this video. And the final investment I did was the Armadol Crossbow. This will be my only Armadol item in the entire dungeon, so I have to have this equipped while running to the boss. Otherwise, I will be piled on by the Aviances, and also I am going to be using this crossbow on the boss. Switching between it and Chinchompas, I will show you guys, as I said, all of that in just a minute. And for the inventory, I have the Bastion Potions, some Saradomi Bruce Restores... And then we have the Mithril Grapple to get there, 300 Chinchompas, Master Wand for Blood Brush on the minions if I need it, and a Blowpipe to kill the minions if I just need to kill them. Also the special attack on the Toxic Blowpipe heals you, so that is another nice heal. We have the Ecumenical Key, and then we have the Bones to Peaches. Alright, let's actually get down to business. Let's go into the room, use the Ecumenical Key, and I will show you guys how I'm going to be killing this boss. So initially, if you attack Kriara, you can see that she is not going to move. So you see, they take that you actually attack her, and if you keep attacking her, you will not make her move at all. She will stay in the same place the entire time, and the goal is not to do this when using Chinchompas. The goal is to, for example, now you can see I stopped attacking her, but place her beside this melee minion right here. Click on the boss, and then swiftly click on the minion again, and throw the Chinchompa on the minion. This will stop Kriara from meleeing you, and you also do full damage on Kriara, and I am taking a lot of damage here, but uh, when the actual minion dies, you keep attacking with the crossbow again, and you can see how much damage the boss actually took from those Chinchompas, because the defense of the minion is counted in for the boss as well when you throw the Chinchompa on the minion instead of throwing it directly at the boss, so that is why it is way better to attack the minion with the Chinchompa than the actual boss itself. Now, after the boss dies, I'm going to be maging with the Blood Brush to heal myself up on the melee and the ranged minion. Right now, the melee one is dead because I used Chinchompas on it, but sometimes it can respawn if you do not kill the boss in time. And I will Blood Brush the ranged minion and the melee one because they have Warrior Somatic Defense. And for the mage minion in the back right there, I'm going to be using my Blowpipe Specs because it is weak to ranged. Oh my god, we actually got an elite clue scroll. That is pretty rare at this boss, actually. I don't think I've ever got one on this boss before. It's actually 1 in 250 to get an elite clue scroll, but uh, I'm not complaining. I do have to say, this is the first trip completed, and it was shockingly good. 16 Kriara kills, you can see that at the bottom of the list right there, in one single trip. I don't think I've ever had that many kills in one trip using this method. And uh, I guess it's thanks to the Masori and also being on a Slayer task. Now the minions in the room do of course count for the Slayer task as well. They are Aviancis, you can see I got Slayer experience for that. And uh, that is already the end of the task, so I will not be able to use the Slayer helmet anymore. And we are now at 29 Kriara KC. I mean, I have to at least try it with a 10% back-to-back task. Can we actually get it? Ah, oh, Anku is unlucky, so no more Slayer tasks this video. 
You know, initially I was going to buy the Masori helmet, but uh, it actually has terrible range to defense. So I'm going to be buying the Justiciar face guard instead, and it is pretty cheap. It's 11 million, and this is going to be way better than the uh, Masori helm at Kriara. I think the defense is going to extend my trips by quite a lot, and I have to use less ecumenical keys. But I had to go back and get some more ecumenical keys. I can only have three of them at a time and they are one in 60 for me. You can increase the drop rate by doing, I think, the hard or like elite combat diary, stuff like that. But I am not going to do that for this video, obviously. Way too long of a grind. But uh, I did this many kills on the screen with four ecumenical keys. I started with three and also had some shards from next to make a fourth one. So every like 38 kills or something like that, maybe on average, if I do three keys, I have to get new ones. I have never seen this happen. All the minions stacked in one pile. Unfortunately, I am not cheating the boss when hitting the minions for some reason. Uh, I, I don't know how this happens because the mage minion and the ranged minions usually just don't move. But this time they just ran to me. I have no idea how this happened, but pretty cool. I mean, I can kill all the three minions at once. Oh, hard clue from the minion. Sure, I can do all of those as well. Stacking up some elites and hards from both the boss and the minions. Hey, there is the first rune sword of the grind. The bait drop, of course. It's uh, slightly more rare than any of the armadol pieces, except for the hilt. So people usually just say it's kind of a troll drop. By the way, I thought I would mention this. Every time I go and get ecumenical keys, I have now decided to bring Blood Barrage. And you can see that the minions are fighting each other. And as long as you hit them once, you do one damage on a minion, you actually get the loot for it. Because them doing damage to each other is not counting towards any damage that they actually take, it seems. So what I'm actually doing to get ecumenical keys the fastest way possible is I'm just Blood Barraging around all the minions, tagging them, and then meanwhile killing the imps when they are tagged. And when they eventually die the minions there's actually loot on the ground and i can see a ecumenical key because they all have the same drop rate of the key one in 60. i actually got another elite you can see that in my inventory but this kill right here is kill number 100 and you can see on the loot tracker on the screen right now this boss is terrible money if you do not get any of the uniques but if you do get a unique you will instantly make a decent amount of money but 1.2 million from 100 kills that is pretty tragic. No way, dude. Oh, no way. The first unique we get, we're now at 124 KC. The first one, we actually get the Armadale Helmet. Man, I got the Dragon Forehelm last episode. Another very nice helmet. And this time, we get the Armadale Helmet. Of course, I already have all of these uniques unlocked on the collection log, as I showed earlier in the video. But we're done. 124 KC. I'm going to be honest, I would have liked to see in some of the other drops. And also, we got three elites. That is going to be very fun to open, because we got super lucky on that. Hopefully, we can get lucky on those. But yeah, we're done with the grind. So I made 9 million GP in loot from this grind, and I probably used 5 million in Chinchompas. And on top of that, the Masori pieces are crashing right now. So I lost a lot of money on this video. The chest I lost like 40 million on, the legs like 10 or 15 million. And I'm going to be selling them back because I really do not need them for anything right now. Oh my god, look at that dip. That is hurting. So it's not even selling. No, man. Okay, well... At least it was a fun video to make, but goddamn. Let's hopefully make some of that money up that I lost. From these clue scrolls, we could always get third age, mimic maybe, master clue scrolls. Get something good from that. So let's start with the hard caskets. The first one is, oh my god, 260 overall hard clue scrolls though. So that's pretty nice, getting up there in the numbers. 43k though. Next one is 79k. And the last hard one is 89k. That is not that good. All right, then let's see if the elite caskets are going to be any better. The first one is going to be some dragon weaponry. Definitely worth more at least, even though it is a pretty disappointing clue. 164k. Man, not even one single collection log. And I haven't really got that many uniques from these as well. So third one is going to be a lot of items and also a master. So let's uh, do that. Hopefully we can actually complete that. No, I got this step one time before in the series, a Fighter Torso. I do not have that, and I do not have any points in that minigame. Unfortunately, no master this time. 
But at the end of everything, the only addition we did for the 124 additional KC to my collection log was one Armadol helmet, which funny enough was the exact item I was hunting for. So I guess you could definitely say that my Criora luck is continuing on an insane path. In this episode of On Drop Rate, we are going to one of the few minigames that are still actually pretty active in old school RuneScape, being Soul Wars. The minigame has good rewards and also is both a combination of PvP and PvE, so it really makes both of the sides happy, and that is why I think the minigame is actually as alive as it is. Each game of Soul Wars is roughly 15 minutes long and you can get 40 seeds for losing at a maximum, 50 for a draw and 60 for a win. To explain the minigame, extremely simple, you basically kill NPCs, put the loot that you get from the NPCs into an obelisk that you have to have PvP control of to lower the enemy's avatar strength. When the avatar of the enemy team has lower strength, you can actually do damage to it and the team with the most avatar kills at the end of the game is the winner. Because this is episode number 30, a 10th episode, we're always going for a pet, and the item we're going for is the little creator, the pet of Soul Wars, and it's a 1 in 400 drop rate from the spoils of war that you can buy for 30 seal each. Now these crates also give a decent amount of money, so even if I would not get the pet in the 12,000 possible seal that I would have to get, I still would make a decent amount of money, so of course, if I do not get the pet, that is money that's going to the giveaway. But with all that out of the way, let's actually get into the video. The first game that we play is already a win, and I think I have maximized my seal gain, so we should be getting 60 for this. Hopefully that is true. Yes, there we go. 60 seals earned. That is already two crates out of the possible 400 obtained. I want to draw your attention real quick to this person right here. This person is called Comboed, and she is currently rank 2 in the entire Soul Wars minigame with 687,000 seals. That is pretty nuts. Now, because of course you can get some lucky hours where you basically win every single game, and some of them you can be terribly unlucky and lose every single game, I felt like doing a one hour test to see how many points I would get to see how long the grind is going to be at a maximum was not too adequate. So what I've decided to do is I've done four hours of it. So you can see right there, four hours and three minutes. And my current point is right now 829 points. So it seems like I'm getting around 200 points an hour and I need 12,000 points to get 400 crates if I would get on drop rate and not actually get the pet. That is 60 hours of doing Soul Wars. But I could always be lucky and get it right away on the first one, of course. But I'm going to be opening the crates every 3,000 points that I get, which is 100 crates. So we're going to be doing a maximum of four openings of 100 crates at a time. You know, even though this is a PKing minigame, I did not expect to want to PK a lot because I'm not really a massive PKer. But I've been doing this now for seven and a half hours and we have 1.7k seal and most of my time is just spent being frozen and not being able to attack back to people. And the Fang is definitely a crazy good weapon. I get a lot of like hit 50s with special attack on players and just KO them. But I'm going to change my setup up a bit and actually get some PKs. If you look at all the people around me, none of them are wearing any capes, and that is because in the minigame, you actually get assigned a cape, a blue or red one, depending on what team you're in, and that means you can't actually bring an Avos accumulator, and I'm going to be using a dragon crossbow with diamond dragon bolts, but you can actually use an Avos accumulator on Nomad right here, and he will make it so that the cape that you get in the minigame works just like an Avos accumulator, so let's talk to him, do this, and there's going to be an animation, and there we go, now it will automatically pick up my bolts in the minigame. You know, initially I was going to bring magic, but I don't really have a good magic setup, and it's just too much switches for me, so I'm just going to be bringing a 4-way range switch with an AGS. I'm not sure if the AGS is actually better than using just this Mountain's Fang spec, because it's so accurate, but I'm going to try a game where I just PK the entire time, and see if it's actually good points. If it's very bad points and it's not really worth it, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm already doing with the uh, soul fragments and killing the boss and all that. But it's going to be interesting to try it out. And by the way, I do have to attack people that are higher level because it is kind of based on that how many points you get. If you attack low level people all the time, you will get basically no points for it. So let's actually see what happens. The game is about to end and we won this game. So how many seals am I going to get? 48. And I spent the entire time PKing in the middle, keeping the pillar the entire time. 
And I only got 48 points. I should have got 60 basically every single time I've uh, won so far. I've got 60, so I guess I have to do a bit of a variety of activities. I have to get some soul fragments, PK some, do a bit of everything. Oh my god, that's a big hit. Oh my god, 43. Okay, I know he's a low level, but this is why I actually wanted to bring ranged 40 with a whack. Oh my goodness. Yeah, bringing switches is definitely more fun in here because otherwise versus that guy, I would have been frozen and not been able to do anything for like 15 seconds. So in like 11 hours of doing Soul Wars now, I would say about 75% of the games, I've seen the same guy in the games every single time. And that's the guy that's outside of the grave right now. He has full tank armor with Staff of the Dead. And his name is literally Grave Camper 2. He just stands outside here every single time. And when you go out, he has the special attack of Staff of the Dead, which reduces the damage your target does by 50% for one minute. So he basically just specs us down so we do less damage every single time. So I noticed that there are actually multiple people called Grave Camper. You see in this stack there's Grave Camper 2, which we saw before, and then lower down there's Grave Camper 3. And I looked it up. There is a Grave Camper 1 with 19k soul rose points. The number 2 we already saw has 14k, 3 has 20k, and there are 4 and 5 as well. And I would assume that this is the same guy doing this. And then we have six, which is not created yet. So it seems like one person, maybe there's multiple of them, have five accounts doing Soul Wars, doing the same thing on all of them. As I said, doing the same thing on all of them, even in the same team, Grave Camper 1 and 2 is chilling at the graveyard. Alright, I think after this game, we should have the first batch of 3000 points. So let's see what we get. No shot, dude. 50. <laughs> No way! 2,999! Well, uh, I guess I have to do one more game. So I did another game after that, and I got 3,055 points. And uh, you can, of course, buy experience for this, but that is not what I'm going to be doing. You can also imbue some stuff, like at the Nightmare Soul, the rings, the Slayer Helmet, all that. But we're going to, of course, be buying the Spoils of War before you could only buy one at a time, and that would have been miserable. But they do have a buy X now. You can't actually buy 100 at a time if I do this. And then go there. It will say your inventory do not have space for that. So I have to buy 28 at a time. But that is not that bad. Let's actually do that. 28 for, uh, for 840 points. Do that. And now I can actually bank these. I can go in here, put them in and get 28 more. And there we go. That is all the 100 bots. And uh, this right here is a 25% chance of getting the pet. And I am going to start off by opening 10 of them just to see what the loot is like from one inventory and i can actually open them very quickly like that so it's not a big deal it won't take a long time opening these and one inventory of 10 was worth 819k so 89k or 82k i guess per crate so far not that bad i think i will make a decent amount of money from opening these of course you can get cabbage which is kind of un unfortunate by the way one uh, thing i noticed is that i got 16,000 pure essence that could be insane for Iron Man, and I think I can actually go for like 15 in every inventory. So I guess I'll just spam like this every time and see what this inventory was like. Just uh, as an example, 1.2 million. So yeah, it seems like every crate is worth like 90 something like that, K. Okay? Very strange bug I have on Runelight though. It says 10 crates, but this is obviously more loot than from 10 crates. It says almost 2 million, so I think it actually tracked all the loot that I got, but it only says 10 of them, so kind of weird. But hopefully all the loot will be included at least on the tracker, just not the correct amount that I opened. And we are down to the last two crates of the first 3,000 points. Are we going to get lucky on these last two? Probably not. No, we do not. But uh, the loot is, uh, I think, everything was tracked on the rune light tracker, just not the correct amount of crates, as I said. And uh, yeah, 7.6 million is definitely not too bad from that. So if we go all the way to 4,000 crates, or sorry, 400 crates, <laughs> then 4,000 would have been kind of insane. Uh, we should be getting around 28 to 30 million GP, which is definitely not that bad. And oh my god, Look at that. Imagine for an Iron Man, 100k pure essence, that would last you so long for just 15 hours pretty much. Oh yeah, also I did actually record the time that took. And if we go over here to the side, that took me 15 and a half hours to get. So 
yeah, quite some time to get that. So it should be like 60 hours, a bit more than that, to get all the 12,000 points that would be on drop rate. Now, when it comes to the collection log of Soul Wars, I have already got the Ectoplasmator. I don't even remember from where, but uh, the Soul Wars cape is 2.5k points, and the pet is just obviously from the crates, 1 in 400. So if I would get the pet on this grind, actually completing this, green logging it, would not be that difficult. Bob PK Bob. <laughs> What is this absolute giga chad with a fury and full granite? I'm sorry, mate. You're dead. Oh my god, he almost killed me. Oh my... Dude, there's no shot. Bob PK Bob is an absolute giga chad. Oh my goodness. Wait, I looked him up on the high scores. This dude is rank 5 in Soul Wars. Excuse me? There's no way. That that guy has to be a bot. If you're not a bot, man, and you're watching this, I am so sorry for saying that, but uh, who else has full granite running around called Bob P. Care Bob? It, and maybe it's a meme or something, I don't know. I've actually always wanted to try Dark Bombing, so I'm going to try that for a couple of games and see if I can get some massive hits in. In the wilderness, I was always scared of risking too much, but of course you don't risk anything in here, so it's going to be very interesting to see what I can hit. Unfortunately, I don't have the strange device from Master Clue Scrolls to press. I think it's actually more effective, but I did swap my left click on the Dwarven Rock Cake to Gossel, and that is the one that does the most damage, so it's going to be fine to use this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is pretty much what you can expect most of the time, I think. You just go in, hit like a 10 or something, and you just absolutely get KO'd. Oh, 87! That was not even a max hit, and I was, I think I was below 10 HP, I'm not sure what HP you need to be to get the max hit, but uh, seeing that I can hit higher than 87 is pretty fun. Oh, that's big, 91, and I'm dead, but that was not even a max hit, holy. Give me the big hits, 67, just one more hit, please, just one massive hit, oh my god, we actually got it, and I'm dead, that was so worth it. Oh, we hit the 94, the max hit we can get. He didn't even die on that. But yeah, it's rough to play Darox. You die very often, but uh, nice, we got the max hit. But it's been roughly another 15 hours, actually, if we go over here. It is now 30 hours and 49 minutes invested into this grind. We're going to be stopping the timer. Meanwhile, we open the new crates, but we now have over 3,000 points again. And there we go, that is another 100 spoils of war. I'm going to be opening these slightly slower for Runelight to actually keep track of them. I think I clicked through them a bit too fast last time. But let's go ahead and open these 100 and hopefully see the pets. So seeing any dragon item at all from a crate is 1 in 120. Another very interesting thing is that you can actually get over 40,000 coins from these crates and rolling over 40,000 coins like I just did here is actually a 1 in 500 chance. So that is more rare than getting the pet and all you get is really just more than 40,000 coins. So we're down to the last six crates, but I do have to say the tracker is really strange. I started with 70 from the last one, not tracking 30 of them. And I, it seems like it's counted to extra this time for some reason. So yeah, I don't really know exactly what's going on there. But uh, let's go ahead and open these. I'll just go through them quickly. And we did no one soul rune. That has to be rare. One single soul rune. I have never seen that. But uh, yeah, no pet this time either. So let's get back into soul wars. Oh my god, look at that, 544 experience drop. When people stack like this, the dragon crossbow comes through with its special attack. Oh my god, I actually finally found him. I looked him up on the high scores beforehand. This guy is the rank 1 person in the entire minigame. But there we go, another 3000 points to spend, another 100 crates to open. We're going to be hitting the 300 mark here. Let's see if this is going to be the ones. It is not looking good. We only have five more credits to go. So let's go ahead and open these all on video. Coins, adamant arrows, uncut rubies, the general stuff that you get. Snapdragon seeds, pure essence, and no pet this time either. But before we end this clip, just look at some of these things. Almost 300,000 pure essence. 
14,000 adamant bolts and almost 7k runite bolts. These are all so good stuff for Iron Man and even the ore as well. Like, look at all these ore. If you're an Iron Man, this is definitely the way to go if you want to get supplies. So usually I get like 1,000 seal in 5 hours, making it 15 hours for every 3,000 seal. But this 1,000 actually took me 8.5 hours. So this for some reason was a really bad session and because we only have 3000 points left overall I'm going to be doing it every 1000 that I get so three smaller openings let's see if we can get lucky on this one. So we could buy 34 crates and these are the last eight might as well open them on video let's see are we going to be getting the pet on the first 1000 seal it does not seem like it. And for a bit of an update, we have opened 334 crates out of the 400 potential ones, and we do not have the pet yet. And there we go, that is another 1000 points earned, and we need a total of 66 more crates, so let's buy 33 this time, and then for a last one. If I do not get the pet on these ones, another 33. And we are on the absolute last ones out of those 33 ones, and we did not get the pet. So we only have 33 more crates, 1000 points overall left to go. It is not looking good for getting the pet, I have to say. I think we're actually finally going to be done. I think this is the final game. It's going to be a loss, but I need 40 points to actually finish this grind. And we do get that. I need a 990 points, and we have that now. I have to say, I am really tired of this grind, and I am so happy I'm done with it. Look at this. The entire grind took me 64 and a half hours to complete, so it was definitely a pretty long one. But let's go ahead and get the last crates, get the counter on the collection log up to 400, and see if we get the pet or not in the last 33. If we see a collection log pop up, then we know that we won the challenge. If not, then unfortunately, I guess we have a giveaway to do. Seven last crates. What are we going to get for these? I am actually getting kind of nervous. Dragon Maze. Two more and no pet oh please give me the pet on this one ah oh, we lost the challenge unfortunately and let's go over the collection log go to mini games we can find soul wars and that is now exactly 400 spoils of war opened and no pet on the collection log